got day one G tomorrow, which is now an ordinary flight, and then the turbo kicks off at 6 p.m. And then Saturday for day two, get down to about <laughs> 60 players, and then the you're, final on the Sunday. You're spot on, Donna. You are spot on too many. That's how many days. <laughs> make you right. <laughs> Ace five for Danny in the big after an initial raise from yeah. Keith in C number one. A nice free bet spot, I think, Tower here. We've got Keith covered, Keith's third in chips. He's not really going to want to get involved too much. Um, definitely one we could be mixing in a free bet here as Dan Gormley. And on FTs, um, we don't have to go as big as usual with a normal 4x size because of ICM. We can choose like 3x, 3.5x here as Dan, so make it somewhere around 7, 800k. That's what I'd like to see, and he is going to take the spot tower. Very nice from Dan. Just recognising the situation and recognising where Keith is in chips and how he has to play tighter here because we have him covered. So this should do the trick a lot of the time. Uh, back over to Keith here, and personally, could go either way. Um, I think Keith is probably more tight to let this one go. Oh, he's just going to quickly call tower here. So Keith, happy to go float post flop here with the king jack. Off to the flop. Another pot brewing. Queen, two, three. Yeah, so this is a big pot tower already. 1.6 milli in the middle here. And uh, Danny does flop a wheel draw here with the ace five. So probably one we're probably going to continue small. Uh, 400k, 500k, something like that. Somewhere between the quarter pot and third remit is the size I'd like to see here from Dan. As always in these three bet situations, can go a lot smaller. So it does choose the 350 sizing, goes even smaller than the 400. So south of quarter, between fifth and quarter pot from Dan Gormley and uh, Keith here with the King Jacks. Jack of Diamonds working, getting this price. Is he thinking about pulling out the float with this candidate? It's probably, uh, if we are going to float the King Jack, it's probably one of the better combinations we can have. King of Spades, Jack of Diamonds. Uh, let's see what Keith does. Like folding would be fine here as well. Um, just because tangling with Danny, who's got us covered, could put us in a world of hurt. It would be a disaster for us to come eight from this FT when we go in with the chip lead. But big pot brewing here on the FT, guys. Oh, oh and there's the call from Keith. He does pull out the float. And pot has got 2.3 million here, working with 1.25 SPR behind. Effective stack of Keith. Whoa, King of Diamonds. So, Brings in the flush draw top pair. Yeah, so Keith loves to see this tower. And uh, now Dan, what's the play on the turn here? Obviously this king's supposed to be a lot better for the R range here. Does Danny ever expect uh, Keith to be floating? That's the question. Does he expect Keith to have some floats with some King Jack here, some Jack 10 suited with backdoor spades, hands like that? Um, that's the question Danny's got to ask himself. Because from a range perspective here, this King of Diamonds rolling off, he shouldn't really have any kings here, Keith, other than King Queen specifically. Ace King's going to free bet pre, King Queen's going to call flop and then turn two pair. So it should only really be from our perspective as Danny, uh, King Queen, the hand that Keith has here. And Danny goes for the second barrel here. So maybe going after some force through jacks, these type of holdings, although jacks or tens might choose the four bet pre, but also perhaps going after some queen jack, ace queen and then the four bet as well as some queen ten suited that could be in there, queen jack, queen ten suited. So it's a really nice bet that targets that proportion of keeps range, the pocket pairs, the queen x, these type of hands are going to be in a really tough spot now faced with this double barrel however Keith has the one hand that he has pulled the float out with and does contain a king so Keith's going to have to call once more with the second nut flush draw as backup so it should just be an easy call here from Keith and we're going to take a river tower off to the river Fourth diamond. So over to Danny here. We'll know that he's never going to be good here with the ace five. But has he got the shove in the locker here? Mm. We're probably going to have more bare ace of diamonds than Keith in this spot. Like Keith shouldn't really have too many flushes once the king and ten of diamonds run out. But I guess it's good. he can have like some seven, eight of diamonds, eight, nine of diamonds. Ace Jack of Diamonds, Jack Nine of Diamonds, but with these particular diamonds on the board, the King Ten and the Queen, those being higher diamonds, hands that Keith will probably peel uh, a free bet with. Let's say, for example, King Queen suited, King Ten suited. These aren't a thing, and Danny does oh, go for it. He does find the jam here, 
and Keith sitting here with the second nuts back doors into the flush and Dan Gormley making a big move early on and just applying pressure to Keith. Keith coming in with the chip lead and he'll be thinking he could be going home in eighth here if Dan has backdoored into the nut flush himself. Dan could still plausibly have turned a flush here. He could be free betting some uh, ace four, ace five of diamonds, these type of holdings, even ace six, ace seven, ace eight of diamonds could probably all be in there as well. So this is a huge move from Dan Gormley early on in this final table. And back over to Keith here. And I think with the Jack of Diamonds tower, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty gross. It's but a gross spot. It's horrible because Dan's only ever making this move for value with the Ace of Diamonds. He's not going to shove like nines here or Ace nines have he elected to free bet that and double barrel. He's not going to shove Ace nine with a nine of diamonds. So Keith's Jack of Diamonds here, although it is the second nuts, it's pure bluff catcher here. We're either behind to the bear ace or a uh, turn flush of Danny, turn nut flush, or he's just got a bluff in this scenario. And Danny with the bottom of his range just going for it here. And uh, notice rubbing the left arm there, uh, caressing. Usually uh, that signals is something people do to calm themselves down. But this is what we wanted to see, Tao. You what mean we've been his waiting arse all pumping day. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's just... Uh, Trying to, trying to, if not, try and put the heart rate down perhaps, trying not to give anything away. And uh, Keith here in a really tough spot because yes, we've backdoored into the second nuts, but the problem we've got to, like I say, it becomes a bluff catcher the way this hand's played. Like Dan could plausibly have turned a flush with ace-ex of diamonds. He could have plausibly double-barreled as a bluff with a bare ace of diamonds. So this is a gross spot for Keith here and rather him sitting there than me because this is one that's going to take a while and rightly rightly so the tank's going to be needed here tower this is um a big big pot and it's going to be for what over a third of the chips in play if he can make the call and be correct and fair credit to dan though let's go back to dan he's capable of running it in these spots people aren't capable of making moves like this free bet 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 shove as a bluff on final tables there's only a small percentage of players that have that in them and it's a gift if you like i know this time it may uh may leave Dan short if Keith makes the call but I think it's uh, you've got to be a certain calibre of player to be able to pull this move the free bet the bet bet shove without having the goods only certain opponents are capable of that and if Keith's aware Dan is one of those that can have these bluffs he may veer more towards call but this is a fascinating hand guys and uh, Dan Gormley just running it for chunks of equity here on the mystery bounty final table and putting Keith in the blender what's he going to do Tower what do you think it's <laughs> He has a second nuts. He can only put him on the ears to fold. He flicks he it in. It's the, the call of the final so far. And he does make the call. And Dan went for the lot. And he's going to be down wow. to 11 big blinds now. But credit to Keith. Coming with a chip lead. Extending it to 8.1 million chips. Wow. And what, what a hand that is. That is a highlight of the week for me so far in terms of hands played.
Good afternoon, everybody. He's running. He's going. <laughs> he's here. He's just, he's just, he's <laughs> Morning. Good, ever, good afternoon. Up the posh. Up the posh. Don't know what happened to Sheffield Wednesday yesterday, but up the posh. Nice one, Richard. I heard you cheering in there and, and everything. There were all sorts going on. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to day two of the GUKPT Edinburgh. Uh, we'll give you the full rundown. Uh, I think there was something like 14 bangs for day two. We'll confirm that very short. He's playing Frogger across the road. <laughs> the traffic the, the traffic on this dual carriageway outside is absolutely chock-a-block. Both sides. I don't know why. It's not been like that all weekend, all week, and then you think, well, on a Saturday, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a lot quieter. Not a chance. It's absolutely chock a block. He's like Frogger. Here he is. He's survived. <laughs> he was playing Frogger across the. How busy was that road, by the way? Yeah. It's Saturday. Everybody should be at home in bed. <laughs> but there, the chip counts from yesterday. All the chip counts. Uh, Steve Cherry, two hundred and thirty-two thousand. Uh, Yuzuyin. Who we saw on our feature, he's uh, he's got chips. 121 in the mix, uh, just starting for day two. But uh, good e good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to GUKPT Edinburgh day two. We will get the prize payouts very soon, and uh, we'll be able to uh, give you confirmation of that. Uh, usually during this session, if not at the beginning of the next one. Have a good day, enjoy it. We'll give away uh, a couple of more uh, tokens for online and maybe Goliath a little bit later. Uh, we'll not tell you when at this moment, but uh, mm, mm, Spans in the chat. Yeah. I think I saw him walking out. Oh, okay. He might have been playing Frogger with you across the road <laughs> the opposite way. Uh, Spand, is it, uh, was it in and out? Cal got you. Ah. Okay, the little dog. The little dog that's worth a fortune. I got him. Tom Adavara is on the feature, as you can see. Here we go. We have got on our feature table to start proceedings. We've got Larinus Jacutus in seat number one. John Bowsfield. We've got Madge in seat number three, former champion. We've got Nathan Slater in seat number four, former champion. We've got Tom Adavara. That's the first time I've seen Tom without a hat. I think we had this conversation once before. I think there was a time before he didn't have a hat on as well. We had the exact same conversation. Didn't even, I thought, new man. It's a new person. He's got a nice head of hair. I know he has. do not need a hat on. He's got, some, he's got a great head of hair. Leave your hat off, Tom. It might make you run good. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, a GDPR JW. We'll get his first name very shortly. Colin Gillen, uh, Bixie Yao and Mika Bitton. There is a lot 
of people going to be sat around watching the Rangers and Celtic game that kicks off at 12.30. Yeah. Problems. We don't have problems. Everything's working amazing. Uh, but yes, uh, there will be plenty of people that are going to be tuning in, especially playing as well, watching the Celtic Rangers game that's on at half past 12 this afternoon. Is there a big guy? Celtic Rangers. Probably like, probably. No, but I know, I know it's a big game, but like, is it? I don't know what the no, league's saying. No, no, no doesn't really matter. Celtic won the league last week. Okay. But they're playing in Rangers. Okay. So it'll be a bit hostile. Uh, but no, one of the biggest derbies in the world, I, I think. But uh, there'll be a lot of people watching it. There's a lot of Celtic fans in the building and a lot of Rangers fans in the building. And here's a big Celtic fan himself, Mr. Colin Gillen. So good afternoon everybody, welcome to the uh, game and enjoy the live stream for the next 12 hours. Two hands colliding, tens for Madge, Colin with the ladies. Madge free bet into 8.1k here. Back over to Colin. We just under 70 deep here, so interesting one for Colin, whether we want a four bet here or potentially play flat out of position. We both in plus one match, one into free bet. Wrapping strong hand himself. Looks like Colin is going to go for the aggressive route. Four bet in the ladies. Exit 21.5. Oh, yeah. I still expect match to peel here. 13k. 231. Under two and a half to one on his money. Queen, my ace, queen, <coughs> eight. First time he sees the queen. Collins, like, that'll do nicely. Yeah, don't mind this third, uh, first hand of the day. I'm probably around 11, 12 here, C bet size in the four bet pot on the ace high board. It'll be really small here from Colin. Both tiny, less than 15%, 6.7. Not the best flop for Madge and can get away from it now. Colin takes the first pot of the day with middle set. Nice, nice, nice. So you run me through the early bust outs when we get them. 121 starting day two. I think there was 105 chip counts yesterday. I think. I do believe. 105. We love Tom. So do we. So do we. Love watching him play. But he is a day two bane, so he does need a spin. Good to see Big on the table as well. 77,000. Now sit. Winner of the NPL a few years ago, or the Passport, which one was it? Was the NPL or the Passport? Uh, he, 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 he came uh, full for third in the NPL, didn't he? So he won, won himself. Yeah, I think one year he won the Passport, didn't he, when he, before he came to the NPL, I think. I think. He has been one of the most consistent players in the UK for the last five years. Yeah, free bet here by Nathan Slater though. Nathan with the Ace King. Champion in 2019. Nathan Slater. 
an awkward one for Balsi here, facing Nathan's free bet, the ace nine of spades. We are suited, can still come along for sure. Start the hand, 40 plus deep. Balsi does make the call. Seven, eight, three, two clubs. Ace of Hearts, King of Clubs. I think one that we're going to be see betting fairly often as Nathan. Don't need to go too big. Probably between four and five k, somewhere around there. We're going to go for the check behind and gets the dream turn card. It's a diamond, it is. So it should be a check from Balsi, turn top pair, but want to be checking it over to Nathan, knowing that he's probably going to be betting this card, whether he's got an ace or not. So should see exactly that. And Nathan wants to be betting here. Wants to probably pick a size, try and get this all in by the river. 9, 10k, setting up a pot size shelf. Seven point two. Balsi has the call. Maybe he's nine suited. The river is the four of hearts. And have to go for value here is Nathan. Once check two from Balsi. Balsi has to play check. And this is why I like going slightly bigger on the turn as Nathan. Now we've got 38k back, 31k in the middle. I'm not going to be able to get all the chips in. See what size does up for. Seventeen thousand from Nathan. Just under 60%. Trying to target something like Balsi has. Suited Ace X, Ace Jack, Ace 10 off. We're nearly 3 to 1 on this money here for Balsi, so tough spot for him. Like Nathan could possibly have a King Queen, King Jack to hand as the free better. But Balsi does make a good lay down with his top pair, good fold from John Balsi. Absolutely. <laughs> Most people will be calling that. Good top pair, mm, decent kicker. We'll give Nathan Slater the credit. Leeds 1, Newcastle 0, says Apocalypse. I was going to have Leeds as well today, but it was too early. Damn. You're going to have leads, but it was too early. Yeah, well, we couldn't break sticking in the treble, you see, because he started at 12.30. And we only started at 12.30. <laughs> well, I couldn't do it. Big Sam at Leeds, eh? Oh, my dears. Now we're doing Apocalypse. Oh, things are good. Any early bus starts, Jay? Should we have a little look? Have a look. There's always some. So, Gary Armstrong comes Oops. first out today. Oops. Andy back. Oops. Celine. Gina. And that is it. So, we've lost three so far today. Only three? Only three. Not surprising. 11 minutes in, we've only lost three. King 7 8 flop, two clubs. John in C number 6. Colin Gillen with 7 3. In bottom pair. So makes the call. King of Hearts turn. Looks like 
John getting a double barrel on this king, just his six height. Probably not going to be working. <laughs> it's great having Feraldo in the background, isn't it? <laughs> That's the call. Cool. Oh, oh, it's like a ten pound rebound. <laughs> <laughs> There's all kinds of shouting going on in the back. Yeah, and this just has to be shut down central here for John. Yeah. Not the river that we want to be bluffing on. Colin can still plausibly have a king from the big line. We're not folding out an eight now and probably not folding out a seven. Nope. I, I guess we do fold out all this like nine, ten front door club stuff, but I think it would be a bit optimistic for John to be firing and Colin shows the best of it with the seven. Good start to the day for Colin. Indeed, indeed. How many runners in total? 121 uh, today in total. That makes it a lot. Uh, what we got in play? Uh -huh. Seven, seven million three hundred and twenty thousand. So that would be three hundred and sixty-six. Three hundred and sixty-six entries total. So sixteen entries today. Sixteen. Sixteen, three hundred and sixty-six. Fantastic turnout yet again. Jack I flop, Jack 6 2. Check from Bixie with his second pair. John in 6. Yeah, I'm going to be check call for Bixie. Just seen John double barrel as a bluff as well, so that will be in the back of our mind. Two pairs on the turn. I saw a lot of aggression from John when he was in the cash game on Wednesday night, and was he thinking about just barreling here on this deuce turn and does fire. 6.5k and now interesting one for Big Seat but her senses are on point. Very nice, good call. <coughs> King oh, calls the river. Now John. Mm. This is a river that we probably meant to be unloading on tower. One Big Seat calls twice. It does look a lot like she has a jack or a six here, so this king is a potential really good river card to blast Bixie off of some jack X and six X. Is he going chunky? 15.5. Yeah, now back over to Big C. So mm. John here basically repping probably Ace Jack or better here. I think Ace Jack can definitely go for value on this river still. So going to be Ace Jack, Ace King, King Queen. All these type of hands. Yeah. Ace yeah. 10 and Ace Queen is the bluffs and uh, does get Big C. Off of the six, nice play from John. Triple barrel gets it done as a bluff. 
TJ says, where's Tom's cap? <laughs> Everybody notices. Everybody notices these things, you see. Early stages, ZKPT Edinburgh Day 2. Good afternoon, everybody. I think I've suited for Tom from the hijack, raises to 2.4. Not bad. Get some raising take through, I'm happy with that. There's Tom with the King Fiber Diamonds. Cricket outside of Are they playing at Trembridge? <laughs> Sunny day with poker and cricket outside. Can't come. It is a lovely day again today. It is beautiful outside. Beautiful. Already had a message from Keith Fraser, who was on the golf course. Oh, must didn't, be nice. Didn't make day two. How are we doing, Johnny Scott? He'll be over shortly for the Star of Praman Cup. <laughs> nice one, Johnny. Keith's already on the course, Johnny. As he didn't make day two. say off in the small interesting one I think we're supposed to lean more towards three bet here we want to continue as make up it does have a big C in a dominated spot King Jack five two clubs quick check check on the flop loose of spades on the turn <coughs> Moves for the lead now. Mm. The ace eight did have the best of it. It's a winner. Is this the only Grover Casino in Scotland? Says Daz Blues. No. There's one in Aberdeen. There's one in Dundee. There's one in Glasgow. There might be two in Glasgow. Merchant City in the Riverboat. Is there two? I don't know. I think there's two in Glasgow. I've never been anywhere in Scotland other than here. There's one in Edinburgh. Inverness. There's the Aaliyah. <laughs> Uh, the, yeah, the, obviously there's the, there's the Aaliyah and, uh, and the others, but uh, as Grosvenor go, I think there's five. Maybe four. Yeah, two, three, four, five. Maybe probably five. Jack Nine, see if a Nathan are not going to open. I'm going to take the tight approach. Confirmation there's five in Scotland, two in Glasgow, Edinburgh, Dundee, and Aberdeen. Aberdeen. My favourite Scottish word. Mine's Rindby. Rind and Rind and Rind. The Rindby. Is that mad you won in Edinburgh a couple of years ago? Yes, it is. Saying C3. Yeah, heads up versus Ludo, wasn't Aye. it? Yeah, we weren't able to interview uh, Mad, so Ludo came and sat down at the side of us for, uh, for a chat after uh, he came second. Ludo's in day two as well. Yeah, Colin not going to be pulling this off with sixes, I don't think, for just sub 30. I just like versus a button. Meek 
he gets it through. Championships next week, Johnny. Oh, the sun is shining. <laughs> Point ten four. Colin raises to two point five. Here, big two with sixes off of fifty in the hijack. I think this is the only way to proceed here. We've just got a call. Uh, Mika here, pocket nines, working with 35 bigs to start the hand. And they're going to go for the free bet, not all in, call off. Makes it 8 gate. And Lauren is here with the ace jack suited, so hands everywhere here. And uh, Lauren might fancy it here, just putting in the 21.4k tower. Mm. Obviously, you can never flat if he wants to go with it. We've got to shove our 17, 18 big blinds in. A lot of dead money in there. Tough spot. I think Ace Queen would go with it, but Ace Jack is kind of a tough one here. We know that Colin, with all the chips, would definitely be opening light. Pixie probably never got a trap, so. Just worried about Mika here. What do we think his free bet range looks like? And Laurinus has decided that this is good enough to go with. And it should be getting called. Went back round to Mika. Can't fold no matter what. So. Well, then. Here we are after the races. Mika in nine. With the nines, call the police. <coughs> and Lauren has got the ace jack. Who wins? That's what you like to see me, ace jack. Ace in the window. Backdoor clubs, I think. Not on that turn. Nope. So Lauren has set for a double plus more. Just fading the two out up on the river. And does. <coughs> and does. <laughs> Johnny Scott. Johnny Scott. <coughs> should, should, be, should be pretty safe weather wise as long as you don't turn up. Show up. <laughs> Complete jinx. <laughs> uh, cheers, Johnny. Uh, uh, okay. Start a problem, Cup at Tapas 2. Mate, I don't even know what I can have that. Yeah. Tilting. Uh, Fullback called Ace King and a spot maybe Fullback called it. It'd be quite silly to do so. Okay. The cup's on at 2.30. You've only got 90 minutes. Yeah. Can't be much to do that there, is there? Go on the road, have a Nando's. Come back. Starbucks, Nando's. Starbucks, Nando's. Quick pint of star and then... Then, then the cup. <laughs> <laughs> Easily done. Easily done. Pulled off 80 bigs without a pair. Ah. Probably not good at a GP for two. Mm. Look, aces? No, so um, it was versus DBK. I open MTA's King 2.4. It makes it 6.5 on the button. We play like 90, 95 deep or something. Uh, 95k chips, not 95. Yeah. It's 18. Um, I fall back to 17. I actually would call a decent amount just versus the three back. I think it's probably running a bit on the tight side, but you've obviously got to fall back. He's going a decent amount. And he uses the time bank and like jams the whole 95. And I'm just like not even sure if people are wide enough, but like because yeah. I think like aces is supposed to trap, but some people just don't trap aces. And, mm. He had aces, so it's like, yeah, I'm just all back probably more dead than I should be. Like, obviously, in reality, it's supposed to be like a bit of kings and ace king mostly when he jams. 
and like flats queens, but straight axe, flats most of the aces. No, just pulled back, pulled it into aces. Sorry. It's one of them weeks, mate. It happened. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I used two sign backs as well. I was like deciding could I actually fold. And I decided because I'm probably peeling free a bunch that I can't fold when I fall there. Have ten minutes. It's all made up. Clear the style anyway. of Prime and Cup. <laughs> yeah, I might go to town or something. I might go actually go. It's a lovely day for it actually. It's beautiful yeah. outside. It was a nice day for. Get a taxi into town. Yeah. Have a one and come back. Find someone else who's going to bust soon and then we'll do it. Uh, Spans at the loose end. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. I'll find it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jack Hardcastle not had the best week at the office. He has not had the best week at the office. But he will be back. Yeah, a few more names to tell you about. Just saw another one on our featured table. Since then lost Josh Stewart, Marius and Varan and Vicious and Aryan Hassan Fashani has gone. The high roller champ is out. Does anyone bet on Eurovision, says Preston Pixie. What? Is that a thing? Says the man who bets on the <laughs> coin toss at the Super Bowl. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> and and, and how, how does that go every year? Never won, have you? Not from eight. Not from eight. Two to the power of eight. What's that? All to do. Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, hundred and twenty-eight, two hundred and fifty-six to one shot that tower. Thank hard you very much. Pretty hard to do that. Thank you. As always next year. Not from eight. Bamford misses a penalty for Leeds. Is there a worse striker? Oh dear. Soldado. <laughs> Carl Lakeland says Finland are going to win in the division. Okay. Is that the next country they're going to host, that's going to host it? Is it Finland? Didn't Finland, win, didn't Finland win it one year when you couldn't understand the words that they were singing? Because they were like, it were like listening to thrash metal. Like, I've, I've never who's watched them. Who's them wear the masks? Who's them? Um, Slipknot. Slipknot, yeah. It was a band like that that won it one year. Like, how? How? As if you're going to hum that in the bath. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm still not here the UK entry. Newcastle penalty now. No. Oh. There we go. That's uh, going to be... Lordy. There you go. You mean Lordy. There we go, I do. Oh, I slipped not. It certainly weren't like ABBA winning it when, when they're still playing it 50 years on. versus bottom pair of Colin from the big blind. Lawrence continuing for 2.2 into 6.8. So just shy of third. And uh, Colin gonna go for the old check raise here with the bottom pair. With the four five suited. Lawrence not gonna be going anywhere. I understand Collins check race versus EP gonna have 
a lot of higher cards in there, Broadway holdings that we are in front of and potential to deny equity to them. But like the bottom pair raise is going to be nice. Maybe the four or five of hearts is going to be a better candidate here with the backdoor flush draw in there as well. But just met with a free bet and snap folding. Uno, uno. Uno, uno, that means one, one. Cheers, Tower. Thank you very much. Hey, no worries, that. um, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Oh, it's a big T and the big won't be going anywhere. Ain't nine of diamonds. Nice one to flick in the defend with. And flops best on nine six six rainbow. Well, sorry, a bet from Lorinus. Yeah, uh, 2.2. So, it's folding. Just south of a quarter. Mm -hmm. I expect just to see the check ball here. It's how up, like, yeah. can raise some of our top pairs. We're more inclined to do that versus the late position when we're in big blind. And we have one of the stronger kickers. Here's a spade's turn. And I go, good fall from her. Didn't put the penny in when she was behind. Like it, like it. Colin Gillen won 172k, 143 bigs. <laughs> 16 bains for day two. Things we called eliminations, let's have a bunch of Matthew Adam, the last doubt, Michael Joyce, <coughs> Alex Montgomery's out, Ariane's gone, Ariane Hassan Kashani, who won the high roller, Marius Veran Vicious, are the latest eliminated players. Nathan Slater, former champion, raises 2.5. And Rangers are beating Celtic 2-0. Cheers, Ron. Watching on Facebook, we're on the flight. Oh, I just thought I haven't seen uh, Mr. PK today. Mm. Yeah, he won't be happy. No. <laughs> nah, they won the league, so. Still not nice to beat your arch rivals, that is for sure. Yeah, nice little free bet bluff there from John with the King yeah. Jack off, gets it through. Active player is our John. Uh oh. 
Obviously, the first one is just going in on the, on the street. A bit of cheering going on. Seven eight for Bixie this time. Drop down to fifty four thousand. Shot for us off of 15. After an open from Colin and the call, Colin has a pretty easy call here and probably going to be a nice so with Bixie working with just 40 odd behind. So expect this just to go jam fold and off to the races. Right, Mika's going to have deuces through sevens in here, which Colin dominates. He's going to have some suited ace x that we dominate. A lot of hands we're flipping against, so easy ISO. Another coin flip. And off we go to the races. Off we go again. Does Mika get the double? Green at risk for Mika. Back door spades, back door straightening cards. There's the spade, and there's the back door straight card as well. The world, they call that. <laughs> any ace, any queen, any jack, any spade. Too many. Wow, too many outs. Too many outs for Mika. Colin Gillen continues his form that he started the day on. And then up to 193k for Colin. So you're off at table one, seat nine. Still waiting on the payout structure. We'll get that to you ASAP. This is Bixie, the top ranked woman on the tour. I think she's actually the highest in the National League. Uh, to be honest, I think uh, in terms of skill level as well, I think she plays the best from what I see. She's mm -hmm. capable of firing multiple bullets, does have that luxury, but come on a lot over the last 12 to 18 months yeah. and plays very well and she's had some deep runs, few FTs in the last couple of months and could see her get over the line uh -oh. this year. Obviously the people around her that she chats to as well, all yeah. helps. Yeah, but I do think it's definitely big seat. Yeah. How are we doing? JD 6.30, good afternoon. Good afternoon, JD.
what's coming up for the rest of Edinburgh. Here it is. If you want to get involved today, the cup starts at 2.30. £550 day two event, 30 minute clock, 50,000 starting stack. And then Sunday, cup day two, the main event day three, the final day, and the seniors for you to get stuck into. The cup should be a busy one. Francis is defending the big one. Seven of Spades on the river. So, ace high actually good for Lawrence here. Here's Nathan going to have a stab with the board. And does fire up and should get the job done. Pot on the river. Raises the 2.5. And Madge on the button. Looks like he has a decision. Unfortunately, whole card's not showing for us. Looks like he's going for the free bet here. Nathan with eights in the small, going to have to let these go unfortunately, EP open, free bet on the button, don't want to be cold calling the pocket eights from the small blind, well is he going to, like if we want to proceed, the best way to proceed is the cold four but no blockers to continue range of our opponents and much prefer this, good to see him get out of the way, thought cold call might have been coming in but have to let that one go and Big C with the nines, only one option really for us here. Off of 40 plus to start the hand, just playing court. And it's a horrible flop for us as Big C, so just going to be check folding if met with a three bet. A C bet, sorry. Yeah, too often just in bad shape there, JD with the eights it's not only that the times that we're not dominated we're always going to be up against the two over cards or most of the time and out of position potential to get bluffed off of our hands on certain runouts. so 
match just continuing. Unfortunate flop for Bixie. That one going. Madge's weight won this event a couple of years ago. First of Edinburgh leg back post lockdown. Yeah, not been the best start for Bixie. Sometimes just the way the cards fall. should be opening. And Tom, queen four suited in the small. Not much we can do here, but fold over to John with the ace jack. Not gonna be folded. Both options available here. Button open from Nathan, ace jack gonna be well ahead. Button opening range could potentially free bet this one for value. We're just gonna play the flat from the big line here, the ace jack off. It gets out flopped by the king ten. Nathan, Nathan flopping top pair. King by rainbow board. One we're gonna have high frequency C bets on. Eighteen hundred around there, around third pot. Thereabouts. Goes even smaller. There's Nathan, thirty percent. Just shy off. And John with an easy call with the ace jack versus the button open. Still likely to be the best hand if Nathan hasn't made a pair. Four of spades on the turn. on the river so it is a board that from the big blind should be better for John still probably thinks he can show down this ace jack a couple of the time and it's a bit of a thin value bet here from Nathan with the king 10 times that we can get raised in this river and just get put in the bin but it's going to go for the fin value here. Maybe targeting a seven specifically. But the problem with this is we can open ourselves up to potentially get a bend just because of the 5x advantage John is supposed to have. We might take some hands like a seven or a three and start turning them into a bluff. So um, once he postures like this, so it looks like he's debating whether to call or fold. Does make the quick decision. Nathan takes a small one. Up to 77,000. Latest eliminations. Uh, Jamie Nixon. Just bust. Jack Hardcastle, as we heard when Jack came in. He's out. Stephen McKay. Bernie McGinley. Rob Boom. I've not seen Rob all week. I, I saw him yesterday briefly. I played the turbo, which was upstairs. That's why we didn't see them. And we saw Mika Bitten get bust out on the feature. We will get the payout structure when we get it. Jay says it's going to be... Jay said on Wednesday, while we were live streaming the cash, that first place was going to be 78000 So we have to see what it's going to be. But he said that Wednesday during the cash. You can rewind it and watch it if you want to. for Nathan should open this from the cutoff. Raises this to 2.5. Ace deuce off here for Tom. Not going to take this one. And Nathan just gets it through. 
Seed open 2 1, whoever that is. 2 1 is Sunny Relihu. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How did you know that? I didn't. I, I well, was, I know you didn't, I'm obviously. Still a bit off. I'm a bit annoyed. I thought it was going to be a little bit closer than that. You yeah, said that pre tournament. 78k up top. Oh, good effort. Good job we weren't a J Thinks. I knew it was high 70s, that's all. Good job we weren't a J Thinks. My mate, my mate Ali Malou's been helping me with the uh, time travelling. <laughs> He's been uh, teaching me a thing. Look or at two. that. Uh, final table 5,580 lot you'll have locked up. Uh, brilliant. Absolutely amazing. 366 entries. What has surrendered me? So basically, someone last hand of the day, there's an order in a call and they were left with 1700 chips. So they said, oh. I want to surrender my stack and have another bullet. So they are just out of play. So I've not chip. seen that before. It only really happens when people are left with five bigs or less coming back to day two. So that's what we're playing for, guys. There we are, 79,590 up top. Play the last hand and lose it, 55,840. Very nice indeed. Bouncy with the overpair here. Checking it to John on the button, who might fancy a stab here with the fives. Definitely get merit to bet in this hand once checked to. Flushing out some equity of over cards from Bouncy. Still can get some value from worse as well. Some ace king, ace queen type hands. Still going to be calling once on the 9 9 deuce. John goes for quarter, Balsi makes the call. Yes, Bay's on the turn, neither play up, gonna like that one. Ludo comes to the table. With chunks. Same scene number nine. Ludo, that looks like that. 80,000. I'll have the overs tower. Was it? I will have the overs. Oh, it's two stacks of yellows. I will have the overs on 80,000. Pound a point? No. <laughs> pound, pound a. Uh, Make it a tenner. A pound a chip. <laughs> that was two stacks of yellows. Try about 140,000. That's the ocean value on the river. I uh, keep it friendly in the chat, ladies and gents. We're all here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> so Ludo comes to the table with about 140,000. We'll get the exact count, the need input in for Dave. As Ludo comes to seat number nine, good to see him at the feature. Hundred and sixty-seven thousand to be exact as Ludo. Very nice indeed. Yeah, interesting this from Colin, just flat and tens here to our old mentor. The fit pretty heavy free bet this one. <coughs> Cut off versus button, pocket tens. And that's why. That's why we flat. We just flop the nut boat. Why not? Into an active player. John checks to Colin. Yep, let's check, check. Colin, Colin knows how John plays. He must have been at it all day. And now he picks up two pair. There's John in six. Checks again. 
It's kind of like these are like two point. Yeah, small size here, Tao. Want to get the calls from the ace king, the ace queen, some types of ace height hold ins with a diamond. Let's go pretty ch chunky. 4.5 into 6.6. .6. So two thirds thereabouts. We'll call it. John will make the call. to Colin now thinking about what size to go to get paid John don't think he's going to be folding his top pair once he decides to check turn however it is a hefty one over bet here from Colin 17 into 15 and John does pay it off and Colin up to 217 being an unbelievable Start to the day for him. It certainly has 180 bigs. Ludo comes to the table 139 bigs. Tom not been able to get involved just yet. Sat in seat five on 17. And guys in the chat box, just keep it friendly, please. Yeah. I don't want to bar anyone. I don't want to bar both <laughs> of you. Just cut it out. We're here to watch the GKPT day two, which is what we're doing. We've lost a few players today, about 20 already. For Nathan, raises 2.5, former champ. Yeah, been chipping up quietly from what he started today with. And Lomas is always going to be defending a 10 8 suited. best on the Queen 872 hard board. Should be checking this one over to Nathan though. Ace 10 is an interesting one here. Ace 10 no heart. Does have the ace of spades so he's going to choose to continue. I think check's going to be fine on this board as well. Goes for it's very small sizing. Between quarter and 30%. And Lauren is easy check call with middle pair. check here now for Nathan I think well he is going to barrel does have the 10 blocker in here it's slightly more favourable board for Laurinus I guess we'll have the jack 10 suited but Laurinus is going to have all 16 of that and a lot of two pair possibilities on this board but Nathan firing for 60% now on the turn maybe setting up a free barrel on Brick Rivers blocking some of the straights that our opponent could possibly have Check calling. Now it comes River. As he pairs. Now this is a tough one to battle on this Nathan. All this like 9-10, Jack 9, 9-6 nine, type stuff. Go running trips. Difficult to fold a queen, so just want to give up on the river. Lorinus takes that one. Thank you. 
and when will Tom play a hand? Sometimes all you can do is fold in this game. That's yeah, how it goes. Absolutely, it's just unlucky the way it goes. <laughs> Blimey, Jim is close to the first place prize money. You're not wrong, Kev. A6 diamonds for Lauren is here, blind and blind. We're going to start with a complete over to Balsi in the big. Not showing us his cards, but looks like going to um, up the aggression here. Uh, Lorinus. Expect this just to be limp call. I guess suited. What? What? Well, I'm there. He just completed suited A6 in the small blind and just fold to a bouncy race. That's way too tight tower, that is incredibly tight, blind on blind, just call him for half a big, then fold into a raise, once yeah. Bowsy bumps it up, A6 suited, way too tight. Five. And Balsy with tens here in the small. Just going to play flat. Definitely free bet this one as Balsy versus a Ludo cut off open. Might have been bumping this one up. Just goes for call and match in the big blind. Looks like wants to defend. Imagine Ludo with heads up in 2021 for the title. They were indeed. <laughs> Top pair for match here on the 467. Check over to Ludo who's probably going to play check here. Free weight. I think it's always going to be a check with the ace queen. Seven and a half turn. A lovely one for Manchester City turning trips and Bouncy may fancy leading this tense here. Wouldn't mind it. Definitely get value from worse. And he needs for 4.5k and match with position here, I think we're just supposed to play flat with Trip Sevens having position on Balsi as the leader. Should be a pretty quick pass for Ludo. Double check with his whole card in out of there. Four clubs on the river. So we might check here now Balsi. I think after match calls us on the turn we want to be checking over to him just because of the 7x and 4x advantage that he should have from the big blind. And then we're going to have a decision here on the river. And it's going to be a tough one because there's a lot of bluffs out there as well. The 5x, the backdoor hearts, even some sort of 8x with overcards in there. All that can be in there for Madge. It's going to be a really tricky river spot coming up for John Bowsfield. See what size... Madge is going to make it. 15.5. So goes to the three quarter pot on the end. A tough one for Bowsy here. Like I say, all the bare 5x which are up and down, which would cool turn, have bricked out. The 8 9s bricked out. The front, the back door hearts has bricked out. And then basically the value is going to be the 7x and the 4x. However, how much 4x is really there? I guess only the 4.5 and the 4.8. 
so not too much for X. So more worried about a seven here is Balsy, and it is going to pay it off and see the bad news. Nice mm. pot for Maj to take. Puts his head down and thinks, damn. Some more bust outs to tell you about. We've lost Daryl Williamson. We've lost David Doherty. No. Johnny Kelly. No. Mikel Chesel. Kim Holmberg. Sonny Rahiliu. Brings us up to now. So the first session finishes at 2.30, lines up for the first time today. Scrolling across the bottom, the payouts, the price will 366 entries, fantastic effort. Queen, nice flock. They do have Lorinus to worry about when they cut off here. Involved with the Jack Four of Hearts. This might be a situation where the card's been pitched across box one here, Tower. Yeah, I think you're right. Lorinus seems to play fairly snug. I don't yeah. think he's going to be peeling the Jack Four of Hearts. No. Massive. <laughs> Just an error from Martin. Nothing he can do. <laughs> afternoon, Jay. Afternoon, guys. Is Ian Roberts? How are we doing, Ian? Can you point him in the direction of a, a book that gives you insight into sub 20 big blind strategies? Hmm, I can't. Yeah, this is definitely not got the jack four. I've just I've just checked out. Yeah, there was it hit the button and bounced into Lorinus's box. So I'm gonna look what uh, Bowsy had. I don't know a specific book, Ian, for just 20 BBs that just goes over that, but. Mm. Is it is it a case of just knowing the? The shoving range with 20 BBs and Basically trying that. to remember them. It's, it's easier to just uh, just plug it tower, just go on. Yeah. Some software, run the hand, run the spot. What hand should we shove for this amount of big blinds from X position? Mm -hmm. So we know Laurinus has probably got a jack, but we don't know what his side card is. Could have, could, could have Jack Queen. Oh no, he's going to check the looks of that. Unless he's looking down at Jack Queen. Well, it can't be Jack Queen of Hearts and no. he wouldn't peel Jack Queen off. Yeah, sure on the cards. Is that Ace, Ace Jack? Jack yeah. yeah, Ace Jack. Ace Jack it was. Colin gets the chips. It was Ace Jack. <laughs> We did have the word that uh, we think there was a card pitched into the wrong box. That is all. Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Edinburgh. So the cup starts in less than an hour. That'll be busy. £500 two-day side event has been very well received since it started. 
think to Geordie Mike that uh, one of the TDs says we need a good Saturday comp to, uh, for everybody to get stuck into. And this was it. And it's been very well received, the cup. Nathan Peel in the King Queen of Hearts in the small blind whiffs the flop though, not even a heart in sight. So don't know what Colin's got, but if we are met with a bet here, should be hand over. Seven bigs for Colin. Great state to be in at this stage of the game on day two. Tom not had a chance to get involved. He's day two buying in C5. Afternoon, Sebrebas. How are we doing? Hope things are good. We are good, thank you very much. All good here. We need tea and water though. That's what we need. Do you want me to go? Yes, please. Shall I go get the teas and teas the waters? Teas and waters. Aye. Oh. Good lad. Have a quick wander. Tea and waters, it's a great idea. Great valet services round here. Uh, we've been good. It's been a good tournament. 366 runners, and as you can see at the bottom, £79,590 up top. Another good effort from everybody in Scotland, and also a lot travelling north of the border to play in this fabulous city. Great, great turnout. 366 is a great number, it really is. Well done, one and all. We had a line of five locals on the final table, or at least five Scottish. The line was five, let's hope it comes true. A couple of tokens to give away later as well, whether it's to close it or a Goliath seat. He's off to Leeds to play in the 110 rebuy. What? A 110 pound rebuy? That's never right, surely. 110 pound rebuys don't, they're not a thing anymore, surely. Oh, it's a 60 pounder. It's with a re-entry, I see, a rebuy with one, ah, I see, I see what you mean. It's a £50 with one rebuy or add-on. I see. Doesn't, 15,000 starting stack, 24 minute clock. There you go, one day event, starts at three. £50 plus one rebuy or an add-on, I like it. So 60 quid to start plus the £50 add-on, I like it. Have a hundred and ten pound rebuy. Well, I'll buy it. Them days were, them days were years ago. There'll be a few in here who'd be interested in that kind of game. Hundred and ten pound rebuy. Chips, chips. So Tom's in, and he has flopped middle set, and he's got. 
Colin Gillen drawing pretty thin. Tom Alabala. There we go. That'll do nicely. Tom doubles. Sat patiently all morning. And doubles to 30,000. He's on the march. Calling that, it was shocking. <laughs> Colin Gillen. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> nice one. Same rebounds came fifth last week, 570 pounds. Good luck. 50 plus 50 plus 10. When's the treble out tower, more importantly? Ah, yes. Yeah, you're asking for it. Did, did you win the lottery or something? Mm. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, yeah, when, I, when I got the tees, I might have found a little penny on the floor. <laughs> Get that treble out. Nine five deuce a rainbow. Two and a half to three k up top, fantastic! I love, I love you, give, you guys giving us information regarding local comps. Brilliant. Not everybody can make a GUKPT, so your local comps are the next best thing, which is great. Glad you advertise for us. We have a look where they are, and we give out the information. You never know; it might add ten or twenty to the uh, to how many play it. You never know. People watching the live stream think, where's the game in Leeds? I've not really checked. Can you guys tell us where it is? We advertise it and people turn up. It's a great idea. How many time bank cards do you get and what they're worth? Six and all were 30 seconds. Yeah. And they get... Uh, replenished when you get in the money and then they get replenished when we get to the FT. Or when Frankie decides. Yeah, he just walks around off. <laughs> Time to hand out some at time bank cards. <laughs> Just randomly walks around. Here you are. Here you are. <laughs> Great deal as also says Sabrit. Can't run around by Phil. Yeah, well big Phil. Always good to see him when we go to Leeds. <laughs> Stop tapping the tank, Penny. Ace Queen for match this time. Opens the 3.5 from plus 2. Over to Ludo in the big line, defending the 10 7 of clubs. Ten out flop, 10 3 4. Ludo flops best match with the Queen of Diamonds like this Seabet from him for third. You know, with the check call. Deuce of spades on the turn. Does bring in Will Draw here for match. One would probably meant to be checking fairly often the Ace Queen here. Ludo might be thinking of a lead. Does have the 5 6 advantage. Match can't have that hand, and we can have all 16 combos of it. Also, got a lot more two pair combinations in here. So, 
So Ludo goes for the 4.2k lead here on the turn. 4.2 into 15.4, so between the third and quarter. Does get value from the ace height of match. Hiya Jane, watching on Facebook. Glad you enjoyed your time here in Edinburgh. Some lovely pictures you took. That flush draw completes. Goes check, check. 10 7 going to be good for Ludo. Jay, I'm playing my first 6 max tourney soon. Any tips to play adjustment when I usually play 9 max? Cheers. Uh, you're going to have to play a lot more hands than what you're used to. Uh, 6 max blinds coming around a lot more often. Under the gun is effectively the low jack. So you just want to be opening up your range. You want to be putting a lot more free, bet free bets in. Simply because people should be wider than what they are in 9 max as well. So... You just don't want to get eaten up. Uh, six max, there's nowhere to hide. Uh, in like a full ring table, you can rock it up sometimes and just wait for your hands to play. But in six max, you're going to need to get involved or you will get eaten up. A lot more free betting. You can have a lot wider under the gun opening range. And try and suss out your table as well if they're not playing enough hands playing too tight maybe these are the people we can go after me <laughs> I get targeted a lot in the six max John he's set shoving from the hijack this one's gonna get through Yeah, don't, don't just be free betting like your, your ace jack plus and your eights plus as well, Richie. Make sure you mix it in with some other hands, some like suited connectors, some suited wheel aces, some like king queen off, king jack off. Put in some free bets with these hands as well. Don't just free bet a random 9-4 off. You want to have good hand to do it with. Just start mixing some in. A lot of free betting out the small blind as well, six max. Well, we'll say to Richie, we'll have some flats in the six max MTT. But want to be playing probably more free bet from small than flat. So good luck. I like six max comps. I think they're very fun to play. Really got to get involved. Penalty to Newcastle. Okay. Match makes it 3.5 with the King Jack of Spades. Lawrence pills the ace 10 off in the small blind. And the flop's best. 8, 9, 10, 2 diamonds. Yeah, one I might check back here as match. Yes, we've only got king high and decent equity within the pot, but this is just a smash of the small lines range. This particular flop, the 10, 9, 8. This should be all over the calling range in the small blind of Lorinus. So a really big fan of the check from match and gets his reward on the turn. Seven rolls off, giving us the second nuts. And we're going to get some action here because Lorinus going to have to play check call. Four line into a straight, yes, but can't just instantly give match credit for a jack or a six here. We want to be calling with our ace ten. Jack of hearts straightening on the board. Checking it. Yeah, we will check, check, chop it up, chop it up. <laughs> Chopping it up.
Straight after the next hand, you've got I've got a treat for you all. You, you got a treat for everybody. So it can't be the treble. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to think what it could be. It's the treble. Tower's treble. It is. Tower's treble and a ta and a tea cake. Why is the only two left anyway? Tower's treble. Every time I look in the bag, there's only look, there's only two left now. Why? Well, who no. keeps nipping in here and nicking the tea cakes? Who? When you come to Scotland, you have to have a ton of tea cakes. You have to, and there's only one left now. Look, there was two a minute ago. And now there's only one. Where's it gone? I wonder. No idea. I've not had one. Box of six, not had one. No idea where. Where, where have the other five? Absolutely no idea where they are. Can't believe it. Oh my days. No idea. I, I, I every time, every time, they just. Look in the box, there's always one less and I don't know where they go. session I'll be getting some grub on the first break will you get you did you not get up for breakfast this morning did you not have the Aggies uh, someone took me breakfast instead eh? someone took it mr. Dave Blacklaw someone took it yeah no way he knew you weren't getting up basically yeah this is what happens to our my breakfast gets taken by until different, you get up yeah, one day and, and, and it's gone <laughs> it, it literally do you want to tell them the story? I'll oh, say yeah, that was funny. <laughs> do, you, do you want to tell them the story? So at, at the Goliath last year, uh, we obviously get breakfast in the morning, but I never, I, I never ever get up for breakfast because I, I like waking up 11, half 11, just before work, rocking in for 10 minutes and off we go. But uh, anyway, one morning at the Goliath, I think it was the Saturday before we just finished, I ended up waking up early. And uh, I've gone downstairs, thought lovely, first breakfast of the week, I've been here eight, nine days, finally woke up for it, walked into the thing, uh, they go, oh, that room number sir, I gave them a room number, they go, you've already been? I go, no I haven't, I've just woke up, they go, yes sir, you've already been, so I end up paying £13 for a breakfast, I get in and I find out PK's dad, Weebrick, has been going downstairs and eating my breakfast every morning <laughs> saying that he's me. Every day for 10 days he had a free breakfast saying he was me. And then the one day that I wanted to go down for breakfast, it had gone and I had to pay 13 baht for some bacon, sausage and egg. <laughs> Good old wee brick. Hey dear. And he still tells the story to this day. Uh. <laughs> oh wee brick, yeah. <laughs> so John just going for the double battle here with the H3 suited on this queen turn and does get Nathan off the best hand. Aggression prevails. Tower's treble. Right, I'll get, I'll get ready. Tower's treble. Hold on, let me get on Grosvenor Sport. Let There's me get not on. much football to choose from. So you can have a little punt if you want to on Grosvenor Sport. If you want to get on, have a little punt. It's just, just it, there's not many games left in the season. It might be the last one that there is because the next GUKPT is June. 
So the man. Come, be... come on in. Come on in. So we are going for my favourite word in Scotland. Fourth or bridge. Aberdeen. 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 They are playing at home against Ibs. Don't tell anybody, but best thing about Ibs is when they sing Sunshine on Leith before the game. Yep. That's the best thing. Uh, so, you, you obviously know a lot about Scottish football and you're very clued up to, to throw a Scottish team in this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. I've been up all night looking at the studying all night. Uh, and then going for Dundee United. Then in Scotland as well. Yeah, I guess that. Did you know Dundee United and Dundee play on the same street? They actually play in, in different stadiums. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's there's that, one on yeah. that side of the street and there's one on that side of the street. On the same street. And then, so we're having Aberdeen. We're going for Dundee United. And then, now this is a bit controversial. Because... Aston Villa haven't beat Spurs at home since 2008. You're not going to do it to me, are you? So, so what I was thinking is that Aston Villa have been playing really well at home. Tottenham have been playing pretty pish all season. So I'm going for the draw. So I'm going for an Aston Villa-Tottenham draw. Well, it's got that. It's, I'm not putting the treble on. And it's, and, it, <laughs> and, it, and it's 16 to 1. It's a 16 to 1 Towers treble to finish the season. We're finishing the season in style. Aston Villa will draw against against Tottingham Hotspurs, Aberdeen and Dundee United. Holiday money, Vegas money, sorted. There you go. I don't know why I do it. There you go, you go. It's the last one of the season. There is no more. There is no more. If Jay's back in his home team to draw, he didn't put West Brom. Did he throw West Brom in the treble? They weren't in the treble. West were they? Brom, no, no, not West Brom. None of that West Bromwich Albion malarkey. Aberdeen, Dundee United, Villa to draw. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Now we'll see how brilliant it is in two hours' time. I'll run you through a few more bust outs, guys, that we have had in the last 20 minutes. We have lost Matt Island, Nikolay Ponomarov, Kai Hamilton, Joe Taylor, John McCann gone, Dean Lyell, Chris Williams, Dave Doherty, and Darren Williamson all exit the field, which is going to leave us with 87 players. We'll get a player count on when we return after the break. is the 3.5 Tom has literally just had to fold for an hour and a half not been able to do anything Colin defends the ace do suited in the big blind and does flop a wheel drop Thirty-four places paid, Dennis. To answer your question, as we are told that it's two-two, leads have equalised. Nudo 
with the 6.8k continue. Goes for the big bet, two thirds pop on the jack four five, four pairing on the turn. And the queen of spades on the river. So ace king good for Ludo if this does get to showdown. Colin not gonna be bluffing on the Queen River. And this is just always going to be a check for Ludo, no merit in betting. And Ludo should show first. Ace King going to be the best. Who do I support? Uh, I have been a West Brom fan for the last couple of months, maybe. Six weeks, somewhere around there. Uh, before that, supported Spurs my whole life. But uh, after the shambles that's been going on at the club, I have decided to support West Brom. And then when the club talks itself out, might go back to Spurs. If it ever sorts itself out, which is very unlikely, because I don't think Levy's ever going to leave, or well, not for a long time. So it's just going to be a vicious circle. And we won't win a thing. And it will be the same complete season in, season out. Turn out of clubs for Tom. Opens the 3.2. Should get some credit as well. It's been very snug, Tom. So he does get credit. Raise and take. Happy to pick that one up. Just nice to win a pot, even a small one, when you haven't got involved in ages. Just that feeling of bringing them chips towards you can help with the confidence. with the King Jack under the gun here. Gonna open. Tom here in the fours. I'm not sure if we can fold these as Tom off of 18 to start the hand. It's an interesting one versus Gun in particular. It does go for the flat. Going to get the bad news shortly because it's going to be easy squeeze for Ludo somewhere around 16, 17k. Fairly small hit. 4x. After a gun open and a hijack flat. Probably going small here because of Tom's stack size actually. Making it 14.3. So that if in any scenario it did go long on this call and Tom jam, we can then just ISO. So probably taking off. A few chips for those reasons, and will be the end of the hand. I can't see Tom continuing with the force. Just going to have to fold these. Thank you.
Hey, so you see if it's some. Raises to three point two. King, Queen of Spades won't be going anywhere. Should see a defend. Tom floppy middle pair. From the 983, two diamond board. I think one should be C betting. See some middle pair is going to be nice checks, but this one I still need to deny some equity to overcards. Goes for 2.2, so quarter pot on the flop. And Lauren is here, two overs, backdoor space, straight possibilities. Expect to see the call versus quarter. Let's play the check call. Clubs on the turn, things you love to see as Tom. Now, just going to be bet, 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 trying to get all the chips in by the river. And we've actually got the perfect stack size to just go half, 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 half turn, half river as a shove. Go six and a half K here. That would leave 26 in the pot, and we'd be working with around 14. So, I think. We're going to go around half pot, maybe slightly less, just to set up the same size on the river as a jam, hoping that Laurinus has a 9x or maybe even an 8 himself. It's going to go really small, 3.3 into 13.2. Less than 30%. Either way, whatever the size choice was, was always going to be getting it through. for Tom picking up back end of the session yes sat patient didn't he yeah you know, like you say you got 20 bigs you, you just think oh, I've got to get them in at some point and he didn't he just sat there nice and patient got down to 15k just losing a couple of orbits of uh, blinds and then doubles up and then chips away again if you've got the patience and you've got the game it's a good combination uh, and uh, Ludo here with the King Queen could definitely see a free bet tower. Nice one to do it, cut off versus button. And going to be an easy four bet rip for Bixie here, especially versus Ludo. Always going to be sending this for sub 20 to start the hand as Bixie. 18 big blinds to be precise, cut off versus button. Should be a slam dunk jam for Bixie. Ace Jack just too good to be letting it go. Cut off versus button against an opponent who is more than capable of finding the right three bet bluffs.
Yep, that's all it is, Richie. It's easier to just look at the screen and see your opponent's stack size or the pop. Have to send as Big C, especially versus Ludo. He's got no other option. Ace Jack off, just too strong. Carl versus Button for sub 20. I'm really hoping that we see the all in. Wow, she's just going to fold. Folds the ace jack to Ludo. Wow, I'm surprised to see that from Down Big to C. 25.6. Really on the tight side. If I open ace jack in the cutoff off of 18 bigs and Ludo free bets me on the button, I'm doing handstands and cartwheels in my head. Yeah. Can't wait to get it in. And Big C makes a very snug lay down there. So 10 minutes to go until the end of the session. I think it's, is it 20 or 25? 20. 20. Five. <laughs> it's a 25 minute break. So in 10 minutes time, there will be a 25 minute break and the new table. Red card for Leeds, stupid tackle. Oh my days. I think it's just to give everyone, uh, the dealers all a break. Everyone's in this morning all the staff so I think it's just to make sure all the dealers get the break that they need because you've got to remember they need to come back 10 minutes before the players uh, to sit at the tables before everyone's come back in sometimes people forget about the dealers that wouldn't be possible this tour without them He, watching? Uh, he is watching uh, the heads up at EPT Monte Carlo for oh, the looks right. of it. Look okay. like Mike Watson. That's not live, is it? No. It's one Leo come third in. Yes. Yes. So you get 400k. You obviously got a few percentages out, I guess. Do you buy yourself a new van or carry on renovating the old one? <laughs> That's the question. Pocket sevens for John raises to 3.2. And Ludo going to be free betting the jacks, free betting to call this off. We all met from an all in from John. Tank with the sevens. Yeah, it's uh, not a nice one tower. Once we open plus one and Ludo wants the free bass, obviously we open a very strong hand and John makes a good and disciplined lay down. Indeed. And lets the sevens go correctly. It's in a dominated spot. Two stacks up top. Ludo 132 bigs. Colin Gillen 138 bigs. Madge, former winner on 50 bigs.
Lito here for Ludo. Involved again. Raises to 3.5. Lauren is here. Flat in the King Jack clubs. And Nathan Ace do suited here in the small blind. Ludo has been very active. So could he ever find the squeeze here? We have a nice candidate to do it with. That's the question. I don't think he's ever folding. I think he'll call at the very least. Well, he is going to fold the suited wheel ace here from the small. It wasn't a dominated spot, but makes the tight lay now. And Tom not going to defend the queen nine off. And ace of hearts, eight of clubs. I think this is going to be a pretty mandatory C bet for us as Ludo with this particular combo. Ace of hearts in here, eight of clubs on the queen high board. It does continue. Well, around 40% and Laurinus here should be calling here tower. This is the nut float candidate here. Yeah. The king jack of clubs, queen in between. Backdoor club draw and position with the overcard. So should see a call here, I hope, from Lorinus. Does make the call. And does slam the turn card. And not only does he turn top pair, it's a turn which Ludo could potentially be barreling on. Just simply because once Lorinus calls flop, there's not really much King X out there other than specifically the King X of hearts or King Jack, King Ten of clubs, these type of floats. So really small amount of King X that should be in there for Lorinus and Ludo recognises that. So barreling away here, going after some like sevens, eights, nines, tens, some Queen X as well that we can potentially set up a free barrel against. We've also got the addition of heart rivers rolling off and been able to bluff with the bear ace of hearts, so a lot going on here for Ludo. Lauren is going to have to make the call with his top pair. I'd love to see like a heart on the river when it's a jack. Yeah. But now a hand getting there that we're not going to fold out from Ludo's perspective. Queen Jack does complete on the river. But well time shutdown from him. Checks it over to Lorenas, who probably just happy to jam here for around 70%. Two thirds thereabouts. Snap floor from Ludo. How many are we getting paid? I uh, don't actually know exactly uh, how much getting paid. 34. 34? 34. Okay. 34. 34. So just shy 10%. Must be in that bracket that. Uh, must be in the bracket that changes. So 34 getting paid out of 366. So just shy of 10%. New table on its way in about uh, four minutes time. Victor Ilyukin and the Mad Turk on the same table. We have GK, local legend of GK. And Eunice is going to be on a table as well. It was on our cash table. Oh, it could be a good table, the Mad Turk. He's yeah. like you say, GK loves a punt. He does love a good punt. Victor, going to be a fun one, Tower. Just looking at names, Eunice Barakat as well. Yeah. Capable of running it. Should be fun. Draw two two. What does that mean to the bottom of the table? What does that mean? Yeah, 
basically it's two of them five teams that are going to survive, ain't it? Out of Southampton, Leicester, Leeds, Everton, and Knott's Forest. Yeah. Southampton are gone, aren't they? Gone. with the pocket nines. Makes it 3.5. We're having all in and in call. John shoves the King Jack suited. Perfectly fine. Off the 15. And yeah. Lawrence makes the call with the nines. No survive, doesn't survive. Flipping, does he flip good? Uh, we'll have a play account for you when we return after break, Darren. There's 84 left at the moment. Yeah, that's exactly what we'll do. The jack on the flop. John set for a double. No runners either, so nice and clean. Nice looking turn. So Going to double up, just fading the two outs. Oh, nine ball oh, corner pocket. Where come from? <laughs> Call the police. Ouch, you think you're there. Nine from nowhere on the end. Lauren is up to just shy of 100k, and we're going to have one more hand before we head out on a 25 minute break. Just before John wow. losing Paul Mc McTaggart, Donald Ray, Martin Kopernicki. So that. Brings us to 83 players, 34 getting paid, usually level 6, level 7. The 4 or 5% job, you, it never gets there. It shouldn't get never. there, should it? Never. Just under 5%, how does it get there? 1 in 20 chance. So one more hand for us, I think, guys, before we head out on break. I think yeah. they must have started late. Did they start late today? Yeah, a couple of, probably. I think it was... I didn't see me, but it felt like a couple of minutes. I think they were waiting for Frogger to play on the motorway and then come waiting for you. <laughs> the eight minutes to get over the road. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most stupid traffic lights ever because, basically... They let one. They let one side go. Then they let another side go. Of cars. Then they let another side go. Of cars. Then they let the same side go again before the green man come up on the lights. And I'm like, what is going on? How can these lot of cars get to go through twice before I get to cross the road? I right, I was there for about eight minutes, standing there waiting for the the green man to show up. And I won't cross him without because it's it's. Uh, it, yeah, it tells it, you on telling not to do so. Yeah, exactly. The green cross call. Stop, look, and listen. So Colin just running down the clock so that he's on the button when we come back after the break. This should be the last hand. Bixie with the Queen Ten of Clubs and Laurinus with the Ace Queen. Both players with on the King 8 4, so last hand for us guys, people standing up in the background. Tom's made the first break, that was his first objective of the day. And just the sea bet and a fold. We are back in 25 minutes, guys. We will see you at 5 to 3. Don't forget to have us travel. Really, really nice line from Dan. Unfortunately, we just run into it. It works if Keith doesn't have the Jack of Diamonds, if he doesn't have the Ace of Diamonds, this is probably going to work. Uh, but unfortunately for us, we've just run into it. And Keith, up to 8.1 million chips, third of the chips in the play going to that man. And Dan now sitting with 11 big blinds. What a call. So you see Tom opening jack nine off in the hijack, can open a lot wider here with the chip lead, a lot of pressure on these guys with ladders and approaching the FT. But Matt never going to be going anywhere here with pocket eights, easy decision for him in the small, just the call. And it's heads up between Tom and Matt Davenport here. Let's see a flop. Flop time is 9-3, second pair for Tom, takes the lead in the hand. 
Yeah, still my bet small here, Tom Hall. This is a uh, board that's just going to favour us a lot of the time here, being the opener. We do have middle pair as well, so we do have some disguised trips or two pair when the turn is a jack or a nine. So, potential. You can go really small here, as small as quarter potentially. And goes for 21k, so quarter pot is the sizing of choice. For Tom just under and uh, Matt here with d8s getting this price probably gonna call once Tom's still gonna have lots of holdings here all like the broadways the king queen jack 10 all this sort of stuff that we are still ahead of and sometimes he will shut down on some turns seven and diamonds hits the turn so this is where it's probably just gonna go check check here tower I think Tom Maybe a bit optimistic to fire our nine here again. Very hard to get two streets from worse now. I think the eights will fold if we fire, so maybe better to check this one behind. We can also put ourselves in a tricky spot here where we do fire and that ops the raise. So just expect to see Tom Hall check this one back most of the time here on the turn. And there is the check. See a river cop. And he's paying two uh, pair. Well, it is two pair for Tom Hall, but probably going to be very difficult to get value from Matt Davenport here with his particular hand. Matt does have the 8s blocking the nuts, 10-8 could still be in Tom's range, he's going to open 10-8 suited from the hijack, although 10 is probably going to double barrel turn, something to take into account, but Tom will now just opt for probably a larger size here I think now, tower this little disguised jack 9 of us, ours somewhere around like 90 three quarter pot, probably what I expect to see. It looks pretty chunky. That's pot size. That's 105. So around 85, 90% up there. And Matt here with the eights, never gonna call this one tower. Just not putting in a quarter of our stack here of eights, we lose to too much. Oh. oh, he's going to raise <laughs> Matt Davenport. Is he going to find the raise here? What a raise it would be as well, because Tom could still just have some one holding. pair holdings. Matt Davenport, where's he found this shove? Oh, my word. And Tom's got two pair here. This could be the end of Matt. I'm guessing Matt's trying to target all the one pair holdings here of Tom. Like, Tom can check back some ASEX on the turn and go for value on the river, and Matt's trying to target this, but Tom's even higher up here with two pair. And he's gonna be in the tank here, because what will go through Tom's head tower is, we do we beat value? I don't think we do. Maybe 9-7 might be in there for Matt, but is he gonna check rip that? Obviously, Matt can still have some ace-3, ace-9, ace-7 defending out the big blind. He might even float a 10-8 as well, wrap around this 9 with back doors. So 10-8 of hearts, diamonds, and spades probably going to be in there. But the question we got to ask ourselves, is Matt Davenport ever going to do this as a bluff? And mm. what are the bluffs tower? Once Matt calls on an ace-9-3, there's not many you can come up with. And because of that, I think Tom may let this one go. Simply because of the board texture on the flop, it's ace nine three rainbow. What on earth is Matt supposed to have here? He can have sets, he can have two pair. And what hand is he going to turn into a bluff? Is he going to rip some nine ten, some eight nine, blocking straights and two pairs? This is just a sick, sick jam from Matt Davenport early on on a big day three and Tom Hall in the blender right. here and lets it go. <laughs> Matt Davenport, you boss, and shows Tom as well. <laughs> Pocket eights. Yeah, yeah there is there now? a reason this guy is top of the National League. Matt Davenport putting on a show early on. Wow. He's not afraid, Tower. He's not afraid of busting. Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. Wowzers. It's 10 for Ian. Raises to 1.3. Under the gun, plus one. 
I'm um, Radu here with the Ace Jack and the Hijack. Surprised if he went anywhere this deep with Ian. I'm probably more inclined to just flat this one versus the early position open. But obviously, can mix in a free bet some of the time. And it looks like that's exactly what he's done. Free bets to 3.2. Uh, Julie, if you just give yourself a refresh, should be alright because uh, pitch is crystal clear here for us. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably just connection at home or wherever you may be. But if you give it a little refresh, hopefully it kicks back in. Yeah, give yourself a refresh, Jules, and let us know that it's alright. Because it's alright on both our laptops. Oh so it's my be word. Time or something here. Four better, 7.7. Wow, Ian. Oh, yoy. Someone over the age of 50, four bet bluffing <laughs> tower. Whoa, well, I'm snap folding. I'm ju it's just you like, would be. Yeah, I would be. I'd be, be I'd be folding ace queen here, suited as Radu. I'd already have hit the muck. But this is. I guess Ian just thinks Radu's at it too much, and to be honest with you, the ace 10 off tower, it's a really beautiful four bet bluff hand, and maybe Ian's been amongst the solvers uh, the last few months. You don't know. He might have been putting some work in off the tables. That could be, <laughs> that could be the case. And he might have. But in the low frequency four bet here with the ace 10 versus Radu, who's been fairly aggressive and with the chips as well. But fair play to Ian, mixing it up, not just having the ace king mm. plus in his four bet range. And uh, now action back on Radu here. And oh wow, oh wow. No is way he going to five bet? bet? Has he picked up on That's something about here? K. Wow, Radu, 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 what senses from him. He has to have picked up on something here, Tower. Read on the situation here from Radu is just so, so good. What a play. Five bet bluff, Tower. We just, no way. <laughs> Do you know what? If Ian six bets here with ace 10, Tower, I'm, I'm, I'm done. For, I'm having an early finish. He's not doing it. He's, there's no way Ian six bets here. How often do we even say the word six bet on stream? Oh, wow. But Radu, five bet bluff in the ace jack. This is just a leveling not the war lot. between He's not the, the two line. players. He's doing it no! again! He's doing it again! That's amazing! Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh, six bet roll! Six bet how do you like them apples? Sold that! <laughs> Ace at 10, 6 bet rips it in for 100 big blinds. Oh my word. Ian is my new hero tower. I want this man to win the comp. Oh my word. 6 bet rip with the Ace 10, folding the Ace Jack out. Where has Ian found that move from? Oh my word. How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> I've waited all day for something and it's just happened. Oh my <laughs> word. Ian. Uh. Do you know what? Do you know what? I, I'd be sat at the table. If I was sat at the table there and Ian said to me I didn't have aces there, I, I would have had a lot of money with him that he had aces in that spot. A lot, a lot of money. But wow, <laughs> wow, wow. Fair play to the man. A six bit rip. Well. <laughs> No chance. So Ali, Ali with the queens this time. Kings last, King Jack last time. Kings before. Raising up with the queens. It won't be a standard raise. Raises to seven point two. Thales gets out of the way. Jack's got a raw smile on face with a six X in front of him. Yeah. Oh, he's got oh, a hand he's as well. Tens. Oh, and the last going in. in with the tens. Is he doing the old uh, sixty bigs, just shy of? And yeah, he's not this put the line. Probably, be a big probably left one chip behind. Hot. Ali's going to snap this off, and uh, Jack Oliver going to need a ten to survive. They're all in. Ali Malone, Queen. <coughs> Jack Oliver, all in. 
for 71. Ali Malou Queens. To the flop. To the flop. Ten needed. Oh, he oh, it is. He's in the ten. Run like Jack. <laughs> so some uh, backdoor straight possibilities, but just fading the queen now for Jack. No way! Oh, oh my days! Ill, you think oh. you've got there, and it's a queen on the turn. Ali Malone bumping away. <laughs> just the one. Oh, my days. River. Oh, 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 no way! No oh, oh, way did that just happen! Clip it! Boat over quads! Oh. Ali finds the two outer on the turn. Jack finds the one outer on the river. You don't see that every day. Oh my word! You know what Ali Malone's <laughs> gonna tell us at the dinner break, isn't it? Oh my god, man! Wow! Jeez. Ten on the flop, Queen on the turn, Malou can't believe it, the ten on the river! <laughs> oh. oh god. We're on like wow. Jack Oliver. So good to see Carl back at the tables, one of the Thanet boys. Ryan Spittle raises to eight. Harry with the pocket fives. We're going to make the call. Jess could feasibly come in with the old Jack eight. Yes, she does. Which will bring in the small big blind. Yeah, Simon not folding this one. Super King getting this price. Closing the action in. It goes four way to the flop. Yep. Ryan with the better lead. Oh, we flop a set. Yeah, and Ryan's flopped the straight flush draw tower, so this is action Ooh. time. Ryan with the 8-6 of diamonds on an ace high board. Great flop for us whilst once opening in the cutoff. Not only have we flopped the straight flush draw in terms of range, going to be better for us. Uh, and Harry here with his set of fives. Like it, just going to flatten position. Don't want to set off any alarm bells if Ryan's got a hand like ace-king, ace-queen. We've got that drawing dead to runners. Quadzillas, baby! Quadzilla, baby! Woo woo! Am I getting the chips off Ryan? Woo woo! Oh, just yeah. I'll look down again. Yep, they're definitely two fives here. Now there's two fives on the board. <laughs> it's a Ryan firing That's four again. fives. Maybe just trying to fold out some weak ace X, some suited ace X that Harry can have here. Uh, as well as that 9x is going to have a hard time calling a double barrel and obviously Harry flatten in position. Going to try and get the max on the river with so a shot. So there's one out. Seven of diamonds is straight flat. Oh, oh, he's <laughs> on it, got it, got it. No, what's this deal done? Where's the bad beat jackpot oh. in the tournament? No way. £245,000. That is incredible. I've never seen this tower on stream. Quads over straight flush. This is a setup. Of all set up. Oh! <laughs> no oh, way! Wait. Harry can't oh, wait to course. turn him over! No way! Quad oh my gosh! Flush. Look oh. at the table! Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. <laughs> that, we'll never see that again. Lodo says I never take pizzas at poker table. I'm we, taking a picture. We will never see that again on stream <laughs> to get that hand here on stream. Look at the cameras, they're all out. Oh my, oh my god. god. Quads over straight flush on stream. Somebody go and get Jim. Ask him if they have a bad beat jackpot. Imagine that on the cash table. Oh, that is going to be... <laughs> wow. Wow. Right, that's the end of the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. We'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my days. Wow, wow, wow. Just speechless. How wow. does that even happen? <laughs> All the kid says, get me a pint. <laughs> <coughs> oh my days. Wow. <laughs> I just oh. can't believe it. Wowzers, wowzers. 
Oh, stuff we live for on stream. It's something we'll probably never ever see again over the years. The chances of that happen are astronomical and to actually get it on our featured table. How'd you, how'd you go out? Oh yeah, add quads. <laughs> no, no good. And if there's a story to tell, that is a story for the ages. I don't even mind listening to that one. We've got day 1G tomorrow, which is now an ordinary flight, and then the turbo kicks off at 6pm. And then Saturday for day 2, get down to about <laughs> 60 players, and then the you're, final on the Sunday. You're spot on, Donna, you are spot on too many, that's how many days. <laughs> <laughs> make you right. Here's 5 for Danny, in the big. After an initial raise from yeah. Keith in C number one. A nice free bet spot, I think, Tower here. We've got Keith covered, Keith's third in chips. He's not really going to want to get involved too much. Um, definitely one we could be mixing in a free bet here as Dan Gormley. And on FTs, um, we don't have to go as big as usual with a normal 4X size because of ICM. We can choose like 3X, 3.5X here as Dan to make it somewhere around 7, 800K. That's what I'd like to see, and he is going to take the spot tower. Very nice from Dan. Just recognising the situation and recognising where Keith is in chips and how he has to play tighter here because we have him covered. So this should do the trick a lot of the time. Uh, back over to Keith here, and personally, could go either way. Um, I think Keith is probably more tight to let this one go. Oh, he's just going to quickly call tower here. So Keith, happy to go float post flop here with the king jack. Off to the flop. Another pot brewing. Queen, two, three. Yeah, so this is a big pot tower already. 1.6 milli in the middle here. And uh, Danny does flop a wheel draw here with the ace five. So probably one we're probably going to continue small. Uh, 400k, 500k, something like that. Somewhere between the quarter pot and third remit is the size I'd like to see here from Dan. As always in these three bet situations, can go a lot smaller. So it does choose the 350 sizing, goes even smaller than the 400. So south of quarter, between fifth and quarter pot from Dan Gormley and uh, Keith here with the King Jacks. Jack of Diamonds working, getting this price. Is he thinking about pulling out the float with this candidate? It's probably, uh, if we are going to float the King Jack, it's probably one of the better combinations we can have. King of Spades, Jack of Diamonds. Uh, let's see what Keith does. Like folding would be fine here as well. Um, just because tangling with Danny, who's got us covered, could put us in a world of hurt. It would be a disaster for us to come eight from this FT when we go in with the chip lead. But big pot brewing here on the FT, guys. Oh, oh and there's the call from Keith. He does pull out the float. And Pot has got 2.3 million here, working with 1.25 SPR behind. Effective stack of Keith. Whoa, King of Diamonds. So, Brings in the flush draw top pair. Yeah, so Keith loves to see this tower. And uh, now Dan, what's the play on the turn here? Obviously this king's supposed to be a lot better for the R range here. Does Danny ever expect uh, Keith to be floating? That's the question. Does he expect Keith to have some floats with some King Jack here, some Jack 10 suit with backdoor spades, hands like that? Um, that's the question Danny's got to ask himself. Because from a range perspective here, this King of Diamonds rolling off, he shouldn't really have any kings here, Keith, other than King Queen specifically. Ace King's going to free bet pre, King Queen's going to call flop and then turn two pair. So it should only really be from our perspective as Danny, uh, King Queen, the hand that Keith has here. And Danny goes for the second barrel here. So maybe going after some force through jacks, these type of holdings, although jacks or tens might choose to four bet pre, but also perhaps going after some queen jack, ace queen that didn't four bet as well as some queen ten suited that could be in there, queen jack, queen ten suited. So it's a really nice bet that targets that proportion of keeps range, the pocket pairs, the queen x, these type of hands are going to be in a really tough spot now faced with this double barrel however Keith has the one hand that he has pulled the float out with and does contain a king so Keith's going to have to call once more with the second nut flush drawer as backup so it should just be an easy call here from Keith and we're going to take a river tower off to the river Oh. Fourth diamond. So, over to Danny here. We'll know that he's never going to be good here with the ace five, but has 
he got the shove in the locker here. Mm. We're probably going to have more bear ace of diamonds than Keith in this spot. Like, Keith shouldn't really have too many flushes once the king and ten of diamonds run out. I guess he's going to he have like some seven, eight of diamonds, eight, nine of diamonds, ace, jack of diamonds, jack, nine of diamonds. But with these particular diamonds on the board, the king, ten, and the queen, those being higher diamonds, hands that Keith will probably peel. Uh, a free bet with, let's say, for example, king, queen suited, king, ten suited. These aren't a thing, and Danny does oh, go for does. it. He does find the jam here, and Keith sitting here with the second nuts, backdoors into the flush, and Dan Gorm. Victor Ilyukin, the Mad Turk, sat side by side. Going to look forward to this. GK is in the feature as well. Local legend, Eddie Swales. <coughs> Let us do this second session. 83 players, as you can see, top right. 83, all the way for two hours. Taking us to five to five, and the dinner break. Forty minutes today. Uh, I hope so. Fingers crossed. There already been probably like sixty odd players. So I reckon forty minutes. Forty minutes should be enough. Should be but good. We don't know. Maybe right. it's not. How are we doing the great layout? Good afternoon. We'll find out on what exact time for the uh, dinner break. Uh, is Wee Mark still in? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen him on the bust out list. Have you seen Mark? No, I've not seen him on the bust out list. Who are we, Mark? So I think this is going to be a fun session. <laughs> Mad Turk, GK, both very active and wild. It could be a really good second session of the day here. Victor there. Aaron Barnsey. Tower's terrible bet. He's gone for Dundee. Dundee United. Aberdeen. Aberdeen. And a Spurs draw. Yes. 16 to 1. Ending the season on a high. That's what we're going for. Aston Villa have not been Spurs at home in 16 since 2008. I'm going on history, and I'm going on Spurs not going to win, but they'll get a draw. Get on it. Finish on a high, ladies and gentlemen. The last one of the season.
Base 5 suited for Marius. Raises to 4. And that will do it. So 83 left, top right hand corner. That will get changed in real time for us. From old Dave. Hiya the Fizz, he's back home, somewhere near Southport, probably spent his last night on the A19 hard shoulder or something like that, or the M43, eating sausage curry, something like that. Sausage curry? Yeah, he loves it. He eats, he doesn't eat very well, he has chicken tikka for breakfast and he'll have a sausage curry for supper and he'll drink four pints of milk. It so sounds like... My, my diet, to be fair to yeah. her, it's not, not far off well, mine. There you go. Afternoon, Mark. Did Mark do good or did Mark do bad? Mark the Weed, watching him face it. How are we doing, Mark? How many chips you got? Eunice back at our tables after entertainers in the cash and the eye roller. Mark Little, who are we Mark's on little 71k, nice, grinding away very nice, good luck young man, good luck, 71k is good with the blinds at 2k, good luck to you. I don't think any of this table like each other. What's that? It's like the sound of silence <laughs> at this moment in time. It's like they're playing in the library. <laughs> You're not wrong, Francis. They need you on there. <laughs> They do indeed. You've got to see you back in Luton when we get there in a couple of weeks' time. We'll show you the Luton schedule very shortly. Right. To be fair, he's got chips as well, 78,000. He's normally a bit chirpy when he has chips. Eunice in nine with the ace five. Ross County only one nil, whoever they're playing. No idea. Absolutely no idea. Ah. Oh. Jesus. Are you actually kidding me? <laughs> it's, ah. it's not even funny though, like. I, I, I know it's not funny, but. It, it must have been an own goal or something. It's, it's literally outrageous. Get Terry on the table. Old oh, Terry. Oh, Terry. Oh. I, don't, I don't know if he's still in. I don't, I, he, might not, he, he might not be up. <laughs> I like how the missus texted him to stop drinking. <laughs> and he weren't allowed to. He weren't allowed to order drinks anymore. <laughs> 
And then he said to the table, I can't order myself a drink anymore. He says, can somebody order me one? <laughs> the mad type makes it 5k. I had no choice. Can I, can I ask, why did you why did you pick Dundee? Because I've just seen something. Because uh, they're at home. Yeah. And they're in they're in the relegation group. Did, did you? And 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 uh, and they were going to win. Did you know Dundee played Ross County in the league two weeks ago? Did they? And Ross County won four nil. Oh. Did, did you know that? No. I just had a look. Two weeks ago, Dundee played Ross County yeah, and lost they, four nil. Yeah, what on it. earth are they doing in your treble? Because they rested ten players. No, they didn't. He's put a team in his treble that lost 4-0 to they, the team they're playing two weeks ago. They need to get revenge. Jeez. Back to the action. <laughs> so the second nut flush draw against the third nut flush draw with top pair on the flop for Jamie in seat two. Yeah, going to... Lose another street here. Gonna have to call again as Jamie if the Mad Turk does go for another bet, which we're expecting to do with the Kings. Jamie. Three of Diamond River. Have to go for the third street now. There's the Mad Turk on this three river. Jamie shouldn't have any three X unless it's specifically like ace three with the ace of clubs. So we go after the Queen X holdings of our opponent. And we have got a pot size bet left behind. I'm not sure if we'll see the lot go in. Might go for a smaller size to try and really target a queen of Jamie. Yeah, I like it from you, so. <laughs> Tough spot here for Jamie. I guess Mad Turk will have some bluffs built around Bear Ace or Bear King of Clubs. Getting a really nice price. This is the problem. Getting nearly four to one. Nice on the Turk. Thank you. Ian Needleman, what was the treble? Looking forward to the commentary. Sorry you put Spurs in the treble. Uh, Villa in the treble. Uh, you don't really want to know him because after 38 seconds, Dundee United were losing. Uh, Dundee United, Aberdeen, and Spurs to draw is actually what was my treble. 16 to 1 it was. Might as well be 116. And after 38 seconds, Dundee United were losing. Woo woo! Early days. <laughs> it is early days. You're not wrong, Ian.
So we're raised to 4,000. And seven, Eunice Coles. So we're going heads up to the flop. Cheers, Dennis. <laughs> Tottenham have got time to come back. It's only the ninth minute. <laughs> don't tell Jay. Don't, don't tell Jay. Oh, dear. So, flop of four, eight, King was checked. Ace of diamonds on the turn. And uh, Michael coming in for a 4.5 bet, that should do it. Eunice, we only 28k and 15 bigs. Can't be calling. Mad Turk chip leader on 50 bigs on our table. How many's in the cup? 45 in the side event. 45, we'll keep you updated with that. In the main event, we're down to 77. So we've lost six since the play started after the first break. So we've lost Mark Fogging, GA. Oh, Teddy A's out. Teddy A Bremseth, bust out. Uh, Constantinos passed to Curis. Will McMurray's out. And Elizabeth Brown, which takes us down to 77. Ace 10 7, 2 hearts, Ace 6 for GK, local player, and Jamie unable to see his holdings, but he called the raise pre. Checks the turn, which is the nine of hearts. After we check the flop, and check it again. And the river is the queen of clubs, and checks all the way down with the ace. That'll do it. Sixty-six for Edinburgh. Great turnout. Seventy-seven left.
Scrolling across the bottom is the payout structure. 34 getting paid. Any news on when Grover Online will be back up? Is it not back up yet, Peter? Uh, I've had no news today at all uh, regarding the online, but obviously I'm guessing it's still not online. Uh, I got a, We got it in the uh, chat yesterday that most of iPoker's back up, so I'm not too sure why Grover's not. Uh, we've had no news from the online team. Yeah, any news? Obviously, you guys keep trying. Apocalypse one nil to Forest. There you go. That'll just about keep them in the league, won't it? If they win today. Two K scrolling across the bottom is the payouts. When they lock up a final table spot, five thousand five hundred and eighty is also locked, which is a nice payout for all the finalists at least. <clears throat> Got a tenner at six to one. Is Frank Lampard still managing? How is that even, like, possible? <laughs> Mad Turk, 56 pigs. Jonas down at the bottom of 14. 28k. Wales with the sixes just calls the 2k to nine by the looks of that. Seven four two hearts. <laughs> I 
that chair so I'm going to come on back. Makes, oh, pretty chunky, makes it 14. Still one of the best seven minute clips you'll ever see. The Mad Turk at the Grand Final. A couple of years ago. Unbelievable. One of the best clips ever. We're on 74, that's three more down. H L Cheng Yung Zhu and Ho Yin Li. They're the three that are down, taking us to 74. 30 spots off the money. Uh, sorry, 40 spots. 34 getting the money as it's scrolling across the bottom. Usually the third session of day two when the bubble happens. Arjun says, why is the silent, why is the silent S in the word Grover? <laughs> why, why is laugh spelled with a G-H and not two F's? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know if he's still in actually. It's old Yazoo. I don't know if he's still in. Let's have a look and see if he's in the elimination chamber that was on today. Yeah, it looks like we're still in. We get some chip counts at the dinner break. Hoping the dinner break's only 40 minutes today, not an hour. We'll find out. Uh, Katie Swift is still in, yes. John. We'll try and get a chip count off uh, for Katie. Jamie's out, Jamie Nixon. He is out. Another table seat five, Mr. Mad Turk, Yusul Eminoglu. Still likes to be called the Mad Turk. Usman Ulak still in, in the background as we can see. Here's King for Marius. In early position. Four, yes it is. <laughs> you 
comes a new bottle of mayonnaise. Head to Colt. Gets out of the way. Raise and take from Marius. How was the snack? Yeah, it was nice. Good lad, the old Hunter's chicken. Afternoon, Pesky. Sean Lewis watching on Facebook. Afternoon, Le Pesky. How are we doing? How's Stoke? Seems to be glorious. Sunshine all over the country today and all over the United Kingdom. Scotland and Edinburgh is beautiful outside. Villa 1 0 up. Forest 1 0 up. How has Frank Lampard still got a job? He's a legend there, ain't he? In any, any form of football. How? I think you should have done a Gary Neville and gone, right, this baby ain't for me, let's go into punditry. Exactly. That's exactly what it should be. John Moylan's got a bit of news for you, Jay. 1-1 one, one Dundee. There you go. It's not 2-1 yet, though, is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hampton yeah. makes it 4K with the Jack-10 offsuit. missed a question today yet Ian Roberts no not yet probably the first one will be after the lunch break yeah, action here up and down versus flush draw up continuing with the jack 10 going for 5k slightly less than half and Jamie with a 10 4 hearts not going to be going anywhere Call five on the turn. I don't expect to go check check fairly often here. Jamie might be thinking of a lead. Five going to be better for us. We'll have the eight six our opponent one. Let's check over to Hams up. He's still going to barrel. Does have good properties this Jack 10. Obviously got good removal. So some stronger Queen X, Queen Jack, and Jack, uh, Queen 10 less likely. Also got the equity to get there. The times that we are caught with our up and down straight draw. And just a quick fold from Jamie. And he did have the best of it. Jamie out of the way with a 10 4 suited. Nope, he had no giveaways done as of yet. Funny if Villa win, I think they go level on points with us as well. I'm pretty sure they do. If Villa get a victory, they actually go level on points. with the ace queen raising to 4k and hams up three bet and the king queen to 10 and gk got a beautiful shove spot here off a of 15 after an opening of three bet and we look down at ace king suited spurs just hit the post didn't they confirmation dinner's 40 minutes 40 minutes perfect Basically hoping to see Jack's tens or nines if he makes the call. He's getting two and a half to one, but more often than not, we're just always going to be dominated and does choose to let it go. Yeah, 
50k local player very good player as well Eunice raised into 4k out of 23 he's here in this one line Deuce is off a 16 I think we want to shove this one versus LP Tower especially versus Eunice who is going to be opening Fair amount. Although he has, he has opened off a 12 as well. To be honest, the fact that he's opened off a 12 gives me even more reason to shove here. Like, you think if Yunus has got ace king, ace queen, ace jack, all these hands off of 12 big blinds are just going to open shove. So once he starts opening off of 12, it's going to be pretty polar. He's going to have his strongest hand, his aces, his kings, and then he's going to have a lot of hands that are just attempting to steal in there. So. I think we could have taken the spot there with the deuces. Uh, Eunice only actually going to have a few hands in there. That can cool off because a lot of his strong hands are just going to be open shoving off of 12. Uh, Victor goes for the dunk on the mono board with the king of spades. Gets it through. Victor on 36 bigs. There were so many people waiting, I thought, I can't wait too long. And then suddenly they were asking for someone like Trevor something, Trevor Johnson or something. And five minutes nobody turned up, I thought I would get the money Trevor, you know. <laughs> so I went to the table, yeah, I said, yeah, Trevor. Trevor Johnson, I said, yeah. And then they all looked at me like that, they said, fuck off, you don't you know, you like Trevor Johnson. <laughs> I think if I just well, down to 70. There and just that like yeah. that, they would have taken it. Because I spoke and I, I think they had a Keeps feeling moving. Like Last Johnson time we looked it was 74, it's now down to 70. I don't know what Trevor Johnson sounds like that, but he didn't sound like me, I think. Bastards, they wouldn't let me have a seat. They say you're not. <laughs> so you're not Johnny, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jin, G, Zhu, Tom Alavara's bust, Nathan Slater is out, and Andrew Dickinson, which means we're on 70. Former champion Nathan Slater and young and up and coming Tom Alavara also out. Tom opening off a 12 and a half here with the Pocket Kings. with the eights gonna make the call I might have free bet this one as Vic up free bet get him versus Ed stack size now we bring the mad turk in in the big line with a very wide range might have gone for the free bet call as Vic Dubbert goes for flat and now free way to the flop Going to be see that three way here for Ed setting up a turn shove. <coughs> One nil United. What Dundee United? I hope so. Off from 1 1. Oh, yeah, they scored in 38 seconds, didn't they? Arch, hello to all of the gang. Nice to see Eunice in the feature again. Go, Eunice, indeedy, indeedy. See number nine. He thinks I'm Ali, I'm not that mad, you know. Maybe he's Hosha Middle Day. I wouldn't go all in with 80 big blind, yeah. Penalty to Villa. Oops, how's that draw looking? Mm. 
Well, well look, until Tottenham go three 0 down, they don't start playing. Then they start to play and come back. So I'm not worried just yet. Yeah, there was a composition or something. Jack for Myers. In the cut off here, one for 16, should just open. But from there, I thought they would definitely win that. But they didn't win. Imagine if they didn't win. No, no, I mean, they still would have won. I'd be surprised if they didn't say anything else. That's true. To open. Quick call from Victor. He's in disguise today, Victor. It seems like Captain. <laughs> he's had that. He's had the hat on all week. He don't want to be recognised. No, he's had that hat on all week. <laughs> VAR said no penalty. There you go. Victor flopping nicely, top top. Yeah, and a board that I think Marius with the King Jack wants to be see that in here. Blocking the King, Queen and Queen Jack combinations. But puts in a well time check. And he's Victor sat here with top pair, top kick up. And continues. Six kick. Yes, it is. Half. Now Marius can probably just get out of the way with the King Jack. Gow's in his stack, but he will be folding. <laughs> and Victor pulls in a few more, back up to 78k. Younis down on nine bigs, Manius on 14. 70 players left, and you can see top right. 34 get the money, as you can see, scrolling across the bottom. for GK from under the gun, Ace eight off, a bit too loose in theory, wants to fold this one but I know GK is pretty wild with his opens, open probably wider than most on this table, no way to counteract that, you just start free betting more often with some Ace X and King X, some suit connectors, if our opponent does have a very wide opening range from any given position, but on this occasion the Ace eight gets through. Should be open for his stack size. And I was playing a tournament in Warsaw. One of the drivers walked in to play the tournament. And, uh, any more plans for any more cash game streams in Edinburgh? Not this uh, festival. Only do the one on the Wednesday and then it's eye rollers and main events. And then event finishing tomorrow. As we crown a champion. <laughs> it was the same. It was the same. I'm not having an attack to you. Yeah, it was the same way. Uh, one woman phoned the office and says, Your driver's mad. Because she goes, What happened? She says, He turned around in the motorway. He went back to the roundabout. I said, I'm not fucking going all the way to another junction to come back. I just reversed the good thing. That was 1980s, obviously, you know, but now you can't do anything. There's, there's, no, you can't do anything. You could get away with things from 1980s. 55 bigs for two. 
I'm sitting comfortably on the chip leader on the table. Full chip count coming at the dinner break, which is at five to five. A 40 minute dinner break at five to five. Kickjack suited here versus cut off open for GK. I in theory land could potentially shove this one, but I just think in a soft 1k, just want to play flat. 30 odd players go to go until the money. 11. Oh, he goes for the free bet, goes mm. for the small free bet with the King Jack suited. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. You can see there a couple more gone. 68 left. Oh, big TR's out. Trevor Reardon has gone. And Key Duck Chump. Also out, meaning 68. <laughs> we lose half the field from now and we're in the money. <laughs> Lawrence tells us that Chesterfield are beating Notts County. Notts County was like a gazillion points in front of Chesterfield. Right. And they ended up in playoffs. Notts County ended up with something like 110 points and didn't go up. Just wreck some beating. Sister Mitch, can I ask you uh, uh, something like in a game that I was playing that I just want to know if I was in the right play, the end right or whatever. I said, yeah, he said to me, I said, I had like ace jump or something. I said, I said hold on. Before you tell me anything else, tell me what position you was in. What, is your, what was your position? He goes, I was sitting there, and I think the other guy was sitting somewhere here. I said, wow, oh, that's a good position. I thought, forget it, I'm not going to tell you anything else now. You know everything already, it. Well, know everything I said. No, he was. He couldn't even tell you what, what, what like, where was he? What he says, I was sitting there. See from there. Was sitting here. This is a real good one. This is right on the cusp. Whether yeah. we want to open shove or whether we want to open, I think if I'm at a soft table, I'm just going to open. <laughs> if I'm at a tough table, I'm probably going to shove. And uh, Marius going to go for the shove from under the gun with Ace Jack. So the, the problem with the shove tower. Is it's very difficult to get called from worse. Like we've shoved yeah. under the gun for just sub 15. Is ace 10 really going to be calling us off? That mm. is the question. Well, Eunice might actually call off the ace 10 because he's got seven big blinds, so it's a different scenario for him. But and we're going in. We'll get out of the way, and so will Jamie. Ace 10 for Eunice oh. in nine. And Ace Jack and Marius in three. Ten ball needed, says Arch. Gotta have to resort to the ultimate uh, trick, non <laughs> The ultimate trick, putting the court on, standing up, putting his chair back. Throwing the time banks in. <laughs> He needs a 10. Still needs a 10. Ah, it's not. Jonas Baraka out. Well before the money. Out in day two. <laughs> Rigged. <laughs>
Let's go for Victor on the gun. Going to open. Uh, raises to five. Take for Victor. No action. How many in the cup so far, Tower? Do we know? Uh, the last time I saw there was 45. There'll be more now. 56. 56. Good numbers. Okay, Ace Deuce off from Hijack and Ed going to be shoving the Ace King. <laughs> this is a snap fold tower. It is. I don't know why we're asking for a count when we got the Ace Deuce off. Wouldn't even be able to call off the 10 big blind shaft, let alone 15. I'm going to be to every shoving range. It's not that, even if we're in front tower, we're, we're flipping against the hands we're in front of, we're running a small equity favourite, and then we're just dominated by the rest of the range. So maybe tanking because well, it's too too early to think about the bubble really start tanking yeah. taking knocking some time off the clock but i'm never going to see the call there with the ace deuce Defend and the uh, defend on the big from the Mad Turk. Flops best with the deuce four. Yeah, it is definitely a board that we can have some donks on from the big blind. But the Mad Turk going to start with the donk with bottom pair and Ed with two overcards back door spades makes the call. Ace of clubs on the turn, so it does bring in a wheel draw for the Mad Turk and a potential card for Ed to start representing. Mad Turk might start donking some 7x, 5x, 4x that we can potentially fold out with a bet hit. out the way with the four deuce, nice play from Ed Swells. When Eunice went out, so too did William Lawrence. Makes it 66, as you can see in the top right hand corner. Mm -hmm. 
King Jack for Ed Raise to 4K. Good couple of hands for him. Six, eight, ten, flop, two hearts. Um, thumbs up. Nice flop. Things you love to see. Oh, Flopping so the nuts. Hmm. I just flopped the nuts. Jack, yeah. Jack of hearts in here. I think we could potentially see about this one some of the time as Ed, but going to check behind. Does pick up gut shot on the turn. For the lead. Wow. Eddie's got to be jamming. We're jamming. And just says, go, cool. look at that, he's already flopped it. Oh my days, Hamza. Fletcher, off the work at the casino, the first person who says, put your revision on the TV gets a five orbit penalty. <laughs> One thing, it's, it's hard because a lot of TV, TVs in the casinos don't have sound on them, yeah. just pictures. It's really hard to watch a Eurovision Song Contest without sound. All the songs are terrible anyway, aren't they? You, Normally. You prefer, you prefer it without sound. <laughs> for it not being on telly. How is it even a thing? We pay for the rights to host it, by the way. Oh, do we? Yeah. There's five countries in the world that pay to subsidise the Eurovision Song Contest and we're one of them. Queen Jack for Marius in the hijack. <laughs> it's a lot better without sound. <laughs> Opens the four. King nine rainbow. It should just be check bet fold. Should be C bet in this one. As Marius as the opener. Oh, Fireworks today so far. 66 players left. Luton's on its way. There it is. Heading to Luton. Are you playing any, any of it before? Are you getting there early? Probably not, Tower. No? Probably not. Luton's not really one that I fancy for the sides. I don't know, like, it's, it's alright in certain places, just not really much to do in Luton, is there? If you travel down for a couple of days before. No. So, um, probably not. I might, I might go up on the Tuesday, play the turbo, the mini, you never know. Mm -hmm. but, um, unlikely. Well, we'll be there Wednesday. Obviously set up from 12 at Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. See you there. See you there. Yeah. Uh, then the cash for us as mini rain day three will be on as well. Uh, £200 turbo. Plenty going on. We'll be streaming Luton Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and the Sunday. A 
heads up between GK and Ed. 86 deuce to heart board. Definitely have some bets on this one as Ed with the ace of hearts in here. Gonna be getting cool. Should be just a call from GK with the 10 6. Jack of Diamonds on the turn. And potential three barrel candidate now for Ed if he wants to run it. GK's not going to have any Jack X here, so a lot of the time, unless he's playing traps on flop, best that is an 8 that he can have. So we can start going after some 8X and 6X in his range with a double barrel and then still unload on Heart Rivers with the Ace of Hearts here. So love this from Ed. Just recognizing the situation. GK's in the big blind, he's going to call very wide on the flop. 8x, 6x, dutex all going to be in there. We're going to fold out all like the 9-7, 9-5, all the straight possibilities. But let's see if he can find the third barrel. Let's see the river. 8's not going to be a good one to be barreling on because a GK would be calling twice with an 8 for sure. So maybe one of the rivers we want to be shutting down on the Z. We still beat like the combo draws a 9-7 a heart 7-5 a hearts, 9-10 a hearts, all this type of stuff so I think we're meant to play check on this 8 river there's a lot of rivers we can unload on mm -hmm. but on the 8 specifically looks a lot like an 8x or 6x hand for GK so I like the shutdown there from Ed although it may have worked if we did choose to unload make the mods on from work beer in hand and off for the week how is that possible? I wish I was off for a week. Off for a week? i tell you what, after Sunday, take week off. I'll never take the week off, so I'm working most days when I finish here, you forget that. No, I'm, 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 I'm probably working five, five, six days a week when I'm not doing the comms. Get no time off me. Got to go to Vegas to work in a uh, right. next month. Yeah, month in Vegas to work. Damn. Battle of the middle in pairs here, nines for Marius, eights for the Mad Turk. Lines up, next end. <clears throat> so, three minutes before five o'clock will be the 40 minute dinner break. What is GK up to here? What is he doing? This is five, four. an outrageous pill. We knew he was active. It's the four. King Jack four. Marius checks. The Turk makes it 10.5. And the nines just get out of the way on the terrible flop of King Jack 4.
King Queen of Clubs for the Mad Turk. GK flat and the Ace Four suited on the button. Nine ten five, rainbow. It's a nice one for my Turk to start putting some chips in. Two overs, got shot to the nuts. Backdoor club draw here. Fires for six k into eighteen. Third pot on the flop. And GK does have the over card and backdoor nut flush draw of his own, and backdoor will. So he's going to take one off here with position. Nine clubs turn. There's the nine, bringing the flush draw for both. Matter now choosing to check this one over to GK, who is going to barrel with his nut flush draw. Fires for 12k, 40% on the nose. And Matter not going to be going anywhere here. Is there ever a well where we can check shove this one? It's maybe a bit dicey because GK going to have slightly more 9x, 8, 9 suited, 10, 9 suited, jack, 9 suited, this type of stuff on the button. So Manto does just go for flat. Club on the river would be sick, but it's a six of hearts. So GK going to take a nice pot, however this plays out. Manto never going to be able to win this one. And if GK fires, he thinks he's bluffing. Actually has the best hand. And that should do it. Close to 16. 16 into 54. Leaving himself 32k back. And I said this pot would be going to GK, but the Mad Turk hasn't folded yet and he's never calling. So is he thinking of a raise as a bluff here? Go on, you sell. Find the raise. Oh, he's going to find it, Tower. The Mad Turk on a mad one. Is that 40? If he can just put them chips over the line, it's going to work. I think once he postures now and starts talking, yeah. we're never going to see the raise. But he is back for another time bank. Can't call with King I, can we? He's not, he's raising. I'm gonna give you a gift, he says. <laughs> and makes it 44. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, GK cannot call. We lose the bluffs, we can't call. So it's as simple talking. as that. So just some posture in here, trying to make it look like he has a decision when in reality, he in his head he already knows what he's doing. He's just trying to make it look right to the table. Yeah. That, He's got a 10 or something like that. And there's the fold. He's going to show him. He's going to show him the king queen. Go on, son. Love it. The man. <laughs> what a play from him. If GK just checks back, he wins the hand. The man Turk finds the raise. You're trying to bluff an old man, he says. <laughs> <sighs> Well played, Yusel. I didn't see any way which he could win that pot, but he found a way on the river. What a play from the Mad Turk. <coughs> Things we love to see. Haven't seen too much bluffing going on yet today, but Yusel finds a delicious check raise on the river as a bluff, gets it through. Very nice hand indeed. Yeah, you're right, Lee. You don't usually see uh, the time banks used and then a raise as a bluff on the river too often. Not many people have that in the arsenal. Usually it's always pretty nutted when the time banks are thrown in and then there's a raise.
Yes, nice one to defend it in the big. Queen four six, two hops. Ian says Fulham one up versus Southampton. As hams up. She bets for 3k into 13, less than quarter here. And Marius with the king eight of spades, candidate we could continue with. Ten seconds. Overcard, three to a straight, three to a flush. He's gonna go for the check raise with the king eight suited. So Hams are just going to play cool. Murray's going to go for the shove. He's going to lose his custom up. Just shove in the top pair. Maybe happy to run it versus a combo draw. But we're never getting called by worse, I don't think, in that situation. I don't think Marius is going to call off a six. Probably never going to raise a six. So probably lost his customer with the top pair. Five minutes for a goal in each of the three games in the treble the right way. Not much to ask for. What's happening? Forest single and Fulham Palace double. Very nice indeed. That would have been a decent treble. Tottenham Forest for six to one. GK going to shove here off a of twelve with the king jack from the hijack. Perfectly fine from him. Nicely done. Picks up lines and anti. from GK Tower. Needs to be tightening up on the bubble of this stack. Yeah. Not really a bubble, but 30 off. Maybe just trying to force the issue. I think if he continues like this, may not be here in an hour's time. We've got an hour clock, great structure. A lot of reshove stacks around the table as well. Seat two, seat three. Yeah. Marius just moves all in with the aces off a of ten. Gonna set off alarm bells if we do flat off a of ten on the button. Different story in the big blind and uh -oh. Victor with the jacks is all in as well. And Marius set for a double. Yep. Victor Luke in the Jacks. We'll be down to 50k just over. That'll do it. That'll do it. It ain't coming Jack Jack. It's not coming Jack Jack. Ace is full. Good. Marius gets the double up. Victor on 52k with a blind of two and a half. 
We're down to 63. We went out last. 63-11. We're on 66 for a while. Usman al Haq. Ja oh, no! James Kirkwood, Lawrence Jakutis, William Lawrence, and we saw Eunice Barakat on yeah. the feature table. 63. And we're going to head over. What's that mean? Because we could be on 62. Oh, oh what's that mean? Who's this? We are Nolan and a call. We've got pocket tens for Katie Swift. Katie Swift with the tens. Against the Queens. Oh no, the Queens, man. Queens of Allen. Oh, oh no way! No. Oh wow, how do we survive that one? So Katie gets there and Allen finds the two out up on the turn. Wow. Be a pretty hefty pot that. Ouch. Let's see what that leaves Katie with. She's still got chips back. Ten. Seventy. Seventy wow. Kate, exactly. Wow. And Katie gonna be left with around ten big blinds, but we know she can spin that up. Ooh. Good on the short stack that girl. You see that flop tower and you think, oh yeah. We got out of one ear and turned just. I'm out the door, is what you say to yourself. And then you get brought back in. Matt Turk versus Stephen here. Matt Turk just played flat with the Ace King in the small. Ace King suited. Stephen Cherry comes to the table with the chips. He was chip leader. Yeah, kept hold of him since the start of the day. Calls with the ASI. Absolute non believer. Lovely bit of value on the end there from Stephen. Yeah. Nicely done, sir. Didn't even think about it. Did not think about it at all. So losing a couple more. Uh, we'll drop to 61 yeah. shortly. Don't, don't. Just, just change to the other one. Mind reading you. Dan Gormley and Mark Long exit the field. 61 remained. DG, GG. Five, pretty standard stuff. Yeah, King Queen off here for Michael. Just moves all in. Great hand to do it with for 24. And snap fall from the Mad Turk. Gets it through. Kane just missed an easy chance. Oh dear. This is Lee Richards. Watching on Facebook. I think he's had one of his best seasons with us this year, Kane. I think he's actually been one of his best seasons, probably playing in the 
the worst team that I think we've had the way they play together and he's still got 26 goals in probably a mid-table team at the moment absolute carried us this season how do you get 26 goals in that Spurs team it's just incredible I think one of the best strikers the Prem ever going to see reckon he'd be getting 40 a season if he was at City honestly do how old is he? Uh, 30 30 yeah. I, if he was at, I reckon if he was at City went to City 3-4 years ago I reckon he would have at least at least 100 goals in three seasons in the Prem Stevie K is still in. He is indeed. Afternoon, Dennis. Stevie K is still in. Ireland needs a few more yet to, to, to get the 400 to 1 shot up, doesn't it? Yeah. For a lot of people that seem to have uh, had this crystal ball. And the time travel. I bet Malou was on it. He already knows what's going to happen. He's one of the best playmakers as well, Apocalypse. You obviously don't watch the Spurs games. You obviously only watch the highlights. But he's one of the best playmakers in the Premier League as well. His passing is just incredible. The way he holds the ball up. I think one of the best players in the Premier League over the last six, seven seasons. I think definitely being the top three. Obviously, KDB probably going to be at the top of that shot, but definitely have a run in for second. And anyone that says all he does is score goals obviously doesn't know much about football or doesn't watch the games because the way he holds the balls up, he never rarely loses the ball, always finds the right pass. All in. Victor, 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 Russia blood. Queen Jack of Diamonds. Wow, Russia blood from Victor. Rush of blood. And that'll just about do it again. Aced on the flop twice against Victor. Yep. That do it. does it. Victor's now down to about 10k. He's out. Is he out? Yes, Stephen Cherry had him covered. He's oh, yeah, out. Oh, Stephen Cherry had him covered. Victor, Victor, Victor. He had a rush of blood there. Victor Eliukin was down to 20, 22, 23 big blinds. He thought, I'll jump in the cup. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Thanks, Ian. Cheers, Ian. Cheers, Ian. Apocalypse, if he's that amazing, how has he won nothing with the world class, <laughs> world class players around him? Have you seen this first squad? <laughs> this first squad's probably the worst I've ever, it's probably the worst that I've ever seen. <laughs> world class players around him. Uh, it's quite funny. Oh, God. Old Ollie Skip in the old world class league. Oh, that's quite a funny one. That's tickled me, that one. He's the only world-class player we got, unfortunately. Sonny, above average, but he's too inconsistent. Cully started off well, but not that good. It's really frustrating. The old Spurs. What can you do? Never going to change. Raise and take for Hamza. We are on 60. <laughs> we are on 60. <laughs> Well, Towers Treble looks down again, guys. Oh, Sorry about that. No, what's happened? I'll give him the weekend off in Luton. Well, that's it. I'm not doing one now till, uh, till at least August. 
Unbelievable. Yeah, Hugo was good about five, six years ago. Now he just makes too many mistakes. His distribution's never been good enough. But yeah, five, yeah, probably go back five, six years ago. You could have called Hugo world class, but how does that affect how Kane plays? I don't think we've ever had a world class player while Kane's been in the squad. We've had some very good players, but to use world class, you have to go back to Modric, Bale, these players that weren't really a weren't round when Kane was. I know Bow had a second spell, but wasn't the player he was when he came back. Yeah, we, we got second in the league, thanks to Harry Kane. Literally carried us that season. And the same with the, uh, the, the Champions League. He got injured. And Lucas Moore had to put on the show for us. But we got very we got very lucky that night against Ajax. Anyone that watched the game that remembers, we literally had probably three clear-cut chances and scored them all. Or four, actually, because Vertonghen hit the bar uh, late in the game as well. But that, that night against Ajax, great night. I think all Spurs fans will remember it, but we got very lucky that night. We literally had three chances that I can remember, other than the Vertonghen head up. And Mora put them all away. And even Mora's second goal, that wasn't really a chance. It was the way he turned, kept the ball at his feet and put that in the bottom corner. That was some finish. Madge is out, Mark Long leaves us on 60. Leaves us on 60. 34, get the money, scrolling across the bottom is a bounce. Hands are here with the Jacks. Gonna go for the free bet versus Mad uh, Turks Open. Yeah, I agree, Dean. I think he's a better playmaker, number 10, and just an out-and-out -out straight. He's so good making things happen. And we're going to have action here. Should be an all-in and a call. Jamie, with the ace-king, wants to be shoving. A time bank for what should be a pretty easy decision for Jamie. Maybe he's just trying to make it look like he's got tens or nines or something. <laughs> Always going to be an all in from him. And there, hands up. there it is. We'll have to call it off. Magic will get out of the way with the fives. And Hamza will be calling. In the goal. Who flips best? Jacks against Ace King. Mad Turk fall to the fives. Massive pot for both these players. These are the key flips that can define your tournament. Uh, Jamie Nixon did buy today and bust. Katie's just lost a big one as well, but she's still in. And we're looking at Jamie in seat number two with Ace King against the Pocky Jags and flops it nice. And look at the five on the flop, the Mad Turk. He was never involved, but he folded the five. <laughs> oh. Well, second king doesn't mean anything. Still fading two outs to get the double. And it does. Oh, the Turk. Oh, wait, wait to see the Turk when the camera comes off. Look, look. Oh. <laughs> Hands on his head. Oh, what have I done? Oh, man. What have I done? I had fives. Oh, man. No, oh, look at his posture. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. That's fine. Yeah, fine. He's fucking out. Oh. Whoa. Oh, I've seen the block, but it's, it doesn't. What a taking out. Two. Would have been on chunks. Chelsea, two. Forest, two. Yeah, I wouldn't have fucking five. Oh, 
I just said that before, anyway, I said I had fives and boom. All in. I'm sorry. Fuck, over the alley, I'm fucking. No, yeah, of course, it was the correct fold. Yeah, absolutely. It can't be results oriented. Yeah. Nope. It was the correct fold at the time. Right hands are in with the 7 3 suited. King Queen for GK. Shoves over the top for his sub 10. Mad Turk going to be calling it off. Could be a double bust out incoming. Mm. Hams are actually uh, in good shape here. 38% free weight. 7 free suited. He likes what he sees. He's near an equity favourite. Uh, come on, the 3-7. <laughs> Here we go. Three-way. Ace on the flop with the flush draws there for the 3-7. Any Broadway, sorry, any four. It was a really nice turn. Yeah, we're going to be losing GK for short. Oh, well, there is. I well, say for sure. It could bring a four. We could chop this up three way. Oh, this would be crazy if it's a four of diamonds. And it's a three. The seven three. The three. The seven three. Yes, it. Oh. Door trips for Hamza. We lose GK, but Hamza back to eight big blinds. Wow. Oh. Not just coming to three, he came three three. <laughs> oh, so the match uh, winning about seven thousand. On the flop, he was knocking out two. Wow. Wow. No news in the football. No. Looks like Treble's down. Looks mm. like Spurs are lost. Mm. One thing I will say about that Champions League run, you've got to remember Kane got injured in the first leg of the quarter final. The second leg of the quarter final. We got absolutely thumped. We had less than 30% uh, possession. We scored two counter-attack goals. And then Lorente couldn't hold the ball up to save his life and then scored a goal of his hand. We got absolutely thumped in that, <laughs> that semi-final by City. Any Spurs fan, if you don't admit it, you'd be biased. But we got absolutely thumped in that, semi, uh, in that quarter-final by City. And then the Ajax game was the same. At home, we were absolutely terrible. 1 0 up, we lost. And then we went to their stadium and uh, we had, I think, four chances and we scored three of them. We were so lucky to get to that final. It was the luckiest run to the final I think you'll ever see. And I'll admit that even being a Spurs fan. So I think that we got to the Champions League final argument without Kane. Kind of falls on that if you actually look at the stats of the games, not the results. Yeah, I agree, Lee. Lucas should have got the start in the final. He was still injured. You could tell he was he was probably like 40% fit, but he obviously just wanted to play. 
I think uh, that was a mistake starting him in the final when he was obviously like 40 50 percent fit wasn't nowhere near you've been out you've been out for six seven weeks and your first came back games back is a champions league final it's a bit it's a bit much is there any corporate football in southampton do i know any southampton fans as rotherham united will be playing southampton next year Villa 2-0 up. Oh, great. There's a surprise. Cheers, Dennis. 13-8 was massive. They're, they're level on points of us now, Tower. We, we, could, we could finish like... Ninth, potentially, I think. Brighton down our necks as well. So we are 30 minutes, 25 minutes off from the 40 minute dinner break. There will be a 40 minute dinner break in 25 minutes. That's it, just getting that one through with the Ace King. So, at the moment, we are zero for three for the treble. Oh, great. <coughs> we really that don't very need often. to boycott it. That don't happen. I'm boycotting it. I'm not doing one next month. I'm not doing one. I'm not doing one again in May or June or even July. There you go. How's that? Yeah, ten of like thirteen. Villa were like thirteen to eight. Ian Needleman said. Villa, a good bet. And Ross County are 3-1 up. Well, there's a surprise. They they beat Dundee 4-0 two weeks ago, so of course they're going to beat them two weeks later. Well, that didn't always work. It, it does if it's 4-0. When, when, when a team loses 4-0 to someone, you don't go and play them two weeks later and beat them, ever. So what on earth are they doing in the treble? Because Dundee United's own form's great. Well, and Ross County's away form's not. Yeah, but how's their head-to-head -head versus Dundee? And, 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 and the thing is, you've got you've actually got a sample of a game that happened two weeks Villa's ago. Villa's not beat Tottenham at home since 2008. Mm -hmm. That's 15 years. Mick, you do not want to know the treble. I'm fuming. I'm absolutely fuming. You put a five on it. I, I, I don't mind it if it loses, but when I actually go and do some research and find out Tower's got a team in the treble that lost 4 0 to the team that they're playing two weeks ago. In theory, it looked good. Has anyone checked on Trigger about Sheffield Wednesday? Yeah, that was a, a strange one yesterday, wasn't it? So we are going to head out to an outer table because we have got an all-in and a call and it's Cal Morial with the ladies against the Kings and Cal going to need a queen or a seven to survive and doesn't. Wadey had the Kings. Wadey never loses. Uh-oh. Cal's dog's gone. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Yeah, really he gets all the chips. He plays so well, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, really yeah. He plays so well. Cal on a bit of a downswing at the minute. Not picked up any points for a while in the NPL. And now he goes before the money again. So not. So he is on a bit of a downswing. Jack in the small raises to 8k and Jamie calling in the big ace jack 5 
two clubs. Middle pair for Ed here. One we could plausibly check, but in terms of range, ace high board could see a bet range here. As Ed. Thirty-four places getting paid, guys. We are down to fifty-six. Just losing Cal Morial, as we saw. Thumbs up, still in on his fumes. Any more goals yet? Uh, yeah, for four-three Dundee, uh, two-two Spurs, and uh, Aberdeen one up. Get Lovely. In. Let's go. Uh, not really. No. You mean you were kidding? I was kidding. You were teasing. <laughs> uh, just before GK, we lost Navdi Chopra. Chris Fraser. Funny, uh, Chris Fraser and Tim Chung in yeah. the 165 pound satellite the other night. Yeah. They were doing side bets. So they were doing 200 pound red or black flops. So Tim was choosing black, Chris Fraser was choosing red. Okay. Uh, and then they said if it's an all red board or an all black board, it's an extra, it's 800 pound. And then they both chose a card with, of their color. Tim had the deuce of spades. Uh, it's an extra uh, 500 pounds. And there was a board that ran out all black with the deuce of spades on it. And Chris had to give Tim 1,300 oh quid <laughs> in, a one, in a 165 satellite. Jeez, I'm playing uh, some side bets on the on the old flop. Wow. Jamie with the A7, raising and taking. <coughs> 20 minutes time. There'll be a 40 minute dinner break. Queen Jack of Diamonds for Jamie on the button. Just raise and take for him. Another one goes, we lose Neil Farrell. Oh no. Neil Farrell, Farraldo exits the field. Stephen Cherry, chip leader in the room, ace five.
with the A6 of hearts here in the hijack. Yes, out of the way. off here in the small blind. 10.84, two hearts, not much going on for you sell here. So probably going to be check. And then Stephen doesn't have to always continue on this board. Could see either or. If he does choose to see bet, will be hand over. Let's go for the check behind. Aid is Aaron's turn. Double plus draw. Paired board. Richarlison is our second striker, if you like. When you look how he's got on this season, not scored a Prem goal yet, has he? He's had one that was offside. Uh, oh yeah, took his shirt off and got a booking, yeah. and it was offside. Yeah. And he can get and he can get 15, 15 in, a, in an Everton team. I know he hasn't played as much, but just shows you how bad the service is at Spurs. We need Prime Ericsson back. That's what we need. I think getting rid of Lamella was a mistake as well. He was a fighter, always gave his all, always chasing the ball down like headless chicken. A lot of big mistakes from the board over the years, getting rid of players we shouldn't, buying players we shouldn't. 55 left, 34 get the money, so 21 <laughs> off the money. Yeah, of course, he scored against Liverpool. I thought he was offside, but they went down the other end and scored, didn't they? I knew we didn't. I knew we didn't get the draw. Of course, first goal of the season coming against Liverpool. <coughs> Most Spurs thing ever. Three 0 down. Three 0 in the 90th minute. Lose four three. <laughs> Ace queen suited for Marius. Can it open off of 17? Players all in, says Hamza. Keep going off. Going to be getting called pretty quickly. suited well out in the lead now hams are gonna need an off suit king or nine just the four outs to survive here and doesn't find it so hams up the seer exits the field He's gonna leave us on 55 indeed you need it Unlucky, sir. Played well. Played well, but uh, taking out Samza departs. Gone through the door and out the room. <laughs> yeah, I've just just got opinions on Spurs, Tim. Still a West Brom fan. Just down the road from me now, West Brom. So, and yeah, might be a Walsall fan next season. Why not? <laughs> Walsall, you know what that. Six five diamonds for Jamie. Sorry, which 
Can open from plus one, maybe a bit on the loose side, but does have most of the table covered. Other than two players. And the other reason as well it is Stevens' big blind, so I'd probably just fold this one here as Jamie against a stack that can potentially bust us. Just 20 spots off the money now. It looks like Steven going to go for the cool hit versus EP with the ace queen. Block time, 10 to 6. Best fairly dry ball texture here. I think we're happy to just see back this one. The 6 5 suited. Here he is. Why has he come now? Storming. Storming. We're running up 10 minutes. What are you doing turning up this late? Oh, we're running up 10 minutes of storming, Norman. Storming, Norman joins us with 10 minutes to go. What I would have done to have him on the, se uh, on the table all session. Put on an absolute clinic yesterday in day 1B. 90% V-pip and was ruining everyone. <laughs> so back to this hand because it's gone check bet call. <coughs> Look at this turn card. Spicy one. Stephen turning top pair, top kicker and Jamie now with a flush draw to go with his six. Spurs goal, says Dennis Short. The river, the king of spades. And Tim Chum comes to the table as well. So balancing at 54. Six tables and nine. And the ace queen for Steven, gonna be good. How are we doing? Twice an eight up. Good to see Spurs losing us per. Yeah, what a terrible team. Awful, awful team at the moment. Deserve it. Said yesterday, I want to see us get thumped by Villa. Something really needs to change. Fifty-four players left. Thirty-four get the money. Will it be in the next session after the forty-minute dinner break? Towards the dinner break, steady session. This one, storming Norman comes oh, far too late for us. There he is. And see four. Yeah, I think the only player that's worse apocalypse is Ronaldo with that in terms of penalty goals. Cristiano Ronaldo, most of his goals are pens, ain't they? Always knocking it in from the spot. Very similar them to actually Kane and Ronaldo. I think they're very similar players. Not much between them. King I flop, King 6 5, two hearts. Jack of hearts turn. Redraw for Ed as he turns the check mark and that's 7k and storming Norman gets out of the way. The last 10 minutes of the session. Still got a few Ballon d'Ors though, ain't he, the great Leo? 
Ronaldo, I know he scored a lot of penalty goals, but still a great player. Can't take that away from him. Did miss the uh, that sitter, didn't he, as well, in the European Cup final against Greece in 2004. Cried his eyes out at full time. When Greece won the Euros, that was an absolute shock. That was Greece. Remember that tower, 2004? Yeah. yeah. Didn't they say, oh, well, oh, even when Denmark won it, they shouldn't have been in the Euros. There's Jack for the Mad Turk. A few hands to go. Karagunis, it's a blast from the pass. Steven, is he going to go for the free bet? No, goes for the call. I think with all the chips here, we're going to continue the ace nine. I used to, uh, Les used to play quite a lot when I was younger, played five a side till I was about 23. It was probably at my peak when I was at like 17, 18. I'm, ter I'm tw nearly 29 now. Definitely would not be able to run around for more than 15 minutes on a full full pitch. Then there's a long jump. Yeah. Is what he's seen. Oh, Southampton play Rotherham United next year. <laughs> any of the uh, any of my, any of the viewers of corporates at Southampton? I've never been to the New Den or whatever it's called. What's their new stadium called? Thank you. New St Mary's. This is about new. 15 years yeah. old, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's new stadium. I was going to say. I was, I, was, I was about to say what happened to St Mary's. The old Dell. Remember the Dell. Yeah, St Mary's never been. Rotherham United plays Southampton next year. Right. Get the corporate uh, shout out. Southampton it must be for next year. If you ask anything else, if they ask anything else, they would have answered it. They had one question and they used it. Five minutes to go until the end of the session. <laughs> If you want a corporate QPR Rotherham Tower, just saying it's done, mate. QPR? Green Spark Rangers. Is that Shepherd's Bush? No income tax, no V80. No money back, no guarantee. No luck of what a rich up for. Norman Norman opens under the gun to 6.5k. Andrew with the eights, flattening in the hijack. Queen Jack suited for Marius in the big blind. King Jack for two diamonds. Norman flopping gut shot. And Broadway drop goes for the check. This one checks through. Pretty quickly. Is that an eight on the turn? Yeah, looks like a nine. Oh, it is an eight. Turn set. And you're firing for eleven point five K and Marius checking the second pair twice. Might have to be calling here for half. 
Yeah, it does make the call, and Norman does have a gut shot here, and over card. Getting four to one. Potential to bluff Diamond Rivers as well. Spurs 2-2. Two, two. Told you I'd get the draw. <laughs> you slagging me off all day long. Told you the Aston Villa haven't beat Spurs at home since 2008. What well, happened with Dundee Ross County? I have no idea. <laughs> so I'm not, not strolled that far down. <laughs> so we do go freeway to the river here, guys. And it is a jack. Oh dear, this is going to spell trouble for Marius. Just going to be checking over to Andrew. And then going to have to pay this off. Offside tower. What was you saying about Aston Villa? <coughs> oh, man. He must have known. So Andrew with the chip mark. Marius has to pay this off. He checks. He checks. Does Marius? We trip Jacks. Yeah, he should do. He's, he's playing. He? Yeah, he should. He, he's playing in flow. Checking over to Andrew. Andrew's got the better lead on the turn. So just check it over to Andrew and hope we get a bet from him, which we're going to get. Just a cold river. Oh, the old left hand fist resting head on it. Yeah, we just have to call versus this size. As Marius just have to call. Can't do anything else. Tower. No, he doesn't have fault. Got to make the call. And this will be the last hand before dinner. Wow, Marius goes for all in. It Oh, he goes for call, I was going to say. So, Marius going to lose this one, and we're going to go straight to an outer, guys, because we have got a monster brewing on an outer table. Last hand before the dinner break, we have got an all-in here. Darren Nail is all in the train glots. This is a 350k pot. Danny Laidlaw's got the boots. Dan Laidlaw with aces, ace king for Darren Naylor. And Alan with the ladies. Chip lead pot. Dan Laidlaw in pole position. Oh, there's a lady on the flop. Ouch. The queen. Oh, and it's Whoa. just a queen high run out. 350k pot going Alan's way. Dan oh, Laidlaw my. can't fade the two outer. That is a monster just before the dinner break. And Danny Laidlaw going to be left with 35k. Alan up to 350 wow. and we lose Darren Naylor from the tournament and on that note guys we're on a 40 minute break we will see you at 20 to 6 see you soon see you soon early on and just applying pressure to Keith Keith coming in with the chip lead and He'll be thinking he could be going home in eighth here if Dan has backdoored into the nut flush himself. Dan could still plausibly have turned a flush here. He could be free betting some uh, ace four, ace five of diamonds. These type of holdings, even ace six, ace seven, ace eight of diamonds could probably all be in there as well. So this is a huge move from Dan Gormley early on in this final table. And back over to Keith here. And I think with a jack of diamonds tower, it's... <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty gross, but it's a gross spot. It's horrible because Dan's only ever making this move for value with the ace of diamonds. He's not going to shove like nines here or ace nine to be elected to free bet that and double barrel. He's not going to shove ace nine with a nine of diamonds. So Keith's jack of diamonds here, although it is the second nuts, it's pure bluff catcher here. We're either behind to the bear ace or a uh, turn flush of Danny, turn nut flush, or He's just got a bluff in this scenario, and Danny with the bottom of his range just going for it here. And uh, notice rubbing the left arm there, uh, caressing. Usually uh, that signals is something people do to calm themselves down, but. This is what we wanted to see, Tower. It's you what mean we've been his waiting all day. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's just uh, trying to, trying to, if not try and put the heart rate down perhaps, try not to give anything away. And uh, Keith here in a really tough spot because yes, we've backdoored into the second nuts, but 
the problem we've got, Sal, like I say, it becomes a bluff catcher the way this hand's played. Like Dan could plausibly have turned a flush with ace X of diamonds, he could have plausibly double barreled as a bluff with a bare ace of diamonds. So this is a gross spot for Keith here and rather him sitting there than me because this is one that's going to take a while and rightly rightly so, the tank's going to be needed here, Tower. This is um, a big, big pot and it's going to be for over a third of the chips in play if he can make the call and be correct. And, Fair credit to Dan though, let's go back to Dan, he's capable of running it in these spots. People aren't capable of making moves like this, free bet, 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 shove as a bluff on final tables. There's only a small percentage of players that have that in them and it's a gift if you like. I know this time it may uh, may leave Dan short if Keith makes the call, but I think it's, uh, you've got to be a certain calibre of player to be able to pull this move, the free bet, the bet, bet, shove without having the goods. Only certain opponents are capable of that and if Keith's aware, Dan is one of those that can have these bluffs. He may veer more towards call, but this is a fascinating hand, guys. And uh, Dan Gormley just running it for chunks of equity here on the mystery bounty final table and putting Keith in the blender. What's he going to do, Tower? What do you think? It's, um, he has a second nuts. He can only put him on the ears to fold. He flicks he it in. It's the, the call of the final so far. And he does make the call. And Dan went for the lot. And he's going to be down wow. to 11 big blinds now. But credit to Keith. Come in with a chip lead. Extending it to 8.1 million chips. Wow. And what, what a hand call. that is. That is a highlight of the week for me so far in terms of hands played. Everything that hand had. Really, really nice line from Dan. Unfortunately, we just run into it. It works if Keith doesn't have the Jack of Diamonds, if he doesn't have the Ace of Diamonds, this is probably gonna work. Uh, but unfortunately for us, we've just run into it. And Keith, up to 8.1 million chips, further the chips in the play going to that man. And Dan now sitting with 11 big blinds. What a call. So you see Tom opening jack nine off in the hijack, can open a lot wider here with the chip lead, a lot of pressure on these guys with ladders and approaching the FT. But Matt never going to be going anywhere here with pocket eights, easy decision for him in the small, just the call. And it's heads up between Tom and Matt Davenport here. Let's see a flop. Flop time is 9-3, second pair for Tom, takes the lead in the hand. It's still my bet small here, Tom Hall. This is a uh, board that's just going to favour us a lot of the time here, being the opener. We do have middle pair as well, so we do have some disguised trips or two pair when the turn is a jack or a nine. So, potential. You can go really small here, as small as quarter potentially. And goes for 21k, so quarter pot is the sizing of choice. For Tom just under and uh, Matt here with d8s getting this price probably gonna call once Tom's still gonna have lots of holdings here all like the Broadways the King Queen Jack 10 all this sort of stuff that we are still ahead of and sometimes he will shut down on some turns seven and diamonds hits the turn so this is where it's probably just gonna go check check here tower I think Tom Maybe a bit optimistic to fire our nine here again. Very hard to get two streets from worse now. I think the eights will fold if we fire, so maybe better to check this one behind. We can also put ourselves in a tricky spot here where we do fire him at ops the raise. So just expect to see Tom Hall check this one back most of the time here on the turn. And there is the check. See a river cup. And it's paying two uh, pair. Well, it is two pair for Tom Hall, but probably going to be very difficult to get value from Matt Davenport here with his particular hand. Matt does have the 8s blocking the nuts, 10-8 could still be in Tom's range, he's going to open 10-8 suited from the hijack, although 10 is probably going to double barrel turn, something to take into account, but Tom will now just opt for probably a larger size here I think now, tower this little disguised jack 9 of us, ours somewhere around like 90 three quarter pot, probably what I expect to see. It looks pretty chunky. That's pot size. That's 105. 
So around 85, 90% up there. And Matt here with the eights, never gonna call this one tower. Just not putting in a quarter of our stack here with eights, we lose to too much. Well. Ah. <clears throat> oh, he's gonna raise. <laughs> Matt Davenport. Is he going to find the raise here? <laughs> what a raise it would be as well, because Tom could still just have some one holding. pair holdings. Matt Davenport, where's he found this shove? Oh, my word. And Tom's got two pair here. This could be the end of Matt. I'm guessing Matt's trying to target all the one pair holdings here of Tom. Like, Tom can check back some ASEX on the turn and go for value on the river, and Matt's trying to target this but Tom's even higher up here with two pair and he's gonna be in the tank here because what will go through Tom's head tower is we do we beat value I don't think we do maybe 9-7 might be in there for Matt but is he gonna check rip that obviously Matt can still have some ace 3 ace 9 ace 7 defending out the big blind he might even float a 10-8 as well wrap around this 9 with back doors so 10-8 of hearts diamonds and spades probably going to be in there but the question we got to ask ourselves is Matt Davenport ever going to do this as a bluff and what are the bluffs tower once Matt calls on an ace 9 free there's not many you can come up with and because of that I think Tom may let this one go Simply because of the board texture on the flop. It's ace nine free rainbow. What on earth is Matt supposed to have here? He can have sets. He can have two pair. And what hand is he going to turn into a bluff? Is he going to rip some nine ten, some eight nine, blocking straights and two pairs? This is just a sick, sick jam from Matt Davenport early on on a big day three. And Tom Hall in the blender oh, here and yeah. lets it go. <laughs> Matt Davenport, you boss, and shows Tom as well. <laughs> Pocket eights. Yeah, yeah there is there now. a reason this guy is top of the National League. Matt Davenport putting on a show early on. Wow. He's not afraid, Tal. He's not afraid of busting. Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. Wowzers. It's 10 for Ian. Raises to 1.3. Under the gun plus one. And Radu here with the ace jack in the hijack. Surprised if he went anywhere this deep with Ian. Probably more inclined to just flat this one versus the early position open. But obviously can mix in a free bet some of the time. And it looks like that's exactly what he's done. Three bets to 3.2. Uh, Julie, if you just give yourself a refresh, should be all right because uh, pitch is crystal clear here for us. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably just connection at home or wherever you may be. But if you give it a little refresh, hopefully it kicks back in. Yeah, give yourself a refresh. Jules, and let us know that it's all right. Because it's all right on both our laptops. Oh, so it's my Time word. Time near four bet to 7.7. .7. Wow, Ian. Oi, oi. Someone over the age of 50, four bet <laughs> bluffing tower. Whoa, well, I'm snap folding. I've, it's just you like, would be. Yeah, I would be. I'd be, be fold, I'd be folding ace-queen here, suited as Radu. I'd it would already have hit the muck. But this is... I guess Ian just thinks Radu's at it too much, and to be honest with you, the ace 10 off tower, it's a really beautiful 4 bet bluff hand, and maybe Ian's been amongst the solvers uh, the last few months, you don't know, he might have been putting some work in off the tables, that could, be, <laughs> that could be the case, and he might have put in the low frequency 4 bet here with the ace 10 versus Radu, who's been fairly aggressive, and with the chips as well. Fair play to Ian, mixing it up, not just having the ace king plus in his four bet range, and uh, now action back on Radu here. And oh wow, oh wow, no is way he gonna five, five bet? bet? Has he picked up on That's something about here? K. Wow, Radu, 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 what senses from him? He has to have picked up on something here, Tower. Read on the situation here from Radu is just so so good. What a play 
five bet bluff tower. We just no way. <laughs> Do you know what? If Ian six bets here with Ace Ten Tower, I'm 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 done. For, I'm having an early finish. He's not doing it. He's, there's no way Ian <laughs> six bets here. How often do we even say the word six bet on stream? Oh wow! But Radu five bet bluff in the ace jack. This is just a level of the law between the, the two line. players. He's doing it no! again! He's doing it again! <laughs> you like them apples? Sold that! <laughs> Ace at 10, 6 bet rips it in for 100 big blinds. Oh my word. Ian is my new hero tower. I want this man to win the comp. Oh my word. 6 bet rip with the Ace 10, folding the Ace Jack out. Where has Ian found that move from? Oh my word. How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> I've waited all day for something and it's just happened. Oh my <laughs> word. Ian. Uh. Do you know what? Do you know what? I, I'd be sat at the table. If I was sat at the table there and Ian said to me I didn't have aces there, I, I would have had a lot of money with him that he had aces in that spot. A lot, a lot of money. But wow, <laughs> wow, wow. Fair play to the man. The six bit rip. Well. <laughs> You've got no chance. So, Ali. Ali with the Queens this time. Kings last, King Jack last time. Kings before. Raising up with the Queens. It won't be a standard raise. Raises to 7.2. Thales gets out of the way. Jack's got a raw smile on his face with a 6x in front of him. Yeah. Oh, he's got oh, a hand he's as got well. Tens. Oh, he the last going in. in with the tens. Is he doing the old uh... sixty bigs, just shy of? And yeah, he's not this put the line. Probably, be a probably left one chip behind. Hot. Ali's going to snap this off, and uh, Jack Oliver going to need a ten to survive. They're all in. Ali Malone, Queens. <coughs> Jack Oliver, all in for 71. Ali Malou, Queens. To the flop. To the flop. 10 needed. Oh, he's oh, it is. He's in the 10. Run like Jack. <laughs> so, some uh, backdoor straight possibilities, but just fading the queen now for Jack. Oh, oh my days! Ill, you think uh, you've got there, and it's a queen on the turn. Ali Malou bumping away. <laughs> Just the one. Oh my days! River. It's oh. ten. Oh. 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 No oh. way! No oh. oh. way did that just happen? Clip it. Boat over quads. Oh. Ali finds the two outer on the turn. Jack finds the one outer on the river. You don't see that every day. Oh my word. You know what Ali Malone's <laughs> going to tell us at the dinner break, isn't it? Oh my god, man. Wow. Jeez. Ten on the flop, queen on the turn. Malone can't believe it. The ten on the river. <laughs> oh. oh god. Run like wow. Jack Oliver. So good to see Carl back at the tables, one of the Thanet boys. <laughs> Ryan Spittle raises to eight. Harry with the pocket fives. We're going to make the call. Yes, could feasibly come in with the old Jack A. Yes, she does. Which will bring in the small big blind. Yeah, Simon not folding this one. Super King getting this price. Closing the action in. It goes four way to the flop. Yeah. Ryan with the bet and lead. Oh, 
flop a set. Yeah, and Ryan's flopped the straight flush draw tower, so this is action Ooh. time. Ryan with the 8-6 of diamonds on an ace high board. Great flop for us whilst once opening in the cutoff. Not only have we flopped the straight flush draw in terms of range, going to be better for us. Uh, and Harry here with his set of fives. Like it, just going to flatten position. Don't want to set off any alarm bells if Ryan's got a hand like ace king, ace queen. We've got that drawing dead to runners. Quadzillas, baby! Quadzilla, baby! Woo woo! Am I getting the chips off, Ryan? Woo woo! Oh, just yeah. I'll look down again. Yep, they're definitely two fives here. Now there's two fives on the board. <laughs> so Ryan firing That's four again. fives. Maybe just trying to fold out some weak ace X, some suited ace X that Harry can have here. Uh, as well as that 9x is going to have a hard time calling a double barrel and obviously Harry flatten in position. You're going to try and get the max on the river with so a shove. So there's one out. Seven of diamonds is straight flush. Oh, I saw they got a dunny. No, where's this dealer done? Where's the bad beat jackpot oh. in the tournament? No way. £245,000. That is incredible. I've never seen this tower on stream. Quads over straight flush. This is a setup. Of all set up. Oh! <laughs> no oh, way! Man. And he can't oh, wait to course. turn him over! No way! Quads oh my gosh! Flush. Look oh. at the table! Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. <laughs> that, we'll never see that again. Ludo says, I never take pictures at poker Tim. I'm we, taking a picture. We will never see that again on stream <laughs> to get that hand here on stream. Look at the cameras, they're all out. Oh my, oh my god. god. Quads over straight flush on stream. Somebody go and get Jim. Ask him if they have a bad beat jackpot for imagine, the world. Yeah, for imagine, the, for that on the imagine that on the cash table. Oh, that is going to be... <laughs> wow. Wow. Right, that's the end of the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. We'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my days. Wow, wow, wow. Just speechless. How wow. does that even happen? Or <laughs> again, he says, get me a pint. <laughs> <coughs> oh my days. Wow. <laughs> I just oh. can't believe it. Wowzers, wowzers. Oh, stuff we live for on stream, it's something we'll probably never ever see again over the years. The chances of that happen are astronomical and to actually get it on our featured table. How'd you, how'd you go out? Oh yeah, add quads. <laughs> no, no good. <laughs> and if there's a story to tell, that is a story for the ages. I don't even mind listening to that one. We've got day one G tomorrow, which is now an ordinary flight, and then the turbo kicks off at 6 p.m. And then Saturday for day two, get down to about <laughs> 60 players, and then the you're, final on the Sunday. You're spot on, Donna. You are spot on too many. That's how many days. <laughs> make you right. <laughs> Here's five for Danny in the big. After an initial raise from yeah. Keith in C number one. A nice free bet spot, I think, Tower here. We've got Keith covered, Keith's third in chips. He's not really going to want to get involved too much. Um, definitely one we could be mixing in a free bet here as Dan Gormley. And on FTs, um, we don't have to go as big as usual with a normal 4X size because of ICM. We can choose like 3X, 3.5X here as Dan to make it somewhere around 7, 800K. That's what I'd like to see, and he is going to take the spot tower. Very nice from Dan. Just recognising the situation and recognising where Keith is in chips and how he has to play tighter here because we have him covered. So this should do the trick a lot of the time. Uh, back over to Keith here, and personally, could go either way. Um, I think Keith is probably more tight to let this one go. Oh, he's just going to quickly call tower here. So Keith, happy to go float post flop here with the king jack. Off to the flop. Another pot brewing. Queen, two, three. Yeah, so this is a big pot tower already. 1.6 milli in the middle here. 
and uh, Danny does flop a wheel draw here with the ace five so probably one we're probably going to continue small uh, 400k 500k something like that somewhere between the quarter pot and third remit is the size I'd like to see here from Dan as always in these free bet situations can go a lot smaller so it does choose the 350 sizing goes even smaller than the 400 so south of quarter between fifth and quarter pot from Dan Gormley and uh, Keith here with the King Jacks Jack of Diamonds working getting this price is he thinking about pulling out the float with this candidate? It's probably, uh, if we are going to float the King Jack, it's probably one of the better combinations we can have. King of Spades, Jack of Diamonds. Uh, let's see what Keith does. Like folding would be fine here as well. Um, just because tangling with Danny, who's got us covered, could put us in a world of hurt. It would be a disaster for us to come eight from this FT when we go in with the chip lead. But big pot brewing here on the FT, guys. Oh, oh and there's the call from Keith. He does pull out the float. And pot, he's got 2.3 million here, working with 1.25 SPR behind. Effective stack of Keith. Whoa, King of Diamonds. So, Brings in the flush draw top pair. Yeah, so Keith loves to see this tower. And uh, now Dan, what's the play on the turn here? Obviously, this king's supposed to be a lot better for mm -hmm. the R range here. Does Danny ever expect uh, Keith to be floating? That's the question. Does he expect Keith to have some floats with some King Jack here, some Jack 10 suit with backdoor spades, hands like that? Um, that's the question Danny's got to ask himself. Because from a range perspective here, this King of Diamonds rolling off, he shouldn't really have any kings here, Keith, other than King Queen specifically. Ace King's going to free bet pre, King Queen's going to call flop and then turn two pair. So it should only really be from our perspective as Danny, uh, King Queen, the hand that Keith has here. And Danny goes for the second barrel here. So maybe going after some fours through jacks, these type of holdings, although jacks or tens might choose to four bet pre, but also perhaps going after some queen jack, ace queen that didn't four bet as well as some queen ten suited that could be in there, queen jack, queen ten suited. So it's a really nice bet that targets that proportion of keeps range, the pocket pairs, the queen x, these type of hands are going to be in a really tough spot now faced with this double barrel however Keith has the one hand that he has pulled the float out with and does contain a king so Keith's going to have to call once more with the second nut flush drawer as backup so it should just be an easy call here from Keith and we're going to take a river tower off to the river Fourth diamond. So over to Danny here. We'll know that he's never going to be good here with the ace five. But has he got the shove in the locker here? Mm. We're probably going to have more bare ace of diamonds than Keith in this spot. Like Keith shouldn't really have too many flushes once the king and ten of diamonds run out. I guess it's good. he can have like some seven, eight of diamonds, eight, nine of diamonds. Ace, Jack of Diamonds, Jack Nine of Diamonds, but with these particular diamonds on the board, the King Ten and the Queen, those being higher diamonds, hands that Keith will probably peel uh, a free bet with. Let's say, for example, King Queen suited, King Ten suited. These aren't a thing, and Danny does oh, go for does. it. He does find the jam here, and Keith sitting here with the second nuts, backdoors into the flush, and Dan Gormley making a big move early on, and just applying pressure to Keith. Keith coming in with the chip lead, and He'll be thinking he could be going home in eighth here if Dan has backdoored into the nut flush himself. Dan could still plausibly have turned a flush here. He could be free betting some uh, ace four, ace five of diamonds, these type of holdings. Even ace six, ace seven, ace eight of diamonds could probably all be in there as well. So this is a huge move from Dan Gormley early on in this final table. And back over to Keith here. And I think with a jack of diamonds tower, it's... <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty gross, it's but a gross spot. it's horrible because Dan's only ever making this move for value with the Ace of Diamonds. He's not going to shove like nines here or Ace nines so have he elected to free bet that and double barrel. He's not going to shove Ace nine with a nine of diamonds. So Keith's Jack of Diamonds here, although it is the second nuts, it's pure bluff catcher here. We're either behind to the bare Ace or a uh, turn flush of Danny, turn nut flush, or... He's just got a bluff in this scenario, and Danny with the bottom of his range just going for it here. And uh, notice rubbing the left arm there, uh, caressing. Usually uh, that signals is something people do to calm themselves down. But this is what we wanted to see, Tao. You what mean we've been his arm's pumping? Yeah, 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 that yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's just uh, trying to, trying to, if not. 
try and put the heart rate down perhaps, try not to give anything away. And uh, Keith here in a really tough spot because yes, we've backdoored into the second nuts, but the problem we've got, Sal, like I say, it becomes a bluff catcher the way this hand's played. Like Dan could plausibly have turned a flush with ace X of diamonds. He could have plausibly double barreled as a bluff with a bare ace of diamonds. So this is a gross spot for Keith here and rather him sitting there than me because this is one that's going to take a while and rightly, rightly so, a tank's going to be needed here, Tower. This is um, a big, big pot and it's going to be for what, over a third of the chips in play if he can make the call and be correct. And fair credit to Dan though. Let's go back to Dan. He's capable of running it in these spots. People aren't capable of making moves like this. Free bet, 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 shove as a bluff on final tables. There's only a small percentage of players that have that in them. And it's a gift if you like. I know this time it may... Uh, may leave Dan short if Keith makes the call but I think it's uh, you've got to be a certain calibre of player to be able to pull this move the free bet the bet bet shove without having the goods only certain opponents are capable of that and if Keith's aware Dan is one of those that can have these bluffs he may veer more towards call but this is a fascinating hand guys and uh, Dan Gormley just running it for chunks of equity here on the mystery bounty final table and putting Keith in the blender what's he going to do Tower what do you think it's <laughs> He has a second nuts. He can only put him on the ears to fold. He flicks he it in. It's the, the call of the final so far. And he does make the call. And Dan went for the lot. And he's going to be down wow. to 11 big blinds now. But credit to Keith coming with a chip lead, extending it to 8.1 million wow. chips. And what, what a hand that is. That is a highlight of the week for me so far in terms of hands played. Everything that hand had. Really, really nice line from Dan. Unfortunately, we just run into it. It works if Keith doesn't have the Jack of Diamonds, if he doesn't have the Ace of Diamonds, this is probably going to work. Uh, but unfortunately for us, we've just run into it. And Keith up to 8.1 million chips, further the chips in the play going to that man. And Dan now sitting with 11 big blinds. What a call! So you see Tom opening jack nine off in the hijack, can open a lot wider here with the chip lead, a lot of pressure on these guys with ladders and approaching the FT. But Matt never going to be going anywhere here with pocket eights, easy decision for him in the small, just the call. And it's heads up between Tom and Matt Davenport here. Let's see a flop. Flop time is 9-3, second pair for Tom, takes the lead in the hand. It's still my bet small here, Tom Hall. This is a uh, board that's just going to favour us a lot of the time here, being the opener. We do have middle pair as well, so we do have some disguised trips or two pair when the turn is a jack or a nine. So, potential. You can go really small here, as small as quarter potentially. And goes for 21k, so quarter pot is the sizing of choice. Tom just under and uh, Matt here with d8s getting this price probably gonna call once Tom's still gonna have lots of holdings here all like the broadways the king queen jack 10 all this sort of stuff that we are still ahead of and sometimes he will shut down on some turns seven and diamonds hits the turn so this is where it's probably just gonna go check check here tower I think Tom Maybe a bit optimistic to fire our nine here again. Very hard to get two streets from worse now. I think the eights will fold if we fire, so maybe better to check this one behind. We can also put ourselves in a tricky spot here where we do fire and Matt opts the raise. So just expect to see Tom Hall check this one back most of the time here on the turn. And there is the check. See a river cop. And it's paying two pair. Well, it is two pair for Tom Hall, but probably going to be very difficult to get value from Matt Davenport here with his particular hand. Matt does have the 8s blocking the nuts, 10-8 could still be in Tom's range, he's going to open 10-8 suited from the hijack, although 10 is probably going to double barrel turn, something to take into account, but Tom will now just opt for probably a larger size here I think now, tower this little disguised jack 9 of us, ours somewhere around like 90 three quarter pot, probably what I expect to see. And a 
looks pretty chunky. That's pot size. That's 105. So around 85, 90% up there. And Matt here with the eights, never going to call this one tower. Just not putting in a core of our stack here of eights, we lose to too much. Oh. oh, he's going to raise <laughs> Matt Davenport. Is he going to find the raise here? What a raise it would be as well, because Tom could still just have some one holding. pair holdings. Matt Davenport, where's he found this shove? Oh, my word. And Tom's got two pair here. This could be the end of Matt. I'm guessing Matt's trying to target all the one pair holdings here of Tom. Like, Tom can check back some ASEX on the turn and go for value on the river, and Matt's trying to target this, but Tom's even higher up here with two pair. And he's gonna be in the tank here, because what will go through Tom's head tower is, we do we beat value? I don't think we do. Maybe 9-7 might be in there for Matt, but is he gonna check rip that? Obviously, Matt can still have some ace-3, ace-9, ace-7 defending out the big blind. He might even float a 10-8 as well, wrap around this 9 with back doors. So 10-8 of hearts, diamonds, and spades probably going to be in there. But the question we got to ask ourselves, is Matt Davenport ever going to do this as a bluff? And mm. what are the bluffs tower? Once Matt calls on an ace-9-3, there's not many you can come up with. And because of that, I think Tom may let this one go. Simply because of the board texture on the flop, it's ace nine three rainbow. What on earth is Matt supposed to have here? He can have sets, he can have two pair. And what hand is he going to turn into a bluff? Is he going to rip some nine ten, some eight nine, blocking straights and two pairs? This is just a sick, sick jam from Matt Davenport early on on a big day three and Tom Hall in the blender right. here and lets it go. <laughs> Matt Davenport, you boss, and shows Tom as well. <laughs> Pocket eights. Yeah. Yeah, there is there now? a reason this guy is top of the National League Matt Davenport putting on a show early on wow. he's not afraid Tal he's not afraid of busting fasten your seatbelts ladies and gentlemen wowzers It's 10 for Ian. Raises to 1.3. Under the gun plus one. And Radu here with the ace jack in the hijack. Surprised if he went anywhere this deep with Ian. I'm probably more inclined to just flat this one versus the early position open. But obviously can mix in a free bet some of the time. It looks like that's exactly what he's done. Three bets to 3.2. Uh, Julie, if you just give yourself a refresh, should be all right because uh, pitch is crystal clear here for us. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably just connection at home or wherever you may be. But if you give it a little refresh, hopefully it kicks back in. Yeah, give yourself a refresh, Jules, and let us know that it's all right. Because it's all right on both our laptops. Oh so it's my money. word! Oh, something here. Four bet to seven point seven. Wow, Ian. Oh yoy. Someone over the age of fifty. Four bet <laughs> bluffing tower. Whoa! Well, I'm snap folding. I'm ju it's just you like, would be. Yeah, I would be. You'd I'd be, be snap folding. I'd be folding ace queen here, suited as Radu. I'd even already have hit the muck. But this is. I guess Ian just thinks Radu's at it too much, and to be honest with you, the ace 10 off tower, it's a really beautiful 4 bet bluff hand, and maybe Ian's been amongst the solvers uh, the last few months, you don't know, he might have been putting some work in off the tables, that could, be, <laughs> that could be the case, and he might have put in the low frequency 4 bet here with the ace 10 versus Radu, who's been fairly aggressive, and with the chips as well. Fair play to Ian, mixing it up, not just having the ace king plus in his four bet range, and uh, now action back on Radu here. And oh wow, oh wow, no is he going to five bet? bet? Has he picked up on That's something about here? K. Wow, Radu, 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 what senses from him? He has to have picked up on something here, Tower. Read on the situation here from Radu is just so, so good. What a play. 
five bet bluff tower. We just no way. <laughs> Do you know what? If Ian six bets here with Ace ten tower, I'm 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 done. For, I'm having an early finish. He's not doing it. He's, there's no way Ian <laughs> six bets here. How often do we even say the word six bet on stream? Oh wow! But Radu five bet bluff in the ace jack. This is just. A level of law between the, the two line. players. He's doing it no! again! He's doing it again! That's amazing! Oh, oh my god! god. That is oh. six foot roll! That is eight eight ten! <laughs> How'd you like them apples? Solve that! Ace at ten, six bet rips it in for a hundred big blinds. Oh my word! Ian is my new hero tower. <laughs> I want this man to win the comp. Oh my word. Six bet rip with the ace ten, folding the ace jack out. Where has Ian found that move from? Oh my word. How would you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> I've waited all day for something and it's just happened. Oh my <laughs> word. Ian. Uh. Do you know what? Do you know what? I, I'd be sat at the table. If I was sat at the table there and Ian said to me I didn't have aces there, I, I would have had a lot of money with him that he had aces in that spot. A lot, a lot of money. But wow, wow, wow. Fair play to the man. The six bit rip. Well. <laughs> You got no chance. So Ali, Ali with the queens this time. Kings last, King Jack last time. Kings before raising up with the queens. It won't be a standard raise. Raises to seven point two. Thales gets out of the way. Jack's got a raw smile on face with a six X in front of him. Yeah. Oh, he's got oh, a hand he's as got well. Tens. Oh, the last going in. in with the tens. Is he doing the old uh, 60 bigs just shy of? And yeah, he's not for the line. He's probably, a probably left one chip behind. Pot. Ali's going to snap this off. And uh, Jack Oliver going to need a 10 to survive. They're all in. Ali Malone, Queens. <coughs> Jack Oliver, all in for 71. Ali Malou, Queens. To the flop. To the flop. Ten needed. Oh, yeah. Hello. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. We are back. Found a feature table for the session that we've got a lot of notable names on this one, familiar faces. And these are the chips as the first hand takes place. Oh, no, that's the prize pool. We'll get the chip counts in shortly. So in one, we got Robbie Ball in two, Katie Swift. Three is Ollie White. Four, Alan Gilmore. Six is Dan Laidlaw. Seven, Alan Krushash. Eight, Rob the Rast. And in nine is Lin Chen. So we saw just before the break that hand on this table. 350k pot going the way of Alan finding the two outer versus Dan Laidlaw. So here are the chip counts guys. There we go. The remaining players left in the field. Yuzu Yin, we threw him on the feature table last session of the day yesterday. He's had a great start to day two. Stack field, actually, just looking down some of the names. Robbie Ball, Brandon Shields, Wadey, 
Tim Chung. Picasso still in. A lot of good, notable names left in the field. This is the feature table that we have got for the next two hours. Probably not going to get to the bubble this session. Right, we'll get very close by the time we get to the next break. And Katie here off of 14 big blinds, all in with the ace queen suited. Katie gets that one through. Bon chance mon filet, says Elisabetta on YouTube. Bonjour. <laughs> Got a prop swiftly up. Second chair coming our way. Not got the usual comfy chairs that we have for the feature table. As Robbie opens the fives from under the gun. The giggles are out. Deciding to peel the Jack 9 suited here off of 15, just sub. Might have just let this one go off of our stack size. Want to preserve them chips, wait for our hand so we can just move in ourselves rather than flatten. But gets a delicious looking flop. Top pair, flush draw. And Robbie with the fives, checking it over to Alan, who is going to go for the bet. 7.5k into 20. A tough one here for Robbie out of position with the fives because if we call here, we're not going to be able to call a shove on the turn. So much better just to let it go now. Some of the times we will get bluffed by a jack 10, queen, jack, queen, 10 type hand, but they're still going to have a decent equity versus our fives. So just out of the way out of position. Just a quick chat with Nathan Slayer. Come in, he's not seen us, didn't know where we were set up, didn't know where we were talking from. So had a quick chat. Bon Sean Monfield. Do we know what that actually means? Uh, I, just, I hope I've not been swearing. I just uh, replied bonjour. Like it. Bonjour, Elsbieta. Oh, I just put it in Google Translate. Towers treble is useless. <laughs> 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 There's the translation for Bon Chon Mon Flit. Yeah, there is still a problem with the online app. Uh, Grosvenor Poker is still down, we don't know why. Apparently a lot of my poker is up and running again, but uh, we don't know why. Not had any word from anybody. Apparently it's doom.
six. Thirty four places being paid. Yes, and we're on forty eight. Four and eight. Forty eight. Yeah, one gone already after the dinner RM GDPR. So forty eight remain. Things will start to slow down this session. As Ollie opens the freeze from under the gun. to the table after winning that huge pop against Danny Laidlaw. Queens against Aces against an open from Dan, uh, Darren Ace Naylor. King. Ace King for Darren Naylor. Ace King, Aces, Queens, Queen on the flop. 350k pop goes the way of Alan. Dan Laidlaw could have been one of the chip leaders in the room but yeah. he instead he sat there grinding sub 10. Yeah. And he'll know how to uh, work the clock as well in his favour. Good Rob, and the cut off ace seven off here. Because he's going to let it go. Over to Katie in the small line with the queen seven off. Should be continuing. Just want to complete here. <coughs> Yeah, he does go for the right, uh, the call. And Ollie's got one we could potentially raise here, Tower. 9 4 off from the big blind face, and a complete is definitely a hand at some frequency that can raise it up. Always speak about these spots on stream, want to be really polarized, want to have our worst and our best hands. And Ollie, with one of his worst hands here, raising it up very nice from him. Takes it down, just 9 4 off. Good to see Alison Moyer going very well in the uh, chip counts as well. Alison. Chip leader from Yazoo. Looking from the window. Obviously down at the bottom, Katie when she lost with 10s after hitting the 10. Danny Laidlaw and Marius. Dave McConaughey who won. 888. 888 in London. A couple of weeks ago. Mm. He's struggling on 45,000. Mm -hmm. 14 off the money, as it currently stands. in the calf, raising to six. Katie, ten, six of spades. Not going to be playing this one. And then ten, three of hearts in the big is going to defend the suit at ten, three. Queen, four, five. Two spades. Case five on the flop for Robbie, giving him middle set. Going to be difficult to get any value in the hand that Alan is holding. And then just check that fold as expected. Yeah, I'll see that. 
Blind or blind. Yep. All in. Alan. Says Alan. Yeah, shoving the sixes and Dan makes the call with the queen deuce suited. He needs to get a little bit fortunate, does Danny Laidlaw. He got very unfortunate just before the break. Aces, queens and ace, king. The queen is winning. Not a lot you can do in that situation. Get him in in front. Is it the two for extra outs? We've gone from three outs to five. Backdoor spades a thing as well. Oh, oi oi. We've gone from five outs to 14. It keeps getting better. Can he do it? Two, the queen, or a spade? No, it's not the ace on the river. Okay. There's the aces. Lose Dan Laidlock. Unlucky Dan. Just before him, losing Michael McGee. So should be on 46. 46, 12 off the money. Imagine Luton Town in the Premier League. Luton Town? In their play? In the Premier League. Could you well, imagine? They, they were in League One. Oh, they're in Division One. And we found out the other day that uh, they were relegated the last season of the old Division One in 92. Okay. Or 91, 92. Never been in the Premier League, but we're in the old Division One. Remember the famous David Pleat running across the pitch when they survived in mid 80s? I remember the famous David Pleat taking over after Hoddle for a couple of months at Spurs, and I think we won one game out of about eight back, you know, back in 2004 2005. Yeah. And then Jack Santini came in, if you remember Jack Santini as Spurs manager. Jack Santini? That's not one that many will remember. Never heard of him. Okay, he wakes up with the ladies here, shoves over the plus two open for 16 bigs and tough spot for Ollie here with pocket eights because mm. he should have a couple of hands in here that we do dominate. That makes a very good lay down there, Ollie. And maybe because Katie is on the tighter side, I don't think Katie's going to take the ace five suited, stuff like that. Maybe not as low down as Deuce's threes four, so Ollie maybe choosing to fold because of the opponent in question. Katie very solid, she doesn't pull her chips in light and I think Ollie will I love be aware when she of that. Was all in and she turns into a statue. <laughs> she never moves at all. And she'll do it a couple of times, trying to build on that stack. Let me get the chips built up, getting close to the money. 12 off the money. the cup going on upstairs it must be yes how many tables they got there six six maybe because there's no tables in the uh, room that we're next to now it's no quiet. no there isn't which is well, I don't think they're going to move them all now though, are they 
They wouldn't move them all. Day two cup will probably be in this spare room tomorrow. But it's very quiet. I'm guessing there's only Dave in the room now. Yeah, just Dave. Nobody to no, no nobody to disturb him. So it should be perfect impeccable. Act, perfect action tracking for the rest <laughs> of the day. He's got no mates anymore. They've all left him. Queen 5 suit for Elite, chip leader at the table. Well, not chip leader actually, because Alan's got him covered, but I think he's just going to take initiative a lot of the time when folded to Queen 5 suited here. And Rob with the ace 8 in the big blind. Expect just to see a defend here from Rob. Least Jack Deuce. Two diamond board. We've got uh, action here. Flush draw for Ollie. Top pair. Back door up. Flush draw here for Rob. We expect this to be C bet for Ollie. Almost always here after opening this one. Approaching the bubble. Good board for range and good board for actual hand. So, going to become a very good hand to bet here. Just thinking about size to potentially go. Going to go for the third 5k. 16.5, so 30% from Ollie, and Rob just has to proceed with a check call. We don't have any other option here as Rob always playing check call. Raise just doesn't achieve anything. And obviously we're not folding top pair to one bet. Absolutely. Pulled the big 5k out in the mystery bouncer, did Rob the Ross? Yeah, he did. And pulls trips out on the turn here with the ace 8. And it's one that Ollie We'll probably take a freebie here, Tower. It's one of these situations we talk about a lot, hand reading, X position versus big blind. Rob's called on the ace jack, deuce board. So he's got a lot of jack X, ace X, which we're not folding to a second barrel. And he's also got some front door flushes in there that we dominate and want to keep in the pot. So good to check behind and take a free one from Ollie there. And six on the river. Rob might go in the hunt for value here. Could still get caught by a jack, queens or kings. Can plausibly rep front door diamonds, some king, queen, queen, ten, three, four, all this stuff as our bluffs. Nah. 26.5. Finds pot exactly. And a quick fold from Ollie. How are we doing, Bort? How's that? How's things? What have you been up to this weekend? Katie won't be playing the free deuce. on the button until it's big yep and the thing is like i'd probably like alan probably not aware of it but lynn sitting second in the national league or third maybe now uh, chasing down them points and he, he's going to be wanting to get a min cash tower he's going to basically be playing to get on that right side of the money so yep. going to be overfolding a lot of spots chasing some mpl points but alan makes it six and then in the big blind with the A6 diamonds here. Like one that we should just be calling. 12 off the money. A hand that potentially could find its way into the free bet range some of the time, but 
got to understand the situation of where we are at the tournament in this spot. And I think Lynn's actually just taking 30 seconds here to run the clock down, 12 off the money. Which is good initiative. Take a bit longer with our decisions. King 310 Rainbow. Aaron, in terms of range, just going to have lots of bets on this board. Double Broadway Rainbow, round third. <laughs> and it's always folding tower, I think. Yeah. Just going to run the clock down. So important that he does get them points. Because what the points make tower? They make a lot of prizes. They make a lot of packages. Points make packages. Oh, I, I thought there was a different saying. Prizes. Yeah, but it's packages. It, 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 I know, but it, this isn't prizes, right? This is the GUKPT live stream. was <laughs> following. Yeah, points make packages. The National League playoff final is going to penalties as it stands. Counter come back from 1 0 down and 2 1 down. Is it not a two legged affair? I've got to be a two legged affair. And speaking of the NPL as well, I've actually got uh, some other news about the NPL that's happening at the Goliath Tower. Mm, go on. Something I'm going to be doing that you're not, unfortunately. Huh? 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 I wonder. I, I might have heard through the grapevine. You might have heard it, so, so, so it's not actually might not be working. So you I'm, might not. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen, right? From the powers that be, anyway. But I have heard at the Goliath, yeah, there's going to be an NPL players party what? for the people that made the top hundred last year and are in the top two hundred this year. So uh, hopefully we'll have a day off and uh, a players party. Uh, maybe, maybe. Where are you that from? That's well. Can't disclose my sources, unfortunately, but hopefully that's going to be happening at the Goliath. And uh, to get your invitation, unfortunately, Tower, top 100 or top 200 this year. So you better get playing some 25-25s, boy. Mm. Free bar as well. If they'd have said, <laughs> what? If they'd, if they'd have said that at the beginning of the year, there'd have been twice as many people in it. Surely. Uh, unfortunately, Kev, we can't. He said, come on off the foul treble, let's do a tower ass giveaway. Uh, I've done the, the budget on towers treble. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all gone. They say for robbing the cut off one that we should open. Saw him fold this hand in the hijack last little bit, but cut off. Gonna be opening for short. Lynn out of the way. Robbie will do the same. Katie okay, with the King Six off it versus cut off kind of close. We uh, feel like we're gonna play well post and not make any mistakes. Could definitely defend. We wanna just preserve them chips and wait for a better spot. Wouldn't mind a fall from Katie. So that's get out of the way. But we'll see some players defend that one versus cut off.
close to the superstar, so I probably caught on the table. So yeah, so you get a bit nervous. Starstruck. Yeah, yeah. A bit shaky. So like that one's getting all the treatment. Well, well. See, Alan there, King 5 suited towel, a low jack, chip lead at the table, has yeah. to be an open, like approaching the bubble as the chip leader, but just takes the tight approach, and to be fair, it saved him some chips, because Rob would have been free betting. Opens the ace-king here from the high jack. How are you doing, Phil? Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing, Mr. Pratt? You good? Just raise and take up to 114. <coughs> <coughs> the table. This is six. Oh. Only with the ace eight suited here in the small. Be continuing and Alan 5 3 off on the big blind. Not defended. Seven three deuce, two spade board. But we have got a nut flush draw here for Ollie. Quick continue for Craig. I like the choice to continue this hand versus small blind. Ollie's going to have a lot of king queen, queen jack, all these hands, king jack, king ten suited, king nine suited. So we can fold out with this bet. And we've also got the two over cards and some nice backdoor possibilities with the queen ten. And there is one of them. And this has to be a double barrel here for Craig Tower. Let's see if he can find it. We can see it's not going to work, but looking at things from a long term perspective, mm -hmm. nice from him. Sizes up as well, goes from 16 into 30, which is north of half, and Ollie has a pure call here. Never want to raise, just want to call. Obviously not folded. Just going to take his time before putting the 16K into the middle. And now, 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 Craig, have we got it in the lockup? This is the question tower. Like this board uh, and this hand, I just think has to be a free barrel now. Mm -hmm. We've opened plus one, we're against small blind. It's gonna have a lot of like eights, nines, tens, stuff like that that are gonna call twice that we can still fold out. Guess will be some ASEX in there. Probably just the ASEX of spades, maybe ace queen that just flattered from the small. Craig does go for the third barrel here and this is a tough spot for Ollie on the end 36 into 62 around 60 percent here from Craig as a bluff with the Queen 10 I'm a big fan I love the line from him and it's gonna be a tough task for Ollie to call because Craig's still gonna have the better ace X here he could go for free streets with ace 10 plus ace 10 ace jack ace queen all gonna be in there ace king as well although we blocked that pocket sevens it's definitely a hand he could have as well. Kings as well on the river. I think Kings can still bet turn. Once Ollie calls on the 7-3 deuce. And then what are the bluffs? From Ollie's perspective, we block the spades. So spades very unlikely. So basically going to be the backdoor hearts. And 
gets it through. Very well played from Craig there. Gets Ollie off of the top pair. Fabulous. Well done, Craig. Really nice free barrel that tower. Just really good understanding of ranges and when this ace of hearts rolls off, this is just going to have to be bet bet on most runouts. And uh, gets the job done. Well played from Craig. I think it's the it, I think it's the latter, uh, Rowie plays definitely the latter. He's been a regular on the tour for a while, Ollie. Always looked the same. I think that uh, photo that PK's taken of him doesn't do him justice. Penalties <laughs> 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 at Wembley. Two weeks league two. Need Harry Kane on all of them. Absolutely. He misses one penalty out of 50 and that's all you get remembered for. <laughs> Sunderland back to 1-1. One, one. There you go. Massive game. Massive. To get into the Premier League. I think it's worth about 150 million, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> so 44 players left, 10 off the money. Here in Edinburgh, ten. <laughs> ten off the money. this from Katie Ace 5 off in the hijack hopefully we see fold here tower yeah like we got a couple of reshuffle stacks behind us we got Ollie and Craig chipped up should be letting this one go she might just be tanking actually for the 30 seconds she probably knows it's a fold straight away but good to use the 30 seconds up approaching the bubble Ollie opens the pocket fives here from the cutoff, and Alan just chooses to flat the ace 10 with position. Craig going to come along as well with the queen jack in the big blind. Flop time. 7 8 9 flop. Not really much for anyone here. Expect this to check through fairly often. Alan could have taken a stab actually with the ace 10. 10 of clubs wouldn't have minded it. Checking going to be fine as well. Craig still in the mix from the big line. And Craig does have the two over cards and gut shot to the nuts and going to have the advantage in terms of range on this board. Going to have a lot more stronger hands than our opponents. Ball in from the big blind. So it does take the initiative and fires for 9.5k. And Alan with his up and down, getting three to one and two over cards, gonna have to call here. Oh, Bostock, says Lee Richard, plays for Knox County, Jake. Who? Bostock used to be in the Spurs Academy. God, would have been, well, I reckon over 10 years ago. All right. And an ace of spades on the river. So Alan makes the best hand. He's got 49K back. Approaching the bubble. And Craig will probably recognise that Queen High are never going to be able to show down the winner once Alan calls the turn. It does give up. And Alan going to check as well. Craig to show. will show the Queen Jack. And Alan shows the Ace 10. Gets up to 90,000. Still on 44. 12 off the money.
and we are going to head over to an outer table, guys, because we on, have then. got an all-in and a call. It's all-in on a king-high flop. It's Matt Erdman <laughs> with the king-queen, Colin Gillen with the aces. Hearts not working, so Matt Early needing a king, king or a queen. Oh. Matthew Early finds the five out up on the river. And uh, looks like only a small nick in the stack of Colin Gillen. Matt Early getting a double up near the bubble. We'll be happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> 15, 13, 32, 34 maybe. 34 kit. Ace 4 suited for Katie. One we can open. Raises to six. Blythe. Is that not a place in Scotland, Blythe? Blythe? Uh, no, it's in Northumberland. Northumberland. Well, no, north of Newcastle. Oh, okay. There used to be a team in the 70s and early 80s called Blythe Spartans and they always they were non-league they've always been non-league and they always got to the third round at FA Cup for years and years and obviously at third round in them days yeah, yeah. playing a big team yeah, yeah. and it meant so much yeah. Blythe Spartans Alan defending Katie flopping top pet these four of spades here, one that we could definitely mix into the check range. Need some top pair checks. And this is a fairly nice candidate to do it with. Versus Big Blind in particular. Continuing for third though. That bet is going to be fine as well. But I think we will have some checks at some frequency. So Alan goes with a check call. The four would be ill. And it's the seven of hearts. Check. Yeah, and this is one that's like a two street hand for Katie here. It's very difficult to ever get three streets from worse. So sometimes the best way to proceed is to check back the turn and then go for our street of value on the river, just repping like a king queen king jack type hand, miss flush draw, and trying to get like hero by a ten potentially from the big blind nine hearts on the river. And what we also do as well, sometimes we induce bluffs from our opponents. So Alan here with five high might go for the stab knowing that he's not going to be able to show down yeah. and uh, Katie can just pick it off with her ace four another merit to check him back the turn of our top pair with a hand that we're not getting no more than two streets with uh, but Alan doesn't fall into the trap and checks over five high and Katie now will be going for value try and get called by a ten specifically so I don't think we need to go too large 7.5 yeah I like it Tower. I like it I'm really giving those 10s a tough time of folding but Alan on this occasion just with the 5-3 building a stack up nicely back up to 70k K Swift we're on 44 <laughs> Neil Farrell in the background. Always two points. It's never one. There's one in his right hand, one in his left. <laughs> Saves him doing his steps to the bar every ten minutes. He only goes to the bar twice an hour now. That's very true. Rolling across the bottom is the payout structure. 34 players game paid, 30, 44 left. So we're 10 off the money.
white with the jack nine suited from plus one. Rob with the jack eight off in the big blind. Just lets it go, approaching the money. Wouldn't be letting that one go post bubble. But so important when you do have these sort of 30, between anywhere between like 15 and 30 at the moment. You want to be playing tight up. So important that we get that min cash. Prizes at the bottom of the screen for you, Dylan. Still on 44. Here we are. Ten off the money. It's usually this session, but uh, today could be an exception. Yeah, you're, well, level 16, level 17, isn't it? It's like we're always on the bubble just before break. And sometimes we go into break. It's uh, always usually goes between level 16 and level 17. Still on level 15 at the moment, so got a while yet. And things will slow down. It's folding around to Rob in the small blind. Like Alan there, I'd, I'd be opening the 10 5 clubs on the button. We've got two, we got Rob and Lynn that we've both got covered in the blinds, and potential to put even more pressure on Lynn. He's chasing some national league points, but. Alan may not be aware of these things and just happy for him to sit there with his nice big stack. As Rob completes with the Jack 7 off. And Lynn, both options available, one we can check. But at some frequency, we'll need to raise these hands, the trash holdings, and it's going to go for the raise with the 9 4 off. Makes it 12k. So big 4x size in here over Rob's complete. Jack 7 suited. Still feel like Rob's going to come along. Now, now, flop 937, two hearts, flush draw for Rob. Flush draw for Rob. Lin Chen. 150,000. Gonna be betting. Yeah, big flop here. Yeah, top pair. Against a flush draw and a pair for Rob Duras. Yeah, Lin finds third on the 973. And Rob, not gonna be going anywhere. Look at the outs at the top tower. Just look. <laughs> That's one or two, isn't it? It's like all the deck. <laughs> it's actually for some reason got because because Rob's equity favourite. It's actually got Lin's outs up there. So essentially, the bricks. And Rob gets there on the turn in the form of two pet. Yeah. And probably where we want to start checking now is Lynn with the 9-4. Don't think there's too much merit in betting on this turn. All the Jack-10, Jack-8, 10-8 now going in front of us. Oh! Wow, nine of spades. Lynn finds the two outer on the river. Only way we could get there. And Rob are going to have a real tough time. getting away from this if he leads and gets raised I think he can find room to fold but if he checks and then bets just going to have to pay this one off there's no questions asked about it it's going to have to be a call here, Lynn's raised 4x pre not going to have too much 9x in there, the 9 free off 9 deuce off, 9 4 off probably 8 9 suited 8 9 off And there's a snap call from Rob and then they're going to show the yeah. 9 4. Unfortunate river for Rob. Not much we can do. Absolutely not. 
half the pipe. Oh, here we go again, Tower. What's happening over there? Two and out a table. Go on then. Oh, we're going to lose what? The Mad Turks team. So we got Michael Howard, who's all in with Kings versus the Eights of Abdul Makip. So Michael Howard. Well, I'm liking this for double. Yeah, still liking it for a double. I'm loving it for a double. Yeah, there we go. Here comes the six. That's nice. Two, double up for Michael Howard. Very nice indeed. Perfect timing, get the many kings. There's storming Norm as well. Just sat there patiently watching. So Michael double to 75k tower and then the very next hand, well three hands later, yeah. three hands later this happened. We have Michael Howard all in with the pocket eights this time. Oh. Against the ace queen of Stephen Cherry. So this time Michael Howard with the eights against the ace queen of Stephen Cherry. Is he going to go double double in four hands? Absolutely. Boosh. Here we go. Nine. Four. There yeah. we go. Double Boosh. double in four hands. Up to 150k from Easy 30k. Hit. Tim Jones still it. That's a dream tower. You're sitting there, you've got 30k, you're 10 off the money, and you go double up, double up, and give yourself so much breathing room. Middle pair of Alan versus the bottom pair of Robbie. Should be calling this as Robbie versus third. for another bet. Might have started checking this hand once Robbie calls flop. But gonna go for the second barrel, which is probably gonna get the job done. 12 into 26 and a half, 40 percent thereabouts. So, still on 44. As you said, it was going to slow down. This is normally the session it gets in the bubble, but today we think this is going to be an exception. Well, yeah, like it's usually level 16, level 17. Yeah. Always either side of the break. It's usually even like 20 minutes before the break or 20 minutes after. So, we're still tracking for normally where we're at in this stage of the tournament. As Blythe moves in with the ace and nine. Shove him for just sub 13. So just sub 14. Big blind 3k. Hello, 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 hello. Well, you like? Tell about your git. I like that. I like his name on YouTube. That's in posh letters, isn't it? And it oh. yeah, above it is. Ooh. <laughs> How are you, Telba? I hope things are good. You're watching the live stream from Edinburgh in Scotland.
Okay, with the kings here. Love to see her complete this tower. Like Ollie's just going to be relentless here, ten off the money against one of these twenty big blind stacks. So, really hope that Katie finds the complete here. Just think about the situation. Ollie's got all the chips. He's going to be raising relentlessly, so we can then comfortably go for the lint re-raise. But unfortunately, looks like she is going for chips. Still potential to get some action though. If Ollie finds some something of playability in the big line. The 10 do suited. Fairly close one facing three and a half X. We are gonna raise like the sizing from Katie. I just think Kings against someone that is gonna attack our complete 10 off the money. I think we've gotta be just calling cool there. <laughs> I guess if Katie's not too comfortable going post out of position when ranges are super wide and worried that Ollie won't, might check back and then be playing against uh, basically in any two range, maybe didn't fancy it, so just went for the raise to three and a half X. We have lost one. We're down to 43. What was it, Jeff? What was it, Jay? Uh, what was it, Jay? It was. What was it, Jay? Ed Swales. Oh, no. And just before that, lost uh, Neil Irvine. Oh. Neil Irvine and Ed Swales. Well, it's just 43 on our list, so. 43 <laughs> it is. Dylan Bainbridge says Steve Cherry is going to run to final table and clean up. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. <coughs> Cheers, Calma. Did you say Irvine? I only did because you know the Macklemore song, Jimmy Irvine. It's spelled exactly the same, same way. To be fair, no, I don't. You don't know the Macklemore song. I don't even song. know who Macklemore are. It's a person. Is it? Yeah, you know the one, I'm gonna pop some tags, that one. I got $20 yeah, in yeah, my yeah, pocket. Yeah, 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 there you I go. Know that yeah, one. There you go. Oh, yeah, do I know some Macklemore? <laughs> oh, oh, get in. I got $20 in my pocket. I know that one. Yeah, he's got a song called Jimmy Irvine, spelt like that. Oh, so I've, okay. I've way up and pronouncing it wrong. Oh, okay. I'm surprised you knew that tower. Hey, yes, and, and, the, and the other and the other one, you know, the ceiling the ceiling can't hold us. That one. Here we go back. This is that one. You must know this that. This is one. the moment. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm into these. Get me some Macklemore. Get me more Macklemore. And then he was on the online situation. Uh, I know the Grove, Grove the client is not running. That's all I've been told. We're not being told anything at all by the online team. So we can't see anything more apart from you're telling us it's down and we believe you. I do think that a lot of the eye poker is back up and running. And see Andy Headley in the background there and get up and tuck his chair in. What? 
and that is because Andy Edley. we have just lost Picasso well, from hey, the tournament. So Andy out of here. Two seven seed open. Ouch. Sevens raises to six. Two spades. So it should be hand over. Just expect this to be checked that fold almost always. Alan still chip lead at 123 bigs. Just being announced. That'll be blinds up then. Yep, blinds up after this hand. One more hour taking us to 20 to 8, probably a 20 minute break back at 8. And we get to the money before then. As Rob goes for the open with sixes from under the gun. Nine suited here for Katie. And versus gun here, Rob. Rob starting the hammer 20 effective. I think we're just supposed to fold. There might be some sort of small frequency free bet versus under the gun with the King Nine suited. Nice hand to do it with as a bluff, but much prefer the fold. Mm -hmm. Life with the eights moves all in. And Rob hates to see this, not going to be able to call it off, I don't think. I'd be surprised if we saw Rob call this with sixes. Doubt Blythe shoving is ever shoving deuces through fives. So we're either in this dominated situation, drawing to two outs, or we are flipping. So it's one of these, we're either going to have 20% or 50%. Not a good situation to be in, especially close to the money. So I expect Rob to just let the sixes go. Hasn't folded instantly. say to Alan just to uh, add something to it. Blythe hasn't played a hand since he sat down as well. He's been fairly snug. So something else to take into account. 
Uh, average gold a gamer with Rob Stack on the gun should the better play have been to shove rather than the mim razor. No, certainly not. You do not want any shoves uh, off of 20 big blinds from under the gun. You don't want to have that in the arsenal. If you've got 20 bigs under the gun and you want to play the hand, just open. Just make it 2x or just north of. You shouldn't have any shoves for that amount of big blinds first in from basically any position except blind on blind. To be honest with you, I think I think a fold might even be an option there for Rob. Maybe a bit nitty, but like these small small pairs, just no sort of properties for blockers. Blocking all the trash if you like. Six is still going to be fine to open, but I think fives through deuces would have seen Rob fold. As Robbie with the king five of hearts is going to open from plus one. Rob in the big completes. Here we go. Robbie initially raised in C1. Robbie Bull. 7 5 Jack. Two hearts. Yeah, nice one for Robbie. Bottom pair. And a flush draw to go with it. And Rob checking it over with his bottom pair. Could be in a lot of trouble here, Rob, with his stack size. His quarter piece. I could even see the shove here from Rob once Robbie C bets and would be getting snapped off and be in horrific shape drawing to an offsuit six. I'm not sure if he will decide to take that approach this close to the money. But you will see a lot in tournament poker off of these type of stack sizes, defending the big line, <laughs> catching a piece and going for the check raise shove. And he is still going to go for it here, Rob. And Robbie will make the quick call. And Rob is in horrible shape. Not the hand that he wants to see. Robbie. Any chops as Rob did us. <laughs> I'm going to need to hit a six by the looks of this. Ah, dead. That's the dead. Man. That will do it, and we lose Rob Duras from Unlucky the tournament. Rob. So going to be down to 42. Unlucky Mr. Rob Duras. Pulled down the 5k big prize in the bounty early this week, but no luck in the main event. Right. 
down to 41. Seven off the money. Alan Palin with the ace three suited on the button and Lynn should be coming along with this one from the big blind but notice how Lynn has just taken his time of every decision even though he's got a stack really important for him to get some points this week with Cal Morial bricking everything so yes. far he's up to 200,000 he's doing very well Middle pair, nice check candidate out of position to Allen. And not really much going on here for Allen, so I think this is just a white flag wave. Well, he is going to take a stab. He's going to try and take the initiative here. Prefer at least one club on board if we are going to start firing. That has been fairly snug, even though he's got all the chips, and so maybe trying to use that to his advantage here in terms of his image at the table. Not going to be working. Check call. Cool. Hearts on the turn. on the river so check mark and away of Robbie I think this is a bit too thin to be value betting here tower because Alan will have some like Queen Jack King Queen that want to start check and turn if we are going to bet don't expect to see a big size I think no more than third maybe thinking that he could extract some value from some worse 10x some Jack 10 King 10 but I think we're supposed to play check here simply because how Alan's range looks like can have some Queen X himself but does go for the small bet and always going to be a small size and we do choose to bet this river goes for 8k into 46 so just north of the sixth pot train hero we here side what do we are we? what do we beat uh, exactly nothing we, no. literally we don't beat a thing no. we do not beat a single thing what hands does robbie check call flop with that we are ahead of but he oh. is going to find the hero and robbie going to show him the ace 10 well played Robbie, nice yeah. bet on the river, sizing gets him paid. GKBT main event, day two, Edinburgh. We're down to 41, 34 getting the money. The only chance you've got to keep in the stream on the living room big telly if, is if the bubble goes before Eurovision starts. Any chance of 15 second time makes? <laughs> what time does that Euro thing you start with, Arky Dunbury? Let us know. We're only seven off the money, Paul. Put it on record. Then play it back in fast forward. It'd be much more fun.
Queen, Queen four, flop. Ollie flopping top pet. Well, we've got 45 minutes to lose seven players. No, an hour and ten. 45. Because oh. we, we, go, we go on break in 45 oh, minutes, right. and then when we come back from break, it will be 8 p.m. So they'll have a choice. Well, they'll have a choice to tune yeah. into Eurovision or come back for the penultimate session of the when day. I were looking, when, I, when I was looking earlier, when I was sticking on the old... Uh, <laughs> uh, the UK, to finish in the top five, was 20 to 1. How bad is the song? To finish in the top five, they were 20s. It must be horrendous. I'm not saying it is because I've never heard it. But it right, how? How is that even. Oh, to finish in the top five. Are they not all horrendous, the Eurovision they, songs? They probably are, but. On in time, some grow on you, like. You remember some of them, but. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's bloody awful. It's bad. I heard it the other day. <laughs> there we go. Someone's just scored tower. Yeah, then with the Mackums that are cheering. Alan opening the ace tent makes it 8k, and Katie with an easy defender with the king jack off from the big blind. gonna work it's very optimistic from Katie it work? I don't think we're supposed to have any donks on this board but goes for the donk lead like it's interesting like if you change that two to a four then yes I think we can have some donks but when the uh, nut advantage isn't ours and it's still our opponents he's still gonna have the eights and the over pairs he'll have all the sets there and don't really want to have any donk leads but Katie did go for the donk with just king high and managed to take it down. I do think in the long term that's not going to be the way to proceed, but she may have picked up on something in Allen. We don't know. <clears throat> Maroon Poker says we're favourites to come last. <laughs> oh dear. Opens the ace queen, makes it 8.5. Stadium and light is rocking. Is absolutely rocking. That's Sunderland back in the Premier League. Yeah. Sunderland Newcastle. Weren't they in League One last season? League One. Did they not go back? Did they. Yes, I think they did back to back, isn't it? Eight to one to get in the top ten. There are eleven countries in it. What? Is there actually? No. Oh, as you say. Robbie in the calf opens the king ten off to eight k. A 
lovely with the king queen here. I think this is just going to be veering towards three bet most of the time. Tower core is yeah. going to be fine, but I think we're probably going to have slightly more three bets here than flats. We're probably going to go for the flat on this occasion. Just, I guess Robbie has us covered now. Robbie's chipped up a little, hasn't he? We're not chip leading anymore, so maybe take that back. Alan with the ace do suited. Defense, ace seven three, all spades. with the king of spades here. Not much going on for Robbie. Checks behind. And three pairs on the turn. Three diamonds on the turn. And Ollie going to start leading here. And his king of spades. This is really uncomfortable for Alan, but I think we've got to be calling once still. We still got Robbie behind. Oh, is there a world where we have a fold this, maybe? Seven off the money? I think we can fold, thinking about it now, Tower. Ollie going to have some better race X from the small. Not going to be able to withstand the heat of getting set in on the river. Might have just folded this because we can't improve unless we see an ace. We, we we physically can't improve our hand on the river, so we're basically calling turn to fold river. If Ollie did go for the bluff, but now Ollie's picked up showdown, he might choose to check this king and does, and it goes check check, and the ace is going to be good for Allen. So nice call on the turn from him. It's actually a really good river for Allen. King is a very good river. I think if we see a brick, Ollie might send it into the middle. Picked up showdown, and as we say that, guys, we've got action brewing on an outer table. We're going to head on over right now. What's happening? Oh my dears, what's happening there? So, whoa, 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 let's see that board again. 285 two heart flop. Deuces flopped the set. Bixie had king queen of hearts, and James Chung had ace four of hearts, and they both bricked. So we had two overs and a flush draw versus a still wheel draw versus a set, and it bricked out. And Phil is Phil Hughes, a huge chip leader. Oh my days, look at this stack. Wow! So set versus combo draw versus two overs and second up flush draw all went in on the 8-5 deuce and we lose Bixie and James Chung from the tournament. Wow, that was enormous! And just before them two we lost Wady as well on an outer table so three bust outs within a minute of each other is going to take us down to 38 players. Wow! And Katie here, no room to do anything else other than shove with the Ace King. Oh my days. Just sub 20. Don't want to free back, not all in here. No room for messing about. It's close to the money. Okay, just called. Okay. Just calling. Is that the effect of being very close to the money? Um, I'm not sure, Tower, what this could be. Maybe it could be that from KE that we're close to the money, but although, yes, we're close to the money, it means we tighten up, but we still need to go with our premium hands off a of sub 20. Like, there's just so much more merit and just sending it into the middle but maybe she wanted to see a flop um, and now we got an all in between Blythe and Lynn potentially Blythe check shoving after flopping the two pair Tough one for Lynn here with the eights. Blocking the nuts, but 
still behind the 9x which Blythe would probably check shove I guess he might chuck, chuck shove some like 6, 7, 7, 5 so 36k to win 100 3 to 1 more money probably have to call here as Lin like assuming that our 2 8's alive and our 4 7's alive we got 6 outs twice so just over 25% so we're actually getting the right price uh, even if we are up against a hand like Blythe has so Lin does pay it off with the 8's as he should and Blythe Fading six outs to double. Doesn't want to see an eight or a seven. No eight, no seven. And we double. Nice and clean. Yep. And three on the river. So nine five, two pair. Uh, yeah, Kev, it's 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 pure. It's there's no questions asked. We don't want to play it in any other way. We don't want to free bet not all in. We don't want to flat. Obviously, we don't want to fold. But the only option we've got off of just sub twenty is to just move all in. If there's an open in front of you from any position and you look down at Ace King and you've got twenty big blinds or less, <coughs> move all in, guys. It's the best play. It's going to make you the most money. Yeah. regardless of situation in the tournament there may be a situation in say for example the WSOP main event where the ladder the, the min cash is 15k and you're on the bubble and it's like two let's say you're two off the money and someone opens and you've got ace king you've got like 10 big blinds maybe then uh, if you're taking a shot you might let just flat or let it go but in this scenario here and we're still seven places off the money. We just have to shove it over and open for just sub 20. It's as simple as that. But Katie has her own game. She deviates from the norm. She has her own strategy. And maybe she's just thinking, I'm going to see a flop and then see if I can catch my ace or king then go with it. <clears throat> so 37 left now because... After that double bust out and the massive chip lead, and we said where he'd been knocked out, Dave McConaughey, champ in London, gone. Oh man! Means we're on 37, means we're three off the money. Top right hand corner, bang up to date, 37 players left. <sighs> wow. <coughs> You want to have a Jakeman's throat sweet? Yes. Keep but it moist. Day four are talking. Oh, don't do that. I've got that, what is it, that that phobia of sounds with the mouth. You don't like beatboxing? <laughs> yeah. I have a phobia of beatboxing. <laughs> I've never heard such cods walloping all my life. What, phobia of beatboxing? Yeah. No, not beatboxing. So, you, know, no, you know when someone's doing the uh, right in your ear? Well, it wouldn't be me. Uh, well, you just you, you just done it right there. Me, that'd be Alice. It just wouldn't done be me. <laughs> <laughs> right in me ear. <laughs> Phobia of beatboxing, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Probably with 
with the Ace-5. Now we're just free off the bubble and chip leading at the table. So you're going to see a lot of this from him. Opens with Ace-X and King-X. Even some suited Queen-X is going to be in there. Um, Alan in the big blind. Well, Alan does have Robbie covered, but I think Robbie's figured out that Alan's not really playing the strategy he should be with his stack on the bubble. Uh, so I think Robbie is just going to take the initiative now. As we see, opening Ace-5 off, in theory, uh, at a different stage of the tournament, we wouldn't open this hand, but right now, people wanting to get on the right side of the money. We've got an immediate blocker in that. So people are going to be playing tighter pre-flop. So it goes for the open, but it gets called by Blythe on the button, which I'm surprised to see appeal with a 10-7 suited. The Queen Jack of Diamonds perfectly fine in the big blind from Allen. Ace of Spades working for us here as Robbie, so might see a C bet coming in. We've got to worry about Blythe though. This Jack 10 does hit a lot of the hands that Blythe wants to call on the button. The Queen Jack, the King Jack, the Jack 9 Suriad, King 10, Queen 10, these type of hands that Robbie thinks having the Ace of Spades is just too good of a hand not to C bet here on the Jack 10 4. the call and Alan not going to be going over anywhere probably going to see an over call from him <laughs> 37 left 34 get them on it turn guns are six of spades just ace high the problem is with freeway i'd feel much more comfortable barreling this one if we went heads up to the turn so it was just us and blythe i think it'd be a much more comfortable double barrel the thing is going freeway here blythe can still have uh, some strong jack x and alan would peel one in two spades in the big line but robbie undeterred about that and still goes for the second barrel holding the ace of spades in his hand fires for 32 Slightly more than half here. And Alan in a tough spot here with his top pair. Robbie's barreled into two players twice. And we're sitting here with top pair and potential to be drawing dead against a turn flush of Robbie. So a really difficult one for Alan out of position here. He does make the call. Just put the offsuit free on the river and then let's see Robbie go after it. That's what I want to see. Well, offsuit do, same thing. Let's see if Robbie Ball's got it in the lockup because I think once Alan just check calls turn here, Robbie going to be going after it here. There's 124k in the middle. Like the good thing about this as well, Robbie's stack. Like if he wanted to go for a pot size bet, he'd still have 24, 23 big blinds left behind if Alan did happen to pick off the bluff, which is more than the good enough stack to still get on the right side of the money. And our hand's just too good not to bluff tower. We've got the ace of spades. 5-3, not a thing. Although we're blocking that, that's irrelevant. That's not going to call flop. But I just think our oh, hand here is too good not to bluff once we've got the ace of spades in here i'm blocking all this like king queen queen nine suited nine eight stuff as well hands that obviously we beat but would be folding and calling twice <clears throat> i can't see how we get to this river and don't fire as robbie with this particular combo does count out chips and go for the bet 110k so 90 percent on the river and alan in a real tough spot now with his top pair really tough decision for us robbie's bluffs are going to be built around some ace king ace queen with a spade king queen with a spade basically it's going to be all the hands that contain the bear king or bear ace of spades 
that the bluffs are going to be built from. The value is obviously going to be flushes, turn flushes. Robbie would still be going for value with two pair plus on the river, so he will have the jack ten in there. Probably all nine combos that are left with that as well. If he's opening ace five, he's going to open jack ten off. So jack ten off, sets of four, sixes, jacks and tens, and then flushes. And maybe aces with the ace of spades or kings with the king of spades might be the one pair value, but there's the fold with the king, queen, jack, and well done, Robert. beautiful bluff from Robbie there, Tower. Really, really nice. Just recognises that once we get to this river, this hand is just way too good to be checking behind. With well that indeed. nut blocker in there, and Robbie up to 341k. Very well played. 37 left, 34, get the money. Three players to be eliminated if we lose. When, when is the official break? Official break is in 25 minutes. So if we lose two players in 25 minutes, there will not be a break until we hit the money. Robbie opens to 8k and KE could just be tanking here close to the bubble which is fine can't see her whole cards unfortunately We are actually just going to cut from this hand, guys. And we are going to move over to an outer table, approaching the bubble, because we got an all-in and a call. And it's ace, queen oh, no. for Mitch Heinem. No, 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 Mitch. Against the tens of Jonathan Lemon. So Jonathan Lemon is. wins a big flip versus Mitch. And has a little glance at the camera and says, well, what can you do? Absolutely. Mitch Heinem out. Two off the money. And Lim was in the tank in the big blind, so we didn't miss any action on this table anyway. Robbie went for the raise and take. So we're on 36, if we lose one player in 25 minutes, we will be playing on until we're in the money. We won't be going to a schedule break. Misophonia, a phobia of lip smacking. I thought that was just you in Vegas. Misophonia. <laughs> Misophonia, yeah. <laughs> Always missing my phone somewhere. 
And uh, back to the table because Ollie here with a decision. Blythe choosing to free bet to 23k here with the jacks in the high jack. Excuse me. We've got the open from Ollie in plus one. And Ollie with the ace queen, difficult one out of position and just gives Blythe credit for it. Let's it go. Cards out. Lose one more player this session. We will go into the money before the break. If we don't lose any more in the next 20 minutes, then will be the scheduled break. The GA says is whenever. I never remember. About 20 minutes. Will we lose one? That is the question. That is the question. King Jack for life raises to 8k. And this should be a raise and take. Can't we doing anything with the 9 3? Oh, we've got 14 bigs, 15 bigs. Eighty-five bigs, Robbie Bull. Fourteen bigs on the other end of the scale, Katie Swift. Yeah, our fuzzy bear's got misophonia. There you go, misophonia is the thing. Never heard of it. Well, he likes big boxing, hasn't he? <laughs> get to the break before the bubble guys that is the question that is the biggie that is the biggie and that makes it 9.5k with a king queen of diamonds from under the gun King Jack suited for Robbie here on the button, not going to be going anywhere, makes the call with position. KT in the small blind for loose. Versus gun and button. Very easy to be in the dominated spot here out of position. Probably going to see this one hit the mark, just taking his time, running the clock down. And heads up between Alan and Robbie. Alan with the best of it at the moment, has the better lead, but Robbie with position. Jack, seven, three, two hearts. Robbie has the best of it now. A nice one to continue. This King Queen of Diamonds. Like I doubt Robbie's gonna peel the offsuit uh King Jack. So uh 
or queen jack. So this king of queen of diamonds just got some nice properties. Queen jack of diamonds, king jack, jack of diamonds, not a thing. So less likely that Robbie is going to have a jack x holding. I know he does actually have the spade combination on this occasion, but nice hand to see bet for Alan. We've got the two over cards and lots of back doors to potentially barrel on. Still got the over pair advantage as the opener. And here is one of these potential barrels. Ten of clubs. Like in terms of range though, probably going to be slightly better for Robbie. Peeling on the button. But we're still going to have all the queens through aces here. Some ace jack, king jack. These type of holdings for value. Set of 10s in there, set of 7s. Jack 10 suited, which would have turned 2 pet. Alan firing for 17k. King on the river would be a fun one. Fun one for Robbie. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> it's not a day to heart, so it won't bring it for stroke. And Robbie gets the check mark. He'll probably go check, check. Robbie. No real need to put himself in a quandary. Right if this is the old check raise from Alan. Or is it a case of. Yep, yeah, he does check. <clears throat> Robbie Bull adds to his tag 387. So this is officially the quietest Katie Swift's been in two hours ever. So a short stack yeah. is means a quiet room. No giggles, <laughs> no talking, no chatting at the table. Serious stuff when there's money involved. Whoever she talks to at the break is going to get both barrels. <laughs> she's going to spend. She's going to do two hours talking in twenty minutes. <laughs> Thirty-six, as you can see, top right. Thirty-four, get the money. If we head and get to the break with thirty-six left, we go on a twenty-minute break. If we lose one more, it'll be play on until we get in the money. Thirty-four, get the money, Ryan. Thirty-four. Scrolling across the bottom of the payouts. Robbie opening 7 8 here to 8k. Really good chance for Robbie to chip up now on the bubble. Alan with the 10 9 suited should be defending off of 17 big blinds. Uh, no, Mitch was last out, Ryan. Mitch yeah. come 37th. Last out, last seen on the. Video cam. Good and busted. I could see a 4K bet here from Robbie. One of these boards versus small stack size that Carl versus Big Lion on the bubble that we don't need to go large. Moves for 30%. And it gets Alan off of his up and down straight draw. Just lets it go. And Robbie up over 400K now, really putting. Everyone to the test on the bubble made a lovely three barrel bluff versus Allen. 
got it through. So in 10 minutes guys, we are going to have a 20 minute break, we'll be back at just before 8 o'clock, unless, unless we lose one, yep, it's got 10 minutes to lose one, and when we do get to the bubble, whether it be this side of the break or in 10 minutes time when we go on break, uh, we will do a giveaway in between the hands, because things do slow down, get okay, you, Fitting away of somebody's dosh. That's a great idea. I don't even know where the pen is, to be fair. Pen? I got it. Found it. Found it. Just need some paper. We'll get some. Let the break. That will do. What do you need me for? Because. You've, we've done three this weekend. There's been two Jay Finks and one Tar Finks. That's why I'm handing it to you. Okay. I'll even up the scores. And I gave you a nice question. How many followers on Coventry City's Twitter? And then you want to go and talk about how many animals live in a zoo. <laughs> it was relevant to Edinburgh. I think that's one of the toughest questions you've given me. I'd even prefer to think fresh because I could, I, could, I could picture the paint and the litres. In the zoo, I had no idea. The paintbrush. <laughs> Only three bet in the ace 10 here. Okay. More golf questions here, is there? There's a pressure on Alan. And with the ace queen. Makes the call. Both players flop the wheel draw. Ace Queen still out in front. Seventy-nine thousand five hundred and nine pounds up top. Ace Queen, Ace Ten. Alan checks. Only White. We're betting one hundred and sixty-two thousand on it. It's in more than the ace queen opener. Ollie was a three better here, so just going to have the over pair advantage. And Alan shouldn't have any sets here. Deuces, fours, and fives are all folds pre, so not any sets here. And we've just got the advantage of over pairs, so Ollie continuing for 21. Third pop gets called. Check, check. Up. Neither player really has much 6x here. If anything, Ollie has more as the free bar. Like he might be attacking Alan. Like maybe might have an ace 6 suited in there, or a king 6 suited, whereas Alan's not going to peel any 6x out of position. Let's go for the 60k River League, and should be a pretty pump pull from Ollie.
Tchau, perdão. Well, tchau, perdão. So, heading to the break. Ten minutes ish? Uh, less, six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. If we lose one player in six minutes, we won't be having a break until we get in the money. If we don't lose a player, we will be on the break in six minutes. See how many's in the cup. Go on then. Let's go for 72. 115. How many? 115 in the cup. Jeez. 115. That's enormous. That's brilliant. A hundred and fifteen. Wow. Not surprising. Tables. There'll be no break. If we don't lose one, we will be going on a break. Pass. What's the point of a deal to change six minutes before the break? Uh, because it's all timed. Yeah, it's all timed. Every half hour they'll switch. So. Say, for example, the dealer on the feature table is due to go on his break at half seven. It doesn't matter if uh, there's six minutes left on the clock. It's time to take him <laughs> off and get someone else on. If he stays on there, he's then not getting uh, his full break. He's losing six minutes of it. And these guys work their asses off all day long. Been a really good turnout for everyone here in Edinburgh. Ten seconds. King Green for Craig, 4,002 calls, sat in seat number six. Lin Chen, Queens. Ra initial raise to 8,000, so we're going to see a flop. We're going to see a flop. Jack I flop, Jack for eight. Two spades on the flop. Lin Chen with the Queens. Check that fault done. Absolutely, this should be hand over once Lin Chen bets. He's uh, not done anything quick in the last two hours. Whether he's working the clock or not, but he's done it for a long time. Definitely is tower with the MPL points up for grabs. Continues for 10k. That's less than half, and Craig can't be continuing with the King Queen. Be surprised. And yeah, we're going to get one more hand in after this. I think it's going to call, call out of position here. Yeah, we've got the two overcards. I think with one spade we call. I think we have a spade in our hand, but I think the offsuit, no backdoors, might be wanting to just let it go on to the next hand. And then six on the turn shouldn't really change much. Seven five does get there. Still plenty to get. Our value from the Jack X, the AX, all going to be calling again. Charge hands like the 10 9 and the 5 6 6 7. Pick up a pair to go with their gut shot. And there's the double barrel and there's the fold. And we may not be heading out on break because oh, we could be now? on the bubble. We've got an all in and a call. Ludo with the aces. Alan Jacobson with the kings. 
and this is a 250k pot is Ludo gonna hold yes yes he is so we are still on 36 not on the bar so Ludo Paulus and then Jacobson yeah there we go 250k pot that tower going the way of Ludo that's not the man that you want to have chips no 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 that's my first late one I know there we have it Looks like he's got some back. Yep, 70k maybe, 75k. And this is going to be the last hand I expect. Ludo doubles to 250. Oh, his odds have shortened. Unlike UK's entry in the Eurovision. 8 to 1 to finish in the top 10. Must be me singing. I reckon you'd have a better chance with the, the trash I heard last year. I remember we were on stream and there was a, that guy singing with long hair. I can't, I can't remember, but... Sam Ryder. He won it, didn't he? Did he win it? Yeah. I thought Ukraine won it. Well, they did. They had the sympathy vote because uh, they, had a, they have a, a musical... It's split into two now. Yeah. So they have the song of the Eurovision and then they have the performance or something like that. I don't know. Song and performance. So anyway, Sam Ryder got more points. I, I would put you up against Mouse Tower. I think you'd do a better job. But saying that, I've only seen one and that was last year. So I can't really comment, to be fair. We are heading on a 20 minute break after this hand. Everybody who's not in the hand will be leaving the table, as you can see. And we're back at 5 2. We'll be back at 7.55. And that will be that, guys. We're on a 20-minute break. Robbie's not calling the ace nine. No. We will be back at eight o'clock when Robbie folds. Slide him in. Slide him in. Is this a good four bet? Uh, here we go. Here we go. There's the fold. We're on a 20-minute break. See you at 8 p.m. just before. Jack. <laughs> So some uh, backdoor straight possibilities, but just fading the queen now for Jack. No way! Oh, oh my days! Ill, you think ah. you've got there, and it's a queen on the turn. Ali Malou bumping away. <laughs> just the one oh, out. My days. River. It's oh. a ten. Oh. <laughs> no oh. way! Oh. No way did that just happen? Clip it. Boat over quads. Oh. Ali finds the two outer on the turn. Jack finds the one outer on the river. You don't see that every day. Oh my word. You know what Ali Malou's <laughs> going to tell us at the dinner break, isn't it? Oh my god, man. Wow. Jeez. Ten on the flop, queen on the turn. Malou can't believe it. The ten on the river. <laughs> oh. oh god. Run like wow. Jack Oliver. So good to see Carl back at the tables, one of the Thanet boys. <laughs> Ryan Spittle raises to eight. Harry with the pocket fives. He's going to make the call. Jess could feasibly come in with the old Jack A. Yes, she does. Which will bring in the small big blind. Yeah, Simon not folding this one. Suited King getting this price. Closing the action in. It goes four way to the flop. Yeah. Ryan with the betting lead. Oh, we flop a set. Yeah, and Ryan's flopped the straight flush draw tower, so this is action Ooh. time. Ryan with the 8 6 of diamonds on an ace high board. Great flop for us whilst once opening in the cutoff. Not only have we flopped the straight flush draw in terms of range, going to be better for us. Uh, and Harry here with his set of fives, like it. Just going to flatten position. Don't want to set off any alarm bells if Ryan's got a hand like ace king, ace queen. We've got that drawing dead to runners. Quadzillas, baby! Quadzilla, baby! Woo woo! Am I getting the chips off, Ryan? Woo woo! 
I'll just I'll look down again. Yep, there are definitely two fives here. Now, there's two fives on the board. <laughs> it's a Ryan firing That's four again. Four fives. Maybe just trying to fold out some weak ace X, some suited ace X that Harry can have here. Uh, as well as that 9x is going to have a hard time calling a double barrel and obviously Harry flattening position. Going to try and get the max on the river with so a shove. So there's one out. Seven of diamonds is straight flat. Oh, it's <laughs> on it, come and done it. No, what's this deal of done? Where's the bad beat jackpot oh. in the tournament? No way. 245,000 pounds. That is incredible. I've never seen this tower on stream. Quads over straight flush. This is a setup. Of all set up. Oh! <laughs> no oh, way! Man. And he can't oh, wait to course. turn him over! No way! Quads oh my straight gosh! Flush. Oh, Look at the oh, table! Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. <laughs> that, we'll never see that again. Ludo says, I never take pizzas at poker table. I'm we, taking a picture. We will never <laughs> see that again on stream to get that hand here on stream. Look at the cameras, they're all out. Oh my, oh my god. 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 Quads over straight flush on stream. Somebody go and get Jim. Ask him if they have a bad beat jackpot for imagine, the world. Yeah, for imagine, the, for that the on the imagine that on the cash table. Oh, that is going to be... <laughs> wow. Wow. Right, that's the end of the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. We'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my days. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just speechless. How wow. does that even happen? Hurricane <laughs> okay, says, get me a pint. <laughs> <coughs> oh my days. Wow. <laughs> I just oh. can't believe it. Wowzers, wowzers. Oh, stuff we live for on stream, it's something we'll probably never ever see again over the years. The chances of that happen are astronomical and to actually get it on our featured table. How'd you, how'd you go out? Oh yeah, add quads. <laughs> no, no good. <laughs> and if there's a story to tell, that is a story for the ages. I don't even mind listening to that one. We've got day 1G tomorrow, which is now an ordinary flight, and then the turbo kicks off at 6pm. And then Saturday for day 2, get down to about <laughs> 60 players, and then the you're, final on the Sunday. You're spot on, Donna, you are spot on too many, that's how many days. <laughs> make you right. <laughs> Here's 5 for Danny, in the big. After an initial raise from yeah. Keith in C number one. A nice free bet spot, I think, Tower here. We've got Keith covered, Keith's third in chips. He's not really going to want to get involved too much. Um, definitely one we could be mixing in a free bet here as Dan Gormley. And on FTs, um, we don't have to go as big as usual, the normal 4X size because of ICM. We can choose like 3X, 3.5X here as Dan, so make it somewhere around 7, 800K. That's what I'd like to see, and he is going to take the spot tower. Very nice from Dan. Just recognising the situation and recognising where Keith is in chips and how he has to play tighter here because we have him covered. So this should do the trick a lot of the time. Uh, back over to Keith here, and personally, could go either way. Um, I think Keith is probably more tight to let this one go. Oh, he's just going to quickly call tower here. So Keith, happy to go float post flop here with the king jack. Off to the flop. Another pot brewing. Queen, two, three. Yeah, so this is a big pot tower already. 1.6 milli in the middle here. And uh, Danny does flop a wheel draw here with the ace five. So probably one we're probably going to continue small. Uh, 400k, 500k, something like that. Somewhere between the quarter pot and third remit is the size I'd like to see here from Dan. As always in these three bet situations, can go a lot smaller. So it does choose the 350 sizing, goes even smaller than the 400. So south of quarter, between fifth and quarter pot from Dan Gormley and uh, Keith here with the King Jacks. Jack of Diamonds working, getting this price. Is he thinking about pulling out the float with this candidate? It's probably, uh, if we are going to float the King Jack, it's probably one of the better combinations we can have. King of Spades, Jack of Diamonds. Uh, let's see what Keith does. Like folding would be fine here as well. 
Um, just because tangling with Danny, who's got us covered, could put us in a world of hurt, it would be a disaster for us to come eight from this FT when we go in with the chip lead. But big pop ruin here on the FT, guys. Oh, and there's the call from Keith. He does pull out the float. And Pot has got 2.3 million here, working with 1.25 SPR behind. Effective stack of Keith. Oh, King of Diamonds. So, Brings in the flush draw top pair. Yeah, so Keith loves to see this tower. And uh, now Dan, what's the play on the turn here? Obviously, this king's supposed to be a lot better for mm -hmm. the R range here. Does Danny ever expect uh, Keith to be floating? That's the question. Does he expect Keith to have some floats with some king jack here, some jack ten suited with backdoor spades, hands like that? Um, that's the question Danny's got to ask himself. Because from a range perspective here, this king of diamonds rolling off, he shouldn't really have any kings here, Keith, other than king queen specifically. Ace king's going to free bet pre, king queen's going to call flop and then turn two pair. So it should only really be from our perspective as Danny, uh, king queen, the hand that Keith has here. And Danny goes for the second barrel here. So maybe going after some fours through jacks, these type of holdings, although jacks or tens might choose to four bet pre, but also perhaps going after some queen jack, ace queen and then the four bet as well as some queen ten suited that could be in there, queen jack, queen ten suited. So it's a really nice bet that targets that proportion of keeps range, the pocket pairs, the queen x, these type of hands are going to be in a really tough spot now faced with this double barrel however Keith has the one hand that he has pulled the float out with and does contain a king so Keith's going to have to call once more with the second nut flush draw as backup so it should just be an easy call here from Keith and we're going to take a river tower off to the river Fourth diamond. So over to Danny here. We'll know that he's never going to be good here with the ace five. But has he got the shove in the locker here? Mm. We're probably going to have more bare ace of diamonds than Keith in this spot. Like Keith shouldn't really have too many flushes once the king and ten of diamonds run out. I guess it's good. he can have like some seven, eight of diamonds, eight, nine of diamonds. Ace, Jack of Diamonds, Jack, Nine of Diamonds. But with these particular diamonds on the board, the King, Ten and the Queen, those being higher diamonds, hands that Keith will probably peel uh, a free bet with. Let's say, for example, King, Queen suited, King, Ten suited. These aren't a thing. And Danny does oh, go does. for it. He does find the jam here. And Keith sitting here with the second nuts, backdoors into the flush. And Dan Gormley making a big move early on and just applying pressure to Keith. Keith coming in with the chip lead and... He'll be thinking he could be going home in eighth here if Dan has backdoored into the nut flush himself. Dan could still plausibly have turned a flush here. He could be free betting some uh, ace four, ace five of diamonds, these type of holdings. Even ace six, ace seven, ace eight of diamonds could probably all be in there as well. So this is a huge move from Dan Gormley early on in this final table. And back over to Keith here. And I think with a jack of diamonds tower, it's... <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty gross, it's but a gross spot. it's horrible because Dan's only ever making this move for value with the Ace of Diamonds. He's not going to shove like nines here or Ace nine, so he elected to free bet that and double barrel. He's not going to shove Ace nine with a nine of diamonds. So Keith's Jack of Diamonds here, although it is the second nuts, it's pure bluff catcher here. We're either behind to the bare Ace or a uh, turn flush of Danny, turn nut flush, or... He's just got a bluff in this scenario, and Danny with the bottom of his range just going for it here. And uh, notice rubbing the left arm there, uh, caressing. Usually uh, that signals is something people do to calm themselves down. But this is what we wanted to see, Tower. You what mean we've been his arms pumping yeah, inside yeah, that yeah, T-shirt? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> he's just uh, trying to, trying to, if not. Try and put the heart rate down, perhaps try not to give anything away. And uh, Keith here in a really tough spot because, yes, we've backdoored into the second nuts, but the problem we've got, Sal, like I say, it becomes a bluff catcher the way this hand's played. Like Dan could plausibly have turned a flush with Ace X of Diamonds, he could have plausibly double barreled as a bluff with a bare Ace of Diamonds. So, this is a gross spot for Keith here, and rather him sitting there than me because. This is one that's going to take a while, and rightly, rightly so. The tank's going to be needed here, Tower. This is um, a big, big pot, and it's going to be for what, over a third of the chips in play if he can make the call and be correct. And 
fair credit to Dan though, let's go back to Dan, he's capable of running it in these spots. People aren't capable of making moves like this, free bet, 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 shove as a bluff on final tables. There's only a small percentage of players that have that in them and it's a gift if you like. I know this time it may uh, may leave Dan short if Keith makes the call, but I think it's uh, you've got to be a certain calibre of player to be able to pull this move, the free bet, the bet, bet, shove, without having the goods. Only certain opponents are capable of that. And if Keith's aware, Dan is one of those that can have these bluffs. He may veer more towards call, but this is a fascinating hand, guys. And uh, Dan Gormley just running it for chunks of equity here on the mystery bounty final table and putting Keith in the blender. What's he going to do, Tower? What do you think? It's, um, he has a second nuts. He can only put him on the ears to fold. He flicks he it in. Does make the it's call. the call of the final so far. And he does make the call. And Dan went for the lot. And he's going to be down wow. to 11 big blinds now. But credit to Keith coming with a chip lead, extending it to 8.1 million chips. Wow. And what, what a hand that is. That is a highlight of the week for me so far in terms of hands played. Everything that hand had. Really, really nice line from Dan. Unfortunately, we just run into it. It works if Keith doesn't have the jack of diamonds, if he doesn't have the ace of diamonds, this is probably going to work. Uh, but unfortunately for us, we've just run into it. And Keith up to 8.1 million chips, third of the chips in the play going to that man. And Dan now sitting with 11 big blinds. What a call! So we see Tom opening jack nine off in the hijack, can open a lot wider here with the chip lead, a lot of pressure on these guys with ladders and approaching the FT. But Matt never going to be going anywhere here with pocket eights, easy decision for him in the small, just the call. And it's heads up between Tom and Matt Davenport here. Let's see a flop. Flop time is 9-3, second pair for Tom, takes the lead in the hand. It's still my bet small here, Tom Hall. This is a uh, board that's just going to favour us a lot of the time here, being the opener. We do have middle pair as well, so we do have some disguised trips or two pair when the turn is a jack or a nine. So, potential. You can go really small here, as small as quarter potentially. And goes for 21k, so quarter pot is the size of choice. For Tom, just under, and uh, Matt here with D8s getting this price, probably going to call once. Tom's still going to have lots of holdings here, all like the Broadways, the King Queen, Jack 10, all this sort of stuff that we are still ahead of, and sometimes he will shut down on some turns. Seven and Diamonds hits the turn. So this is where it's probably just going to go check, check here. Tower, I think Tom. Maybe a bit optimistic to fire our nine here again. Very hard to get two streets from worse now. I think the eights will fold if we fire, so maybe better to check this one behind. We can also put ourselves in a tricky spot here where we do fire and Matt opts to raise. So just expect to see Tom Hall check this one back most of the time here on the turn. And there is the check. See a river cop. And it's paying two uh, pair. Well, it is two pair for Tom Hall, but probably going to be very difficult to get value from Matt Davenport here with his particular hand. Matt does have the 8s blocking the nuts. 10-8 could still be in Tom's range. He's going to open 10-8 suited from the hijack. Although 10 is probably going to double barrel turn. Something to take into account. But Tom will now just opt for probably a larger size here I think now. Tower this little disguised Jack-9 of us. Ours somewhere around like 90 three quarter pot, probably what I expect to see. It looks pretty chunky. That's pot size. That's 105. So around 85, 90% up there. And Matt here with the eights, never gonna call this one tower. Just not putting in a quarter of our stack here with eights, we lose to too much.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. We're just riffling again. We're on 36. There's the chip counts. Phil Hughes. 765,000. He had the monster. The monster. Robbie Bull, 400. King Shook Gosh on our table in seat number one. Three, six. What? I thought it was supposed to be warm outside. I, went, I, I didn't have a coat on today. I just went back to the hotel because I was outside and it was a bit nippy. So I went and got my coat. So you run to the old walked to the hotel to get a coat. Yep. To walk back later, 48 yards. Yep. And you need a coat. Yep, exactly that. Because it will be nippy at about 1 a.m. So uh, I'm looking after myself. Don't want a cold tomorrow. Sound all bunged up on stream, do we, on the final day? You need a coat to walk less than 100 yards. Right, hold on a second. You're not always walking. You're sometimes standing to get across that road for about five minutes. Not at 1am. You never know. It's Saturday. I don't know what the Scots get up to on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> there are all the chip counts. Uh, there's some great chip counts. So there we go. You've checked them all. Katie, Alan, Abdul, Nevado, Jamie, all in danger. But here we go. This <coughs> will definitely be the session we're getting the money. And we got Wee Mark on the table. Ooh, we Mark. Ooh, we Mark. Ooh, we Mark. We have indeed. With Ace Jack raising to 11. They're going to be getting free bet. Yep, King Shook can see one. out the way, Jim out the way, here's Lopez, shouldn't be doing anything with the old Jack 7 with 13 bigs, yeah Mark's got an easy fold tower, this close to the money, I always say all the fun and we open the off suit broadways from under the gun, except Ace Queen and Ace King, but we are met from a free bet. It's the best way to proceed, just let it go. Who's been watching who's been watching the, the clip in the at the break? Oh J Pod. <laughs> the commentator sounds like John Virgo. <laughs> Where's the white ball going? <laughs> 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 Ian, right, right, right. Ian, right, right, right. Is that the Ian, right? Oh, I wish it was. Ian, right, right. It is in his house. I actually really like Ian, right. I think he's a really good pundit. He comes across a really good guy. I never normally do a Eurovision bet. Sweden are four to seven favourites. So he's backed Israel. <laughs> that that sounds like my kind of betting. Hold on a second. Eurovision. <laughs> yeah. Where are Israel? No, whoa, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, because we got an all-in, and we'll come back to this uh, quandary that I've got about a country in Eurovision, not from Europe, because Cully's shoving here with the king-queen. Yeah. And Cully's got the eights. Uh, yeah, with the eights, sorry. And uh, Wee Mark's got the ace-queen. 78 to call. It's, it's his tournament life. With Ace Queen. Yeah, fold Tower, I think personally. 
I know we can see he's flipping, but we've got a stack that can get onto the right side of the money. Cully's not going to be shoving light here. I may have Ace Jack in here. But, oh, he is going to go with it, Mark. Oh, he is. He is going to go with it, and Cully hates that, but he's going to like what he sees. Ace Queen for Mark and Ace for Cully Sadu. So we, Mark. Them stacks are exactly the same. Has him covered by 1K. All standing up on the outer tables. We could be on the bubble. We could be on the bubble. We're definitely going to check the stacks. Oh, no help there for Wee Mark. Yeah. No Diamond Eva, so going to need an ace or a queen on turn or river. And it's going to be the end of Mark's tournament unless we can find that six outer. He might have chips left. 1k left tower. Oh, oh just oh, find the lady. Dirty. <laughs> on the river. Oh. And Cully has been eliminated, Mark, up to 185k. Just going to clarify the stack sizes. We've just come back from break, so they should be spot on. So I'm guessing Cully is going to be out, and Mark will have him covered by 1k. So River, he's got him. Wow. Oh, that was. Oh, we mark. Right, anyway, anyway, yes. So we're on 35. So we're on the bubble. So, so how does a team not from your uh, a team, a country not from Europe, get into the Eurovision? I don't know, but do you know who else is singing? Who? Australia. <laughs> In the Eurovision Song Contest, there was an earthquake overnight, and Australia moved 8,000 miles. Our Australia in it. I don't know. How? Why is it not called Global Vision? <laughs> exactly. Unbelievable techers. So if anybody knows the answer and why it's all changed and it's not what it is, let us know, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we are on the bubble, guys. So what we'll do... We will do a giveaway, let's say in about 10 minutes time, 10, 15 minutes while we're on the bubble in between hands. And Ollie White's back. Ollie White, White, White. Israel have always been in it, just like the football. There you go. I want to know the odds of Greece giving Cyprus 12 points and Cyprus giving Greece 12 points. Can somebody get me the odds, please? Beat off, beat off. Gullimouse says, Ian and Sean Wright Phillips are on Match of the Day tonight, speaking about Ian Wright, first time in history of father and son have been on together. Interesting. Very really good. 1 to 11 for both of them to give each other 12 points. Is that about right? How are we doing, Matigi? Tuning in for the first time on Twitch. How are we doing? Good evening to you. And Jerry Ford says New Zealand wants to join him, so the Eurovision. <clears throat> to be fair, 1 to, one to 11, whatever is in your bank, stick it on. Because it's happened for the last 36 well, years. After Tower's Treble, I have the 11 quid I've got left on it then. <laughs> I essentially work for free one day every leg. I actually do. With your treble, because what I put on it, I essentially do a three days work every single GUKPT leg, if you want to look at it like that. <laughs> he wants the odds of John Virgo picking the winner. I don't even know. Right, I'm going to pick a, I'm going to pick a country for you. Who's going to win the Eurovision Song Contest? Right, okay. I am going to pick you the winner. I'm going right to go now. with Italy. Are they in it? Yep, yeah, they're in Europe. Yeah, but I doubt San Marino are in it, right? Uh, that's true. I will pick... I will pick... Let's go for a rank outsider. Let's go Finland. You said that earlier, Finland, didn't you? I'm sure you said Finland earlier, yeah. 
Well, someone said something about Finland. So on the, the bubble, guys. We're on the bubble. Ah. Oh, of course they are, Kev. No, no surprise there. That's a classic tower, that is. I'll pick Finland, the second favourites. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm sure you didn't. Coming from well, I'm not picking England, uh, the United Kingdom, as it's the ten to one and eight to one just to finish in the top ten. It's all about United Kingdom. I want to know who's singing, like zig and zag or something. Payouts at the bottom of your screen for your Darwi on Twitch. How many countries complete, competed in the first Eurovision? Asked Jerry. Don't Google it. And when was it? I'm going to say twelve. Well, is that because Razor Kev just put 12 in and he knows everything about you? <laughs> I can tell. 12. I'll say 8. But, um, but, good thing about Finland is they always finish. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> 7. <laughs> 7. Were we in it? Were we in the first one? <laughs> the United Kingdom? <laughs> when did the United Kingdom win it for the first time? That's what I want to know. That's a great question. Oh, wait while well, Jay thinks comes on at 10 o'clock. Oh! Oh, we're doing it soon. Ireland have always been very good at Eurovision. They always they 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 won it loads. See, Val's obviously an expert on the Eurovision. And we got an all in here from Novado Lopez with the go. pocket eights. Oh oh, oh dear! Oh this dear. could be it. This could definitely be it. The Kings of Andrew in scene number nine. This could be it. Andy Hawkins. on every table to finish everyone looks over towards the feature the good thing is they don't even have to stand up because there's a massive screen to the side of the feature table you can just watch from an hour and follow the action that way So Frankie comes over, all the hands on the outer tables have finished, on your backs please guys. So we have got Kings for Andrew Lopez, did he just kiss the cards? I've never seen that before. <laughs> he <laughs> gave the eights a little kiss before he put them down, so to the flop, here we go. 10, 10, 9, no help there for the eights. Small backdoor possibilities in the form of a running straight. But Do we get there? Going to need an eight and only an eight now. So are we going to be in the money? Is everyone going to be getting paid? Yes. Oh, man. Nine on the river. So we do lose Nevado Lopez on the bubble. Oh, look. Oh, man. He's just been grinding for two solid days. To bubble. Well, saying that, is it? They can't be on it. Yeah, the cupboard is still sitting there. He's just. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I, I thought there was the old one chip trick, and then I thought, well, he obviously can't have done that. Everyone's in the money, and we've got a giveaway coming up in 10 minutes' time. 
Well done, one and all. Congratulations, everybody. I've had a reminder that the Facebook is about to stop at 8.30. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything you can do about it pre, but... Uh, there we go again. This is going to happen. We're going to see a few bust outs here. Jamie all in with the Ace King against Andrew with the Pocket Eights. Jamie Monroe here, the player at risk, got himself a £2,230 min cash. No help there on the Jack Four Five Rainbow. And that will do it dead on the turn. So it gets on the right side of the money. And then we lose a flip. A good run from Jamie. Yeah, nice well cash Jamie. from him. And it's all happening, guys. We're going to head out to an outer table just as the bubble has burst. Here we go. What's happening now? Well, wow. Somebody turned the lights off so nobody else could get eliminated. <laughs> Poker in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> did Katie Swift survive the bubble? Yes, she did. Uh, are there no updated chip counts? We showed you the chip counts at the start of this level. We can show them again. Quickly. There we go. There's the chip counts. They were from the last break about 10 minutes ago. I've always loving Life Tower. Absolutely. They've only got 35,000. Gets on the right side. Of the money. Phil Hughes with all the chips. <laughs> if only Nick Peters says, watch the straight flush hand versus the quad fives during the break. Why don't you have a bad beat jackpot for the live stream? If it's not one, it gets split between the live stream crew and the comms team. Like it. I love that idea. <laughs> Nice one, Nick. Boss, well, uh, are you listening? Back to the action. Uh, we're going to go to an out after this table. It did just occur. Uh, you might have seen it in the overview shot. Uh, but we're just having a few technical issues. And the matter comes over with plenty of chips. Frankie's a master, ain't he? How quickly he counts a chip stack. He's like, boom, 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 done. Let's Dave know. Off he goes. <laughs> done it before. I'm blown, I'm blown here. Oliver just checks folds with the Queen 10. And now we will go to that outer table because this is the all in and the call. It's a huge pot. Queen Jack for Still Steve there. Cherry and Jamie White with the Ace King holding. Oh, oh the not there. holding anymore, oh. Stephen Cherry. It's gonna be crippled. 250k oh, pop. <laughs> and Steve Cherry gonna be left with around 100k. Yeah, I got 100k plus. So we get a double. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> so we're in the money and on 33. Top right, it tells you. Jack 10, Rainbow. 
top pair here for Andrew, small t bet. Hand over. <laughs> Here we go again. What? Off to an outer. What's happening? And we've got what, what, what was in the water on the break? Wow, look at this. This is a nearly a half a milli pot. Queens for Colin Gillen. Ace King for Ludo, I believe. So Ludo and Colin playing out a huge flip here. One of them is going to be on absolute fumes. Whoever it is. And it's so clean for the Queens. So Ludo. He's gonna be on absolute fumes by the looks. I think I think it's Ludo with the. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah. So it's actually Colin Gillen with the Ace King. I thought, uh, no, it was was Ludo with the Ace King. So Colin Gillen gonna be doubling. You're right, Tower. And, and yeah, and Ludo's gonna be left with. He looked really happy then, Ludo. <laughs> he actually looked like I thought he must have won the pot, but we were right, as we said straight away. And uh, Colin, that is chunky, gets the hold with the ladies and big double here through Ludo and that's going to leave Ludo with probably around 60,000 yeah maybe a little bit more 60, 70 something like that huge flip they're the ones you need to win wow huge it's Twas fascinating here comes the Mad Turk played with him two weeks ago in Kov for the first time it was a pleasure good old you self And in three minutes time, so after this hand, yeah. we're going to do a giveaway. And I've got a nice easy question. Oh, yeah, whatever. No, I've actually got, a, I'm, I'm being really kind this week. I'm actually being really kind. Why? Because I'm just, I'm being nice. Okay. I know, set, I know takedown day is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ludo's still in Elliot. Just with yeah. around 60, 70k. Now we're doing Sless. Good luck for next season. Ludo still <coughs> battling on. Just lost a monster flip. Ace King against Queens. But he's got 70k. Colin Gillen has got nearly half a mil. to the flop here, Mad Turk peeling the old four deuce on the button as you do, flops middle pair on king four three two spades who actually jumps out into the lead here, and Jim with the ace of spades in his hand, gonna fire up for quarter, like this from Jim, if we open the ace eight it's a nice candidate to continue on the king high board here with the ace of spades. But the Mad Turk, I mean, none of it, comes in for the snap raise. Didn't even think about it. And uh, that should be the end of Jim here. With his ace eight off. Yep, Tim Chung still in. Bixie still in. Uh, who else is still in? Bixie? Yeah, Bixie's still in. Is she? Yeah. Really she went on your double exit. Oh, she was. I, saw, I literally saw her. Oh, she must be playing the cup. I said, how are you getting on? She goes, yeah, I've got lots of chips. Yeah, she must. she's in the cup. She's obviously in the cup. She was in the double exit. Thank you for clearing that out, Tower. But She jumped straight into the cup. Yep. Yeah. I literally saw her last break, so about 15, 20 minutes ago, and I was like, how are you getting on? She goes, yeah, I've got chips. Yeah, well, it started with 50,000. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Tim Chung is still in. So it's that time, guys. Oh, wait. Okay. Tower thinks mm. for those that are tuned in for the first time, we are doing a giveaway for a hundred and ten pound closer seat. So a hundred and ten pound token going to be given away to one of you guys. Uh, rules simple as this: I'm going to ask Tower a question. He's going to write it down on this piece of paper. Is that then, big enough? Yeah. Is and, it? Yeah. Hey. And. Whoever gets closest to Tower's answer is going to win themselves a £110 closer seat. Any double guesses disqualified, you can't win. One guess per account, please. Uh, and do not get any guesses in until I say go, until his answer don't guess. is on the I'll piece of paper. I'll be writing the first guess that's in the chat box and thinking I know what I'm thinking about. 
Uh, so I, I have one that I didn't even actually have to Google myself, Tal. No uh, way. We were talking about we, we were talking about Eurovision, and uh, I was uh, just thinking about all the countries in the world. So what I want to know is how many landlocked countries are there in the world? Do you know what that means? They don't have any sea around them. Yeah, no so, 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 so they're like all bordered by, the like bordered by all other countries. Like yeah, Czech so, Republic. Yep, so, so one. there we are, nice, easy. Go, on, go through them one? all. You've got 20 seconds to go through them all. How many landlocked... Yeah. How many landlocked countries are there in the world? How many countries in the world? 206. No! I believe. Oh. Well, it used to be, about five years ago. How many landlocked countries? How long have I got? Uh, you've got 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Okay. Tower's guess is in. In. Get your guesses in, guys. Good luck. Go! I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Get your guesses in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in Landlock Cunt. That's the one that's. Pretty polarised, to be fair, isn't it? There's only two. How many countries in the world? Two hundred and six. Well, I, I, there was like five years ago. I don't know if there's any. Oh, but, uh, some add-ons. Yeah, well, you know, you know, people become. Well, Australia's now in Europe. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. you get like places that aren't necessarily countries, and then they turn into countries. I don't know, but I know it used to be two hundred and six not long ago. Okay. Yet, you will need a grown up poker account because this is for the closer on Monday. You've got to get inside Tower's head, absolutely. A lot of people putting in the right answer, but that doesn't matter. from the mad so it raises to 11k and Andrew here with the tens in the cutoff both options available we'll have some flats we'll have some free bets goes for the free bet on this occasion and the mad tote not going to be folding the eight nine of diamonds when it comes back round to him this deep and Jim shouldn't be cold calling the fives from the big blind here after an open and a free bet we will see Yes, no multiple guesses as well. We had one yesterday. Yeah, we did. That nearly won. Yeah, come second, didn't she? Yeah, so you still not going to be folding the 8-9 of diamonds this deep. We're just always going to see the pill. And we're going to be heads up to the flop. See we connect the here. 50 plus to start the hand. That's the call. Turk just to see bet from Andrew on the A66. Going to have lots of bets as the free bet up. And Mad Turk just has to let the nine high go. No draw out of the way. So, would you like the correct answer, Tower? Absolutely not. We will let you know who's going to win at half past. But <sighs> if you haven't guessed yet, you got a chance to get a guessing still. And you might even be able to get a read. So, ask Tower how many landlocked countries there are in the world. There is 44. 44. <coughs> 
44 landlocked countries in the world. Any reads? We'll see at half past five minutes. 44. Uh, hold on, Gully. Let me just check for you. Control F, Gully. Uh, no, you haven't, Gully. What's that? Oh, hold on. You might have done. What's that? Gully had a guess. Yep, you have had a guess, Gully. 84 was your guess. In the chat. How do you not know? How can you not remember if you've had a guess or not? No, he said he was typing and press enter in the chat and the chat crashed and then he had to oh, refresh Twitch and obviously the chat disappeared so he oh. weren't sure if his guess was in or not. As Ollie just flat in the ace queen suited here on the barn versus King Shucks open. I might have gone for the free back call here as Ollie off of just north of 30 cut off versus barn. Uh, maybe more inclined to free back the off suit. Both Ollie and the Mad Turk flopping top pet. <laughs> Tower for the next question. Ask Jay how many double landlocked countries. <laughs> on the turn oh dear oh dear oh dear mad turk potential to lose a lot of chips here could be doubling ollie up i don't think there's any other way about it unless ollie plays flat and it comes like the jack or king of diamonds on the river red jack or king to kill the action or a 10 or queen potentially uh, King Miller, you've got two minutes to get your guesses in. The question is, I asked how, how many countries in the world are landlocked? How many countries in the world are landlocked? And you want Tower's answer, not the correct answer. And you've got about two minutes. And the winner gets themselves a £110 closure seat. Does that mean I have to make mine really easy because you've made your no, no, you bit do, polarised? You, you, you do what or you were want. were you genuinely you, you, you're thinking own. about tomorrow's lot of potatoes? You're your own person, Tower. You can do whatever you like, okay? <laughs> and it's a deuce of spades on the river. <laughs> and the Mad Turk here. We've just effective 70% behind of Ollie's stack. Does go for the all in and Ollie with the ace queen never gonna be folding this one. We're just too high up. We beat value, we beat queen ten, we beat ace ten, we beat ace four. Ollie does make the call and the ace queen is good. Mad Turk, unfortunate turn car for him and Ollie White taking a monster. So guys, 30 seconds to go. If you haven't got a guessing yet, you've got 30 seconds. Mick the Mod's going to be closing the comp as soon as the dealer riffles the deck. Ooh. And we'll be in, we're going to do another one straight away after the next break. Sean Edwards. Sean Edwards. 203 landlocked countries in the world. If that's a great answer, my friend, I shall pay you myself. How would that even work? 206 countries. We need the world to have no water. Just have three countries at the border and the other 203 in the middle. So, Mick the Mod, close the comp. We've ten, got 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, boom. Comp close. Comp close. Last guess. Woo! Was D4. There we go. We'll give you them. That's it. The comp is now closed. Uh, we will jump back to the action if anything happens. Yes. But, Tower, uh, what was your thinking? Uh, I was thinking there weren't many. 
And I was thinking there are a few in Europe, but not many, so maybe half a dozen maximum. And I couldn't think of any in Asia. There's and a I lot, lot in Asia. Is there? Really? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking there weren't any, really. And I couldn't think of any in Africa. Um, so I didn't really go for many, really. And I only had 10 seconds to think about it. Like, it pressures on. So I literally went to... Uh, Hold on a second, you didn't think there was many in Africa? Have you ever seen Africa, looked at it on a map or anything? No. Never looked at it on a map? I, I know South Africa I've been and, 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 and I've, not been to, I've not been to Africa really, to be fair. And I, I don't know much okay. about it. And I've not been on holiday there and I've not played poker there and there's been no GUKPT there. Yep. So, not being very... We've got a big popper in here. Okay. Let's uh, have a quick look. So this is going to be hefty for Ollie potentially, unless we get a nice run out. Colin going for the donk here with the bottom two pair for third, and Ollie just wants to proceed with a flat with the pocket tense, not raising here on a board, which Colin could have plausibly flopped both straights or two pair. That's a good card to see for Ollie. Maybe room to get away from this one now. Still going to have to call the turn barrel from Colin. And Colin goes for what looks like half, just over. 24,000. And Ollie has to proceed with a call still. Yes, the ace has rolled off, but mm -hmm. still going to be ahead of some bluffs of Colin. Got equity versus some two pairs in the form of counterfeit outs, a 10 or an 8. And as well as that, it's a bluff heavy board. The bear 8x, the front door hearts, maybe some 10x with backdoor spades or 5x with backdoor spades in there as well. There's the call from Ollie, and this is where the decision is going to occur if we get a brick river. Pretty standard so far, and it is a brick river. Beautiful one to see for Colin Ginnon yep. running very hot today. Flew out the traps first session of the day and has chipped up nicely. And going to be going after some value here on this Deuce River with his two pair. Still can be some Ace X in here for Ollie as well. The Ace 10, Ace 8, Ace 5 all have to call flop. Ace X are hearts as well. And goes for 52 and a half here on the river. 60% value bet on the end here and real tough spot for Ollie. Yes, there's an ace on board, but the ace isn't really too relevant once Colin donks flop. Not going to have many ace X that are in the donk range on flop unless it's like an ace nine perhaps or an ace eight. But we do beat all this sort of bare eight X stuff, the front door hearts these kind of hold-ins and that's why Ollie is going to be in the tank for Absolutely. a little bit here. This yeah. is a tough decision. Mm -hmm. This is right on the line tower. I can see him go either way. I don't think either decision is clear here whether to call or fold. Colin Gillen more than capable of finding bluffs for three streets as well. But basically his value is going to be the 8-5, the 10-8 the uh, which we block and then all this sort of pocket 7s, pocket 6s, 9-7, 6-7, 9-6. And that's the value range of Colin, and then the bluffs, bluffs are going to be the nice 8x roll. and the front door hearts. And Ollie does figure it out. So, Tower. Yes. You kept many. everyone in to suspense. To be fair, I've not been on holiday when I didn't need my flip flops and my shorts <laughs> to swim in the sea. So that's why I went low. So I went for, unlucky for some, 13. 13. I thought that was plenty. How bad, bad was that? 44. That's a 44. I, I thought you'd get it close. close. I, I gave you a nice question because I thought you'd get I know it pretty you close. Did. I know you I did. want to make you look I know. good. I know. 13. 13. I didn't think there were that many. What is he talking? Everybody's got a beach. Everybody. Whenever I look on the LD brochures, they've got a beach. They have. So 13. 13. Was what Tower guessed. Who and got it? Someone got it spot on. <laughs> Chris Dash. Where are you, Chris Dash? On YouTube. You are the winner of the £110 closer seat, getting inside Tower's brain and yeah, getting it. Bob there's some very on. close guesses. 10, 12, 12 was done twice, 14. See, there weren't that There were a lot of people thinking not the same as me. <laughs> but there weren't that many. What, that 
I knew there was a lot in Europe, but yeah. there's not many in Asia, and there's not more than anything exactly. in Africa. Is exactly. Exactly. That... And whenever I look at a holiday brochure, I need my flip flops, and I need, and, and, I, and I can see sand. <laughs> There you go. J Pod's got it spot on. He said 95, but he was thinking more like what I said. <laughs> 13. Uh, so, Chris Dash, if you're still watching, just need your alias for Grosvenor Poker, and we will get that £110 token sent to you on Monday. Well, if the site, the, the site is still having technical issues at the moment, yeah. hopefully that will be rectified by Monday. If not, uh, you will receive those tokens. If it's not on Monday, it will definitely be at some point next week. Mm -hmm. Well done, Chris. Oh, that rings a bell, that name, Chris. Have you won a token before? That really rings a bell. So there will be one more token giveaway. What? what? Today? Yeah, let's do it again. I've got to get you back. I'll be nice and gentle with you. Great. It's about species in the zoo. No, I'm just... It's about ants. So we're in the money, 32 left. Who was 33rd? 33rd was Stephen Cherry, busting oh. shortly after. Steve Cherry. Getting crippled. Oh. Cherry, Cherry baby. And as I say, that tower, yeah. we are going to head to an outer table. Why? Okay, he's in. So we got Swifty shoving the ace four. And Craig with the tens. He's seen an ace, and that's good enough with a short stack for Katie Swift. Well done for getting in the money. Some really good turns. Draw, yeah. Well, we can, hit, now. we can hit an ace, we can hit a deuce, we can hit a four. Ah, it's no, it's a six. We lose Katie ah. Swift. Well done, Katie. Taps the, the table. Tournament. Good luck everybody, good cash Katie, well done. Yeah, got her in cash. Craig Smith, taking a nice one. So that means it's going to be 31 remaining, guys. That will update. There we go. Right, as I said it. Perfect. 31. And this is what we're playing for. Prizes at the bottom of your screen. Just under £80,000 going to the eventual winner. YouTube not working, says James Pollock. Let me have a little, but just... Oh, it looks good, my side. Yep. Just give it a refresh. That's uh, pocket eights in the hijack. Surprised to see him open here, Tower. Oh, he hasn't opened. He, he's put in all these chips, but a few. How come the usual dealer is playing? Uh, Mark just, I think he had this leg off and he's Good. local, so he's uh, yep. come up to play. And as he's freelance, he's allowed to. And he's doing well because he's in the money. <laughs> Here we go again, tower. Oh, what's happening now? What's all going on on the outer tables? What we got here? Kings against king. Oh, queens against king queen. The king oh, on the floor. How does that king work? Gets there. Oh, no. oh, the case queen on the turn. Oh my day. You think you're dead? You're down to one out. Case queen rolls off on the turn. Sit back down, Alan Gilmore. Oh my days. Alan Gilmore oh. getting the double up through Lin Chen. There's no wonder we flicked to that table. It's all going on on the outers at the moment. Wow. 
the old stone one out. That's a with the ace 10 raises to 16 and king trick here with the queen jack in the big blind expect just to see a defend okay it's a 3x open from the mad tech just recognize that he went 16 from 5k so over 3x so King Chuck just gave him credit for a stronger hand and let it go, was behind. That, that's what you do when you open these larger sizings. The 3x or more, you do just isolate a better range of hands to continue against you. You're not going to get as wide as defense in the big blind as you'd like with position. Let the man turn. Did just lose a big one, so maybe just trying to get these chips back quickly. King Queen for Colin opens to ten. Jack nine six. Quarter. Well, he makes the call. In his pocket, eight, nine on the turn. Still got decent equity here as Colin with two over cards and a gut shot might be wanting to check this back. Ollie going to have all the suited 9x in the big blind, and if we do end up getting check raised, we don't get to realise our equity. So it does go for the check behind, six on the river. Blind pop. Yeah. 31 out of 366. We are in the money. Shove him for just sub 12 with King Jack. Perfectly fine. Round to Ollie and Small. He's going to get out of the way. And Blythe in the big blind. Oh, sorry, Jim in the big blind. Jim gets out of the way. Blythe was sat there last session. Got call with Queen Knight. Man of Straw. Hi, Jay. Bixie, Jack and Katie still in. Uh, Katie just bust. Uh, Bixie bust about an hour and a half ago and Jack Harcastle busted right at the start of the day. <coughs> uh, but I can tell you that Bixie and Jack are both in the cup. cup. Yes. Yeah, I think it's a good 
This is a, a strange candidate to choose and tiny sizing as well. Um, strange one from Jim. I'm sure he'll have his reasons for it, but if we are free but end for one, this is way too small from the small blind. Need to go a lot larger, closer to 40, could even go 45k. And the other thing is, this is just a nice hand to flatten the small and bring Turk in and potentially win a decent pot the times that we flop a set. But he must have known. Who free bets pocket fours? <laughs> Unless you know you're flopping a set. Obviously. There we go. Seven for Deuce, all diamonds, mono board. So going to have a really small sizing choice here. as Jim. I hope. Goes 30k which is actually kind of chunky on this mono board, just north of 40%, but still good enough for Jim to take the pot. If I win some cash in my local Grover and put it on my G1 card, can I buy into an online poker comp on the Grover and Uh I don't think... It's is it not all connected? I don't and that would be something to speak here, that way. I don't, I didn't think it was transferable that way. Maybe it is. I thought that that's why they brought the G1 card out, so it was just all on one card. Hmm. We'll find out from PK. I'm putting in the the ways. So I'm asking a call with only Karen Caspo says, come on Mark the Green. Tanner Diamonds for Matt Erdley here, raises to 10k from under the gun. Fruit. Paul Fletcher says, put my brave pants on and told Mrs. Fletch there is no way Eurovision was going on the big telly. So now I'm sat in the office <laughs> contemplating my life choices. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Best thing to do, Paul, when she uh, goes to make a cup or pops a loo or something, quickly run in there, stick the stream on, and just play some bad music in the background and realise if she uh, see if she realises. <laughs> Got to have the stream on the big telly. You can't be having that. Can't be watching on your phone while she gets to watch Eurovision. <laughs> Or let her, let her have till 10 o'clock and then you have for the rest of the night till midnight. She's 8 till 10 and then you're 10 till 12. What you need all to do... All about compromise, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, because what you need to do is let her watch all the songs and then put the live stream back on. That's the most important bit, isn't it, of the uh, Eurovision Song Contest? Don't forget the United Kingdom is last at singing. Oh, wait. The last song. And nobody's ever won it from singing last. Surely it's better to go last, right? Because it's more in the memory of everybody who's... Yeah, but, um, but, but yeah, the United Kingdom song is the last song to be sung and nobody's ever won it from singing last, apparently. They used to do that on Britain's Got Talent years and years ago, didn't they? When, like... I remember when it first came out, I was at school watching it, but the act that was always like, <laughs> favourite to go through that semi-final would always perform last. Yeah. Just, like, always the last act going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Freeze for Ollie, just lets this one go from plus two. And leaves room for Jim to open the ace eight suited. We got ice cream. We got ice cream. Here you go. Any ice cream to buy, ladies and gentlemen? It's actually not cold in here tonight, not red hot in here tonight. DD says early for the win. Used to work with him as chefs together when he started out. Oh, fabulous.
Oh, Paul. Paul Fletcher, you have a lot to learn. I've just been reminded that I've played poker two nights this week and I've been allowed on a lad's holiday next month. <laughs> <laughs> you want a vision it is. <laughs> no, just, honestly, just, just, let, just let her watch all the songs and then turn it over, put the live stream back on. It's all about the singing, isn't it? Aces for Ollie makes it 10k. Jim comes in with the king 10. And it's a top pair for Jim. Yeah, King Jack, eight, two spades. And he goes for the check with the aces. I'm guessing we're going to see check raise here, just playing the check out position. No, it goes for the check call. Fine as well. Oh dear, oh dear. King of diamonds on the turn. Jim turning Ollie dead to two outs. Fires for 15 again. It's Ollie with a check call and it is a brick on the river. And I'm oh not sure how he's going to be able to get away from this one. Well, lean back from Jim, rubber the chest, a little bit of talking. Wow, he's going to check the King 10 back. He's going to check the trips back. Wow, where is his value on the end? Why, why check the river? He's left his value bets at home today. Last to speak, and he checks. That is a classic example of afraid of monsters under the bed. And Ollie loses eight big blinds with aces. That hand, unbelievable. Three big Absolutely blinds flop. Three big blinds turn and two big blinds pre. He lost eight big blinds with the aces. Sometimes it's not the hands you win, sometimes it's the hands you lose Absolutely. that can make a difference. Jim with the jack nine suited, gonna get involved again. This time in the form of a limp. Yep, spot on Argent. Lost the minimum he did. Oh, Colin goes to the ISO versus Jim, trying to get heads up with position. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let it go. Maybe not wanting to play a big pot with Colin out of position, so just chooses to let his two one gap up. <laughs> Hit them up. Does this finish tonight or tomorrow? It's tomorrow. We finish tomorrow. We start again tomorrow at 12.30 on the live stream. Why do you think he would not bet there, Jay? Um, if he had any reason, he has to maybe put Ollie on a, a better king. Maybe a check king, queen, king jack, king, ace king on the flop. Well, king jack's two pairs, probably not king jack, but maybe a check set of jacks, this type of stuff. 
but um, obviously we need to be going for value. Sleep way too much on the table. Still down at the moment, Rob. Everyone is working on it. We're hoping to get it up as soon as possible. Uh, we will be playing till around quarter to one this evening. And then we will be back tomorrow from half 12 on stream, 12.30 p.m. for the conclusion of the main event. We will see how many are left at the back end of today, but we've still got a good, probably just under four hours left in the booth for us this evening. Can't eat. Yeah, do you want to do some comps? Do you want want... Well, I ain't eaten my ice cream yet. Oh, have gosh. you got yours? Oh. How long? Have we, how, tell me how long we got on the break. Uh, we've got uh, an hour till break. Well, I'll, you, I'll come back in half an hour then. Do you, do you want to do half hour each? I'll come back in half an hour. We'll do half hour. Is that hour all right? Each. Are you going to sit in for an hour? Come on, Katie. Sit in till the next break and tell us what's happened today. The last time I was in here, I didn't have much of a voice, did I? You didn't. To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, on the on the feature table you didn't have much of a voice either. Oh, that's the quietest you've ever been. Oh, what, today? Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was. Uh, quiet. Anyway, Katie Swift's coming in. Jay's going to show and... Uh, oh, and I'll be back in half an hour to do the final half an hour of the shift with yeah. Katie and then we'll be back. So Katie's jumping in. Yeah, we're on break of five to ten, so we've got just under an hour left of the session. Katie's going to do an hour with us. How are we doing, Swifty? Yeah, good okay, cash? Good. Oh, well, you know, it mean cash, but locked it up. But it was out of that, that hand. You could have had chips, couldn't you? I know you got there on the flop, but why'd they have to put the, uh, the tens? Well, I've just, uh, I actually just jumped in the cup straight oh. after and had an even worse one just there. So, um, got aces beat aces beat queens and the queen hit on the river. Yeah, cool love, but yeah, I would have had a really nice stack in, in that going through to, well, only a couple of levels to play until day two for that. But yeah, it happens, it's poker. What can you do? That's it. Um, and bullet, to be one, fair, one he was ahead. He, yeah, yeah, one bullet. He was, to be fair, he, he was ahead with the Queen's probably it was, you know, it was, the decision was on me, so perhaps it was, um, you know, avoidable, but I was uh, wanting, I felt like I wanted to go for it, so, um, and then, and then I couldn't, I was handcuffed back to the old Swifty short stack, yeah. so, but I know how to play with short stack, so it's quite, you know, quite, comfortable with how to play it and I'm not always um, I suppose theory based when it comes to short stack I've doing got, my own thing. I've so got one question for you that the chat were asking earlier. I, I, uh, know, yeah, I, you know, I know, I know what yeah, it's yeah, be. Yeah. The, the, the Ace King. King. Yeah, the yeah, Ace King. Because yeah, yeah, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't come up with an explanation. Okay, so, so um, the particular player that had raised had been in raising and when he made it two and a half X, that stood out as a little bit of a red flag that I felt like. I actually got the pair wrong, but I felt like it was like a nines, ten jacks kind of hand. Yeah. So I could... <laughs> Easily, obviously, shove. That would be the, the normal route, would be shovel in. Um, I just, something didn't feel right, and I knew I needed to hit to survive. And we were so close to the bubble yep. that I felt it was 
a risk I didn't need to take. Okay. So that, so that makes sense. So I just basically felt like flattening the extra, because he'd made it extra yeah. big raise. Um, you think it's, it's more stronger than I just what played on nine tender jacks, yeah. that was the free hands that I felt we had. Obviously I was wrong, he had eights, but it might, it was, you know, it was, To be honest, if you, if you shove eight stone um, fold, He's and calling you, and I don't you're hit out. him out. Yeah, yeah, you're out, because um, the flop was a And break, I just so. feel like some, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes ace king is overplayed and overrated, and in my theory, I know it's not GTO theory, um, but in my theory, that's one of the spots where it's overrated, overplayed. And I had about 18, yeah, about 19 just sub 20. Big, big lines, yeah, it was, but it felt enough that I'm very confident in my short stack play, yeah. so I don't feel the need to just jam there with Ace yeah. King and, and kind of overrate it in that scenario, especially if I've recognised that one particular player has done something that's out of the norm and he's early position. Um, and yeah, I just felt like I'd see a flop and take it from there, play yeah. it post flop rather good, than pre flop. Good explanation. It's the yeah, risk. That was it. Yeah. The risk um, reward factor actually as well, because now if you're going from 20 big blinds to 40 big blinds doesn't actually change anything no. on the bubble, but going from 20 big blinds to out. Is that's, a lot, yeah, and, and I totally get that, I, I don't know, I didn't listen, I don't know what the chat box may or may not have said anything, I don't know what your comms was on it, but I do recognise it probably looked really odd when I flattered, but, um, and, it, and probably, I don't know if people maybe thought that my hat, like, as the box said my hand right or yeah, anything yeah. like that, but yeah, it was, I did have ace king Yeah, no, yeah, I thought you had ace king. Um, just that he'd been raising to 8k and he made it 10 and it just felt like um, do I want to flip for my tournament life at that point and I didn't, you know. Well it worked out because it saved you your tournament and got yeah. you on the right side uh, of the money. It caused chaos though, didn't it? Because yeah. the other guy then was priced in to call with his, I think he had 9.5. Yeah. And then, yeah, I sort of, I was the, I created that. <laughs> Because obviously if I jam, he's not in there yeah. and the eights hold, I go out and he doesn't double, so then the whole scenario is different. That, that's the butterfly effect, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, Mark's done really well. I'm, I'm really rooting him. He, I yeah. was on his table yesterday and... He was, he was all in on the bubble, one card to come and he's, needed to yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah, I'll um, be he said we made Thanks, Mick the Mod. Hi, chat box. How how is everyone tonight? Is it, is it you? Is it no? It's not. Is it tomorrow? tomorrow Eurovision? Are we on Saturday? Uh, no, yeah, yeah, Eurovision. Oh, we're Saturday right? today. Yeah, yeah Saturday's today. Day two is usually Saturday, I'm, Katie. Sorry, it's not a four-day um, event. The GUK was the main event. How long you've been doing this now? I don't even know the day of the week, so gosh, I'm, uh, it's been a long week. It's been a lot going on this week, but yeah, so. Um, in fact, it's so much that I'm, I'm in tracksuits, and someone actually said to me, today, Oh, you're uh, normally wearing tracksuits, <laughs> and he might as well have just said, You look. <laughs> I'm sure that's not. Well, maybe they're just very observant and realise you weren't wearing your usual attire. Yeah. Ah, it's a really nice atmosphere now, so I like the Edinburgh spot. And, um, yeah. Open here from King Shark, Ollie free that in the Ace King. That's probably going to be end of hand unless Colin wakes up with something in the blinds. That will be that. You off to Vegas next month, Katie? I am. I'm just about to finalise my schedule and post my dates. I hope um, we meet in better circumstances yes, this time. Yes, oh my God, please tie your phone round your neck. Go. You can get a little pouch, please. Yeah, like, I will. You need one of those, yeah? Oh, gosh. Not again, no. We'll, definitely, we'll go for sushi again, but yeah. that's not because we've got the phone. Right, you know, so, uh, when are you going? Uh, probably back, I'm booking it next week, so probably back end of June. Uh, the person I went out with last year, I'm, I'm going with him again this year, so just someone's travel. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to book it next week. So when, in Luton, hopefully we'll have the dates for everyone on the stream when I'll be out there. Yeah, I won't be in, I'll, well, I'll be in Luton for the 25 and 50 at the very start. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to that, actually. Like, it's up on the schedule, like the trade up. It picks up a bit. Um, but, it's my birthday midweek, so I'm not going to be there. We're going out to Bratislava. So. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I've not been there before, so 
I'm combining a birthday trip with my best friend and um, a little bit of poker, a little bit of a small event out there. So yeah, I should be there. Um, and then home for four days and off to Vegas. So. Uh, Colin probably got a shove here, Katie. Uh, it does go for the shove with the 75 suited just because Matt's so short here. Matt working with sub 12, so Colin. Colin, yeah. he was good, on my table yesterday. Good player as well. Go, oh my god, he was on such a heat yesterday. It was insane, insane, and dangerous combo when you've got a good player yeah. who's running so pure. Um, yeah, all the cards under the sun, and then playing them so so well. Oh, it was just really too hard. Thank you. Well, Matt thinks that Queen 7 going to be good enough to call. I think it's spot on because he's got Colin Yellen dominated. And the man has been on fire today. Uh, Matt Erdley set for a double, just fading three outs at the moment. Oh my God! <laughs> well, he hits the three out, but flops a straight flush draw as well. So gonna need oh, oh well <laughs> well we can find a club oh, can God. find a club not the four yeah though. not the four of clubs that would be fun and it's a oh, queen of hearts on the river so colin gillen does pass matt early and then my story checks out right <laughs> when you're running hot yeah you're he's just hot. on fire but he's playing well as well and that's that's the combo that yeah people say about you you know you're running well but he was playing awesome yeah. as well he won a like so, half a mini yeah. flip versus ludo yeah. uh, katie katie in the chat with me and speaking of ludo we are going to head to an outer table because ludo is all in with that short stack when he lost that huge flip versus colin Ace three suited, gonna need help here, Ludo, or we have lost one. Five outs, ace for a free. Oh, Barry on the river. Ludo Garlic survives. <laughs> no one likes to see that. <laughs> I saw earlier, I was laughing to myself, I had a little giggle when you went, uh, who is it that got you the other chair and propped you up on the feature table? <laughs> <laughs> So I always thought I, I suffered because obviously I'm short. But Robbie Ball said that he actually is the same. And he's yeah, gigantic. Yeah. You know, he's so, so tall. But he said the same. But um, actually the two chairs really worked well. I was in a nice spot because I could put my feet up on the little bit at the table. <laughs> You know, and just rest because otherwise my feet wouldn't have touched the floor. Yeah, that's the thing with the two, yeah, the two yeah, yeah. chairs. So if I was in one of the middle seats, I wouldn't have been able to have the two chair option because I've been like, <laughs> yeah, it would have been uncomfortable still. So yeah. Raise and take for Ollie. How many is left King in? Six and thirty. Oh, not many have gone out some Matt, yeah, Matt, 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 Matt was the next person to bust after you. Literally, half hour yeah, later, yeah. that's the last one out. Yeah, I know. Shut up. <laughs> it shows how good the structure is, doesn't it, on these? That's the thing. Yeah, great, unbelievable structure. <laughs> Always say that about the GEKPTs. Nice to see Carl and Katie back as well. Yeah, saw them in London as well. Oh, I wasn't in London. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we mark completed with the 9-7 off and Andrew here with the Ace Queen going to be raising this up. Seven go as he should. So, 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 
It's no real short, is it? Reverse, 16 no, right. big. Yeah. Mad Turk. Right. I haven't spotted him. <laughs> yeah, did have like 200k in the Mad Turk. Got called from Ollie. Ace 4 versus Ace Queen on Ace Queen 4. So, right. lost a lot of chips there. Ollie's a nice guy. He was playing really well as well. Oh, don't don't throw me under the bus, Paul Fletcher. <laughs> don't do that. Not you specifically, Katie. Oh yeah, no, I know about this bet. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, someone's had that bet pretty much every year, right? It's it's a weird one for me. I obviously come in that category, but it's. I, it's I was speaking to Jack Hardcastle yesterday, and he reckons I've done it in with the price that I gave Paul. He reckons that. I'm doing it in. What's the exact bet? Uh, 80 to 1 on a Lady GUKPT winner it's a, this year. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, but it's just when. I was I was buzzing last week as well, uh, well, two weeks ago at the Vic, because we had Bixi and Hong Fam on the final table, and Hong Fam was chip leader, but it was an 888 poker I was event. Just yeah, yeah, so I was, I, was, I was praying one of them yeah. won. I was honestly praying one of them won. <laughs> but, um,. Oh, does it include those then as uh, well? No, no, no. Only G that's what that's what I'm saying. Only G only right. GUKPTs. Okay. GUKPT main events. The thing is, I've got to be honest. I think, and this is no disrespect to any of the the previous years players, but I think that the women players at the moment are the strongest they've ever been. So, if there's ever a time that it's going to happen, yeah. I think it will be now. You know, it'll be soon. I, re um, I reckon we will. Definitely get one in the next three years. Definitely. Yeah, I just. Do you know what? Do you know why it's like a weird one for me is that I don't really get why there's such this sort of pressure bubble with it and why it's such a thing. Like, there you won't have it with anything else. You won't have people saying about someone's uh, race or someone's, you know, like, um, it, like anything else. It's just always the gender thing so it kind of I don't know how it, it's an obvious one but it for some reason gets mentioned all the time like I honestly I can't tell you how often I hear it nowadays I think it's more than ever before I think it's because it's such a minority of the field you're probably what four maybe even three percent of the field so mm. taking that factor into account it's just the, the fact that it's a very small percentage of I the films. I can tell you there's have. other other um, sort of differences with people that are small minorities, but it, it wouldn't get mentioned. It's just I know what you're saying, Razor Kev. It's because it's the you know the minority, but it's yeah, it's just a weird one. I find it strange because I'm obviously a female poker player, but I don't consider myself a female poker player, I'm just a poker player. It's the same as anyone else out there that wants to win a GUKT, they're all, they're all trying to win for them, like, not for their gender. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's makes like sense. a really strange one, but, um, but it's obvious and it's not going to go away, so you just roll with it, you know? One of them. Just, just um, go and win loot, okay? And put it, well, not loot, you're not there. Go and win the Vic in August and put it to bed for good. But, yeah, I mean, and and that is the other thing. It ends up the amount of people is like, um, I think they think that we have a thing with it as well, and there isn't. It's like I would like to win one because I'd like to win one, yeah. not because I want to be the first female to win one, or not because of like this this thing does that make sense yeah it makes sense but it's like but the amount of times i get asked it is on the, unbelievable on the flip side of that i think it it would be so good for the game to get one if we, if we got a lady winner oh, it would be unbelievable would for be, the game because there'd be people that are watching it and be like course. she's done it i can go and do it now i'll actually go to a casino i'll sit down i'll play i'll start learning of course but i actually think that there's enough that's good for the game with with what's going on in the women's yeah. game and um, what's going on behind the scenes? There's a, so much that goes on behind the scenes that people don't even realise about the groups that, um, unfortunately, the guys don't have ac access to them groups. And I get a lot of requests into the Facebook group that I run um, from guys, but I can't. Unfortunately, I can't let you in because it that group posts. I post the password for a female-only game on that group, 
and the whole point of that group is to post that password each week. So obviously I need to keep you know that under sort of lock and key as such. Um, but there's great things that go on behind the scenes. I've got a WhatsApp group that's got over 100 women in it. I've got a Facebook group that's got over a thousand women in it. Um, the networking that's going on continually that's building the confidence in females to then go and play the game because yeah. they've, it's not just about like, people, I think people think of the women's game or why, why is there female only events, but it's more to do with networking rather than, oh, we don't want to play with like an open field. Yeah. It's, you know, and that, that's let's exactly build a community yeah. so that you've got the confidence to go to, to stops and you know you're going to know someone and you know that you could possibly room share with someone so you're cutting your costs and you're building a network and you might be able to get a study buddy with someone and all, all the different things that would be naturally harder for females to meet each other. I've got loads of guy mates, poker players, um, you know, both genders, but it's... Um, it is definitely harder when you, if you, even if you sit at a table with another female on it, you're not necessarily right next to them where you can spark up a conversation if you don't know them. It's, you know, you'd naturally sort of speak to your neighbours, yeah. don't you, rather than like across the table. So yeah, it's just about that really. Uh, how do I feel about the chap in the US that played and won the women only event? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be really honest, I've been so busy, I've been tagged in a few things, I haven't read up enough of it. I don't, uh, I mean, I, I don't really get involved in it. If they want to do that, they want to do it. It's a reflection on them, isn't it? I, I don't ever see anything said about seniors' event. I don't see anyone who's under 50 saying that they want to play a seniors' event and take that down. I just think like respect it for what it is and you know I, I actually reckon if you spoke to any female poker player they wouldn't actually care if men had a men only comp like I genuinely don't think that they'd like men say to me all the time oh why isn't there a men only well go and sort it I, I'm sure it's not a fit like I don't see why it's so much of a thing do you know what I mean yeah like, just yeah I uh, can't believe that in what are we, 2023 we're still having conversations like two decades ago. It's just crazy, to be honest. And hopefully that will run its course, but I, I doubt it. And I, and I don't think that getting a female, even if you've got a female winner of a WSOP main event, I think the conversations will still be there. I think they'll still have a... You know, um, I think the things that encourage more women to play the game are the networking behind the scenes, are the, you know, the likes of Wendy, who is in the older woman category, who has gone through so much in her life and has chose to learn the game of poker and keep her mind fresh and, you know, um, have that as a hobby. I think that. That's the sort of thing that encourages more women. I think the, the ones where, like my family, where it's the family of women that play the game and make holidays out of it and do it as their social activity and have, have great network of friends as a result of that. I think they're the stories that are gonna um, encourage more women, you know. That, that's that's kind of my point from the start. I think that's, that's why I think if we do get, say for yourself, if you went and won a junior KPT, I think it would get so many more ladies coming to a tour, coming to play the satellites, trying to get in for cheap, and that that's sort of my take on it. I think if you lifted the trophy in August at the Vic and you won a junior KPT main event, I think at the next stop we'd see an increase in lady runners. And that's, that's all it is from my perspective. Yeah, I can understand that and I appreciate that point of view completely. Um, and, you know, let's hope it happens. Yeah, and uh, missed a bit of action there, Jim, Sorry, turning the nut flush. Me and Katie in a heated debate. Don't usually get this with me and Tower, <laughs> unless it's about football. Sorry. But <laughs> Jim Sorry. turned the nut flush. Oh, okay, it's good that it's about poker, though. Like. Yeah, and went for the yeah. donk shove on the river of the king. Shot went for value with the king on the turn. And uh, we have just lost one, guys. Um, unfortunately, we didn't catch it. 
but saying here that Brandon Shields exited five minutes ago and he was sat there on the out table with me. That seat is empty next to Michael. So Brandon Shields out in 30th for 2,230 pounds. Uh, all I got, he, said he made a hero call versus Michael Kane with third pair. Michael Kane had top pair. And uh, that's the only information I've got on that hand, guys. Fortunately, P Cake was not out on the floor for that one. There's some uh, really good players still left in, some good names left. I mean, it's going to be a great day three, yeah, I'm sure. Is. Um, I was on a super tough table of uh, players earlier. There was huge stacks and big names and, uh, you know, it's definitely attracting quality, as always. You'd expect that on the GKT mains, but, you know. How are we doing, Span? Yep, yeah, Wee Mark still going. Are you still here, Span, or are you, you in the cup? You've gone back home? You at the bar? I frightened Spandy um, off yesterday after he misheard what I was saying about a chess game. We won't repeat it, but I think he, I haven't seen him since, so I'm, I'm worried I've, I've scared you off, Span. I'm nice when I met him first. Then they say I'm horrible. So I just met you today, so you think I'm nice. Thank did you, you. Did you catch a steal in your pocket? <laughs> no. Maybe. I should have looked at it. Are you still here then, Span? <laughs> I lasted three hands and went back home. Uh, oh, right, yeah. Sorry, I'll just see if you Have you got a, a pick? Who are, are you railing? Or uh, any? I haven't really got anyone to rail, to be fair. I'd like to see Mark do well, obviously. And the Bowsie. DLA and Bowsie. And, and Colin. I like, I like Colin. So I'm thinking. Tim, Tim's in as well. Oh, Good Tim's still Tim. in. Yeah, oh, like okay. Tim. He's run bad this week, to be fair, Tim. He's had a pretty rough, rough week. Is he? Hasn't run good in spots, so oh, maybe he's saving the run good. Yeah, I like Tim. For the main event. I didn't know Tim's still in, but. Uh, yeah, last giveaway is going to be last session of the day. So Tower should be back in a couple of minutes' time, and then uh, Tower will do the last half hour of this session with Katie. Uh, we'll be back after the break around 20 past 10, and then we will do the last giveaway that session. So between 20 past 10 and half past midnight. Ludo's in the background, Span, so you can see him on the outer table. Yeah, lost ace, uh, king versus queens, all in pre for half a milli versus Colin Gillen, did Ludo and was crippled, uh, but then doubled ace three versus jacks, found a barry on the river. We are down to 29 guys, maybe because bust outs did slow down. Our action tracker just a bit behind with the player count. I can tell you Brandon's definitely gone. He's not in his seat anymore. And we are on 29. Are any of these players pros? Um, not sure about King. Uh, yes, Ollie is. I think Colin is. Well, yeah, Colin is. Uh, Mark, no. I think it's just uh, Colin and Ollie. Maybe King. I don't know anything about King, actually. So I think he's local to Edinburgh. He may play for a living. Uh, the two I'm certain of are uh, Ollie and Colin. Mad Turk? Oh. He's a, he's he, has other, he has other dealings on the yeah. side, don't he? He's got businesses I didn't, and stuff. I don't know what he's, what he's got. Uh, he, he plays a lot. Yeah, he's, he's uh, some, certainly. Uh, he's just a regular on the yeah, tour, yeah, he's just a reg, isn't he? Uh, I like poker wouldn't be his only source of income. <laughs> Mark's up, a dealer, quote. so he's uh, in and around the game all the time. So we'll have a, usually dealers make, make good players, don't they? So you can yeah, a lot of players start as dealer and yeah, transition exactly over. That. 
Mark oh, goes to the chat raise there with Alice. Bomber. Yeah, Alice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we said no, we need more women in poker, so if we could come and start playing rather than dealing. She has she hasn't she hasn't been playing a lot lately. The last no, last few weeks she went on a little like two weeks. She, she had her first real bad patch of variance. Uh, like it can be a bit disheartening when you hit your first real bad patch of variance. Yeah, so for sure. Just having a little bit of time off. Yeah. And as I've ended up a few months off, but let's go to an outer ta table. I see PK there with the camera. Oh no, he's put it back down. He picked it up and he put it back down. Yeah, sometimes a little bit of time off is good. I, mean, I had a bit at the start of the year, not because of anything to do with poker, just uh, personal stuff, but um, it's nice to be back in it. it. It almost makes you like hungry for the game again and you, yeah. you come in with like a fresh enthusiasm as well. Just come back from Malta, that was a good trip. That was, anyone wants to combine a, you know, like a sunny holiday. You know, and poker, that's always a good one. So ace 10 open from King from under the gun, and Ollie just flattened the jacks here from plus one. Can free bet, but flat going to be fine as well versus gun. And we are sitting 40 plus digs yeah. deep with King. <coughs> that is horrible spot, ain't it? If we do free bet and we get ripped on for just under 45, gun versus plus one. So. Ollie's choosing to play flat. Jim's in with the sixes. Ooh, Jim is running wow. so hot since he's been on this table. Really? What's the stats? See him, oh, God. See him turn the nut flush and here. Top, top, top over, over pair. pair and a set. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is, he's going to be a big one. Like King's decision to check this one freeway. Yeah. Out of position to two players. And uh, Ollie here with the jacks, I think, going to be firing. I'd love to just see Jim find a flat here, this dude. It's got about 17, 22. Yeah, 22 into 54. 40%. Yeah. 40% and it's three way, so hence why. <coughs> oh. Time flies when you're having a heated debate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it wasn't like heat. No, no, yeah, yeah. like... Well, have you, you not hot in here? No. Oh, um, oh my gosh. So quads, hot in Wow. Here. Quads over pair, top, top. This is... Uh... Didn't move a muscle, Ooh. Jim. He sat there like a statue. <laughs> trying not to give anything away. I've just turned quads in the main event. Four tables out. And there's 120k in the middle. Don't move a muscle. <laughs> Breathing a bit, breathing a bit heavier though. Breathe, the old adrenaline's going with the breathing. And Ollie goes for the second street of value, what he thinks will be a value bet here. Yeah. And Jim. Ollie's not moving. Oh, he is now. Obviously, just going to call with the quads. And then King probably has to fold. It's really close one for King, but. Is there ever a world where Ollie bets King 10 and Jim calls Queen 10? Probably not. Is he, is he right? He's raised. He's gone for the raise with the quads here. Makes it 70. Oh. Hopefully he's not. Kind of, <laughs> Six to one the call with the over pair and I, I'm, I'm Call in here, Katie, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, you have to call here for that but price, but it's, it's just red flags with the min raise, but and it's, it's all. It also could be like a 10x here from Jim exactly. that's trying to get a cheap showdown, so we have to call as Ollie. Yep. It could Jim could be doing this with a 10 just to try and get a cheap showdown once he opts for this click back. I don't know Jim as a player. I don't know what his tendencies are, but yeah, you never fold him for that price. King of Diamonds. On the river. Surely it's a check now from Ollie, but he might block bet it. He does check, yeah. He's going to have a little chug of water. <laughs> Calm himself down. He's all in, he just said. <coughs> yeah, now I think we'll see Ollie fold pretty quickly, Katie. 
Oh, it just looks so comfortable and yes we got the over pair here but I think we just give them credit for a mm. 9 7 suited 10 8 squads even like Do you ever play in 9 7 suited though in this position to an under the gun raise and a flat from plus one like it, there's some hands that I think you're just not going to be in there with so I, I actually think he probably might give him credit for more like 10s yeah, ten, or 8s ten, ten like, like a full yeah, out ten uh, so that is that but before we Leave. We are going to go to an outer table because we've got an all-in in the call. It's Jack gone all in on nine eight three, ten on the turn, ace on the river. So Jack ten got there on the turn, and Lin Chen got there on the river. So we lose Alan Gilmore in twenty ninth. Going to be down to twenty eight players, and Tower is going to be coming back. The dealer looks so impressed there. He was like, cheers, mate. <laughs> Slow me job down a little bit. <laughs> I did. You've got to get the, the photo for the group chat, the exit hand. Didn't look impressed, old Alberto. Uh, Tower's back for the last 25 minutes of this session. Uh, I'm going to quickly have an extended break. I'll leave you with Tower and Katie. Swap chairs. Enjoy. I'll Enjoy. go out this way. I feel like your chair's going downhill it anyway. Is. Have you not noticed it's on a slope? <laughs> it, on a slope? We're on a slope. Yeah. Have you not noticed? Well, Edinburgh is hilly. It is very hilly. <laughs> very, very hilly. We're definitely on a slope. Oh, what have I got here? I've got a yogurt. I've got a bio yogurt. Oh, that's my breakfast. Yeah, it's mine. Mm -hmm. Activia Gut Health. Beautiful. I've got some water. Cheers, Katie. Oh, yeah, I need oh, that. Oh, man. Thank you, sorry. I've got water there. You want me? Is this yours? Yeah. Cheers oh, yeah, now. Uh, I'm back. Here we go. We need a photo opportunity. Cheers. We will. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, you. Cheers, you. We will. I do. Uh, I, I've, had, I've had words. I've words. had words. Yes. With? Uh, the head of online. They're definitely hoping to be back online tomorrow. They've had a lot of issues, and obviously it's, near, it's, near, it's, it's network wide, it's not just Grosvenor. Uh, Tom's, Tom has been in touch. To say that uh, the, the free roll will be in the lobby and everything should be back to normal. That's what he's told me. Fingers crossed! It's been a long time. So, yes. So, fingers crossed. Good evening, Ben. Oh, hey, up, music sorry, sorry. Good evening, Ben. How's things? We are down to 28. 28. Who was the last out? Let's have a look. 29th was Alan Gilmore, who we've just seen. Alan Gilmore was the last person out we've just seen. Does that mean he's not happy? <laughs> Does that mean he's not happy? Oh, you missed oh, it. Happy Gilmore. Oh, you missed it. Oh, Sorry. God, I've forgotten me. I didn't I'll use it. That. I wanted to get in. Oh. Anyway. Get in. Get in. Hey, oh, photo opportunity. It was Mad Turks all in with Jacks. Let's have a quick look and see if we get any, gets any action. She's pressing buttons and all sorts. It's like a great photo of me, you know. So the Mad Turk needs to hit, or he is out the door. Jack's against got aces. As well. That's, that's, not, not, that's not very good. We're down to one of the two Jacks in the deck, or we lose the Mad Turk one himself. Yusuf Eminoglu GG. has just been eliminated. There he goes. He yeah. cashes in 27th <laughs> because in 20. Eighth was Jamie White, who's just been oh, eliminated. It says, it says 28 on there. It does, and it, that'll change as soon oh, as right. Dave realises because 27th was the Mad Turk Jacks into Aces. We've just seen it. £2,330, the Mad Turk busting out. We're down to 26. The right hand side, the top right, will get changed as we realise that uh, the Mad Turk was out. Lost one. How you been anyway? Been alright? Yeah, it's been good. 
Really enjoyed it. Been one of my uh, favourite trips up to uh, Edinburgh. What favourite, as in out of all of the GPTs, or out of I've all it, of the Edinburgh GPTs you've done in, previously? Well, probably. Well, I played Glen Eagles. Well, so it's up there. And now. even you know what Glen Eagles yeah, is I even with I've your heard son of that. playing off plus. <laughs> 73 or whatever he plays <laughs> off now. Uh, being chosen to play for England. Yeah, he has. Your boy. He's done really well. He's done, he was watching earlier as well. Good old Jack. So, uh, yeah, he's done. Yeah, I got to play Glen Eagles. We've been out for a nice meal. We've, it's been grand. I've really, really enjoyed Edinburgh. It's been fantastic. Oh, good. Yeah, always a good one. Sun came out to shine when we came to oh, work. It's been nice, yeah. It's been very nice. So, how do you pronounce that? King shot? Would you like the last tea cake? No, thank you. Oh, thank God for that. No. It's mine for tomorrow. <laughs> Phew! Oh. You love all your sweets and chocolate. We get them We get them brought in. We get looked after, you know, when well, we come up here. It'd be rude not to eat them then, wouldn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. No, I, I will leave you. To, I couldn't take anyone's last anything. I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind. Nobody else has no, added it. There's only one left. <laughs> <laughs> So Ace High Flop, Jim bets 10k, gets the fold, it's pretty standard. So as you can see, top right, 26 left. The Mad Turk, the last left. out. No real 27. short stack either, they've got some, they're really quite Yeah, deep. 25 bigs. <laughs> How many normally go through? Uh, two tables usually. You usually get down to two tables. There'll be a redraw at 24. Yeah, of course, yeah. And then a redraw at 16, and obviously 16 is two tables. Yeah. I think we, I think we will get down to two tables. Yeah, I feel like how many more levels? Couple of levels, yeah. So yeah. Rest of this one. So raise to 12k from Mark under the gun. Da -da -da -da. Am I too quiet? No, yeah. No way, that's, that's never been said about <laughs> me before. Gosh. <laughs> and he's got the ace jack of spades. Just decides to flat from cut off. I don't know how Mark's been playing or how this table's been playing um, like that much, but that might be. Bit of a Jumbo's always tournament life, yeah. are you? The ace queen. The ace queen, yeah. yeah. But, you got there. Now brings Colin in as well with the Jack 10. Wow. Colin flops the flush draw and the straight draw. No blended straight draw. Middle pair for Mark, but he's the pre flop aggressor, so. Gonna see a C bet here. Gets the fold from King Shuck. So pot's now 58k. Mark's got 138 behind, so Colin probably wants to start building this. Yeah, it does come in with the raise, as expected. Makes it 35k. Yeah, with a draw, up and down and a flush draw. 61% equity. Mark well, second pair. Yeah. 22 out of 138, so he has to, yeah, he has to get He hasn't bit. got the stack to continue no. now with the raise, and that's the, the reason Colin can, um, you know. Jules Al said, How did you do today, Katie? Sorry? Jules Al said, How did you do? How did I do? I just got a min cash today. I made, uh, poss I definitely made one blunder earlier. Um, that, well, actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought, to be honest, when I ran it. But, um, I felt it was worse than what it actually turned out to be. But I, I felt it was a mistake earlier, and then um, I was short after 
had pocket tens v queens on another hand that left me short. I was trying to um, just sort of go for it at that stage in the comp, and uh, yeah, it didn't work out. So I was handcuffed for um, approaching the bubble. So to lock up a min cash kind of ended up being all right. Like it, you know. Well done. Just one of them. What's your plans for the next couple of months? So, um, Luton? I have got. I'm only playing the 2550 at the start of the Luton okay. Festival because then it's my birthday and I'm going away. I'm going to go to Bratislava with um, my best friend and yeah. I'm going to play a comp out there whilst out there. But ah, right. we're, at, we're going for. Is it a that. poker holiday? Yeah, basically. Awesome. Poker, birthday, best friend, catch up, awesome. quality time together, holiday. Brilliant, love it. <laughs> so, yeah, we're combining a lot that trip. Um, only there for like five days, four or five yeah. days, um, and then get back for three days, and I'm off to Vegas for five weeks. So. Wow, five weeks? Yeah. Get you! Yeah, so um, that's, amazing. that's. And then I get back from Vegas. Are you staying in the same hotel? Uh, no, a couple. I'm going to change switch yeah. a couple of times. Yeah. Um, so we're out there, obviously, Best with way. Team Grove now, um, for the end of July, beginning of... Uh, sorry, end of June, beginning of July, with Team Grove now. Yeah. Um, and... How many qualifiers have you got so far? Lots? Lots, yeah. Well. Lots. And there's satellites on... Well, obviously not currently, but yes. there will be um, yeah. when it's all fixed. Um but the satellite, the final satellites run every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, and two players qualify for the package every Sunday, yeah. which they then get to join us in the summer. Yeah, so it's amazing. great. It's, and it's one of them sort of trips that, you know, like a money can't buy kind of trip. Yeah. You, you can only win it. So definitely play the satellites. Has anybody and won two? I don't think so. No, because, no, they haven't because... I don't know if you can transfer it or anything, so I think once you've played one, that's it, you're locked in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really, really good trips, so though, really fun, you know. Mm. Um, so yeah, and then when we're when I'm back from Vegas, it's yeah. only like a week, and then it's um, Goliath. Goliath. Amazing. So, and that's going to be a good one. Yeah. So I'm there for the full duration of Goliath. Mm -hmm. um, and then before you know it, it's GKPT London in August. So it's like, yeah, so I'm going to blink and it's be, win be winter, you know? Absolutely. So, uh, uh, not, Rob, not Rob Adams says, you're there 18th of June. Where Where's going to be best for you to play a comp? Uh, pick. Yeah, I mean, pick, just... Pick a casino. Do you know what? The best thing for you is download a poker Atlas. Atlas. Yeah, or it's an app. And you can just go on there and find comps, or the I've actually retweeted it, so you can go on my Twitter. But Kenny, Kenny yeah, does Kenny a um, there's like a big spreadsheet that yeah. has literally all the festivals on for the yeah. whole of the summer. So we everyone sort of calls you can it retweet the World me Spirit. that and add my name to it actually because I want to check it out. Okay. The, um, yeah, the, everyone sort of says just while I'm stuck World in my series. bedroom, I'll just think of what oh, I could have been no. playing. <laughs> You've got to be <laughs> But yeah, it, everyone sort of call, calls it the World Series, but there are just so many yeah. summer festivals out in Vegas during the World Series. So it's there's if, if so like, much available. If you like yeah. playing downtown, the Golden Nugget has a 50 comps festival. No, I've never played downtown. Have you not? No, Golden I've never great. played. There's just always so much, so it, yes. it's saturated with festivals out, with uh, yeah. you know tournaments out there, and cash games as well. And mm. I love playing the cash games out there. Um, I make a point of doing more cash games out there than I probably would normally do yeah. here. You know, um, but yeah, you can just play like 24/7 in multiple locations out there so yeah um what's your twitter angle oh god you, i don't know you have to look don't you so you I use it that often you have to look um I, do you know what twitter have you changed it that many Twit times twitter's the one that i don't use as much it's yeah. swift success eight there you go capital s no i don't really yeah. matter anymore and my, I think that's the same on Instagram as well. I, I'm more into Instagram and the stories than I am yeah. anything else. So, um, but yeah, I'm either Katie Swift or Swift Success Eight on my nice social media. So yeah, Phil G's in Vegas on Tuesday.
First time. Any recommendations? Any recommendations for things to do outside of poker? Uh, depends how oh old my you God, are. Loads, depends yeah. how old you are. Depends if you can still go clubbing. Depends if you're taking any 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 shoes. No. Any dancing shoes? Do you know what? Again, there's, it's just saturated with things to do. You've got things like Top Golf if you want to have a good night out with an activity. So yeah. there's that out there. Um, you've got obviously all, all the, the beach, everywhere. The, you know, the um, beach clubs and the yeah. pool parties. You've got shows. You've got obviously the Grand Canyon and sort of the trips and excursions. Yeah. You've got things downtown as well. Um, a place called. Golden Spike, I think it's called. It's got like a big gaming. Oh, the, it's got the it's got the football Gi- foot yes. pool and stuff like it's that. It's got all it, the yeah. sort of the gi- what I call the giant games yeah. and um, activities. You've got um, a pinball hall of fame out there that's got just hundreds of pinball machines. That's um, oh, that's always a good one to go and sort of spend a few hours around. Um, You've got the. If you, if you, if you um, still go clubbing in, you, you've got a few mates going out with you. Omni is fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Hakkasan, they're the MGM. Yeah. They're the two that uh, are probably the best. You've got the. I um, can't remember the exact name of it, but it's basically like a neon sign graveyard for all of the different hotel and signs. Have you been oh, there? Right. No, no. That's, that's a good one. That's downtown as well. Um, definitely go on that. Um, quite interesting and it gives you like the history of Vegas as well and all the, you see all of the discontinued and unused signs but they're, they're massive you can yeah. imagine there is plenty to do in Vegas I did an escape room last, re- last year yeah I did an escape room the Blair Witch you got out then Blair Witch <laughs> escape room yeah <laughs> that was uh, I did it with my mum and sister basically Phil there. there's plenty to do yeah just and, and even just walking around the hotels and seeing mm. The hotels and the signs, uh, the sites in the hotels, you know. But back to the action because Jim has picked up Queens and I, I thought the A7 might do something. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fancy fold, that was isn't, good, it? Wow. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's what you can do when you're on the stream and you get quads. Do you know what? Like, drop me an inbox message, and I'll I'll send you some of my um, Vegas fun facts and anything. I'll, I'll and tell stuff you. Like. I'll tell you one thing to completely avoid: walking between the Strip and downtown. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Do not do it. Yeah, everywhere uh, on a map, things look like they're like next door to each other as well. Yeah. Um, but it's. Yeah, lots of lots of walking. Take sensible shoes. Don't take like heels or I don't know if you're male or female, but um, yes, yeah, yeah. sensible, comfortable shoes. And um, the best thing about the heat in in Vegas is it's like the zero humidity. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's there was a show as well. Joe Beavers and I went to this. Um, it was something like an, it's a, a show out there. It's an auction show. I can't remember what it's called, oh, but okay. they got a, that's like a shop and a filming section downtown as well. If you're into that sort of sports memorabilia and stuff. So I've told him what to do for about a month. He's probably going for three nights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't sleep. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. Pack in as much as you can. See Where are you staying? Enjoy it, Phil, anyway. Yeah. Enjoy so, it. Do you know what? Isn't it hard to not enjoy Vegas? Uh, yes. Has anyone not ever enjoyed Vegas? No. No. Even if it is $20 for beer. Yeah, it has gone. Yeah, take a lot of money. Christ. Or take your own game and win a lot of money. <laughs> That's that, option one. <laughs> All right, staying in a decent place, the Aria. Oh, lovely. Very yeah, nice. you'll love it. You'll love it. Super. Have a lovely time. So we're heading to the break. Thank you. And you. Good luck to you as well. We're on a break in about seven minutes' time and we'll come back at quarter past ten. Twenty minute break. New table will be with us. And we'll have one more giveaway. Might even do a Goliath seat. Because someone asked Jay a question. So it might even be for a Goliath seat. That's what I think. I want to be asked a question. Oh. I've never had a Katie's Look, I'm not, I, I'm, not, I'm not being funny. I'm not being funny. The, the only time you walked in while we're doing a Jay thing, you shouted the answer. Oh, I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
Oh, what's this? 347? <laughs> what's that? I completely <laughs> forgot that I could be heard on the mic. Uh, oh, God. No, they didn't pick up on it, though, did they? No. <laughs> <laughs> no one actually then typed it. You was like, right, we need to close it. We need to close <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, and we're on the break in about seven minutes' time and uh, for 20 minutes. So we're back at quarter past ten for the final session and we will be giving away a token. It might be the Goliath. I think we might give away a Goliath to get Jay on some kind of question. I nearly won one of his questions once, didn't I? I was one, one, off. one mark away, yeah. literally. And, and that would normally get you the, the winning bit, wouldn't it? No. Can't see all his cards, but he's raised, been raised in the cut off, so it could be wider range the position. This looks like Jim's. Jim's calling on the bottom with 8-9 suited, perfectly fine. Colin wakes up with the Queen 7 suited, small blind and big stack. Is he a chip leader? He's going to be one of them. 618k will be uh, hard not to think it is. We are heading to the break soon. We'll have a full chip count during the break. Can totally get behind this 3-bet, you know. He's applying the pressure with his big stack um, and probably punishing the fact that the button is now flatted behind. So, well, he's got a decision here. Mind you, no, actually, he's not chip leader because Jim's got the yeah, 700. Jim's, I've yeah. just seen Jim's stack as well. So, could, uh, they are definitely going to be two of the biggest stacks in the Yeah, game. for sure. But it's a perfect spot for Colin here because if Jim had um, <laughs> three bet, then obviously Colin's not going to do anything. But the fact that Jim's flatted and he's got the big stack, then it just opens the door for Colin to um, apply that pressure and pick up. He really like wants to see the flop as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, but he's, he just can't to the three bet. No. Um, we'll play because the three bet is the right sizing. Um, so, so nice. 4x sizing. So heading towards the break, just over six minutes to go until the break and then there's a 20 minute break and then back with a new table. Who will we get? That's some of the butchers. We're going to get Mike Kane, Stevie Key, Ludo's going to be on and Johnny Lemon. So they are going to be entertaining us in the next sesh. Ludo hanging on after having his ace king beaten by Colin earlier. He's on 100,000, is there, Ludo? Stevie Key battling on. Mike Kane, chip leader on that table on 570,000. So Mark's asked in the chat box about Vegas in the summer, is it for a massively plus EV or is it also for enjoyment? Yeah, it's, it's both, but it's, it is, I think you have to be very careful of game selection out there. I think yeah. it's very easy to get sort of wrapped up in um, certain games because of it being like a named game or, a, a, you know, I think just be careful of game selection. Um, some of the smaller events are kind of the real value out there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the sort of theory I go by. But yeah, and cash games out there. Yeah. 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 Ever been on a cash table out there where I thought, I need to get off this. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you're kind of like not wanting to get tired and not wanting to have to go 
um, you know, you want to be, be on them as long as you possibly can. And, um, yeah. So Ollie raises with the ace eight of hearts here, under the gun. Colin wakes up with a king queen off, so, and he's been applying quite a bit of pressure um, by three betting, but I can certainly see that happening. He's just decided to pull here. So, folds round to King Shook, who's got the suited King Eight. <coughs> and he calls as well. So we go three-handed, three-way to a flop. Oh, wow. Jack, wow, Jack, nine, six, all hearts. Yeah, I mean, Ollie just flops the nuts, but Colin with the king of hearts here certainly can um, get busy. Um, not just the hearts, but he's got the, you know, he's got the gut shot, he's got the two overs, he's got the heart, the second heart. Oh, he's, he, oh my gosh. He's now hit the straight, so, I mean... It's impossible for him to get away from this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a case of when the chips go in at what point, how big the bets. Um, definitely Ollie's going to have to start betting here, uh, building the pot. I know he's checked the flop, but I think now leading out and... You can make it small, we'll give out 15. Yeah, it, do, but it doesn't even need to make it t too tiny. It can just be... You know, a 17, 18k, something like that. Is that half pot? Oh, he's gone big, he's gone 32. Yeah. It's probably because now the board is so connected that um, it's what Colin's range is pre-flop to flatten. So now he's got all of the, all of that in his range on that board. He's got all the king queens, he's got all the king jacks, the queen jacks, the, you know, he's got, that 10 is the gin card for him to be able to make the bigger bet. And now it's been called. King Shook gets out of the way, pairs the jack on the river. Mm. Pot's now 109. I still think he's going to, you pot. know, but. Maybe more, he went 65% last time. I think the only jack that's going to be making the boat here is the Jack-10 and yeah. I don't think the Jack-10 plays the turn like that. I think the Jack-10 um, doesn't play the flop check back, doesn't just flat turn. So I think he's um, definitely going to... He could even rip River here for 2x pot, to be honest with you. I think he's, if he thinks he might get paid with like a King-Queen, a Jack-Queen, a Jack-King, Ace Jack, probably three bets pre, so that's to be out of the range, but it maybe goes 80k or something, like big. 85, there you go. Is, uh, don't see how Colin folds here. It will be one hell of a fold. Yeah, I think he just has to side fold this yeah, off. Uh, side side call it, I mean. Yeah, yeah they're not flush. Yeah. That was always going to be a big pop. Mm -hmm. And Ollie gets over 400,000. Yeah. One more hand. Still 87 big blinds for Colin as well. Like That was a critical pop for Ollie though after he lost um, the jacks to the quad sixes yeah. earlier. So he's right back on track. Um, oh. Managed to get paid because of checking the flop and betting bigger on the turn probably and oh, just you know hand. Really, this will be the last hand of the session to thanks to Katie Swift for spending it's an hour with us right. no worries nice one see thanks if there's any action me. see if there's any action and thanks to the chat box Yay. too let's see if there's any action on the last hand of the session we'll be back with a full chip count and uh, at the moment 26 players remain as it says in the top right hand corner it says, it look, it says there look, 26 out of 366 so everybody was not in the hand, we marked to Ace Jack with 119. So 20 bigs, too big to rip. So he raises min yeah, rates min to 12,000. So we're going to see a flop because Ollie's defending any two. 
And we've got to guess the any two. We're gonna guess the any two. <laughs> we're gonna guess. We're gonna guess King Eight. Yeah. That's been a flop. What is that? It's gone check, check. Ace nine nine flop for the heart's turn. Yeah, it's a nice check, by the right there. Yeah, it's mark. It's his. Four hearts on the turns, which is great. Well, check, bet, fold, and that is it. 20 minutes to wet the whistle. We'll see you in 20. One more giveaway tonight. Thanks to Katie Swift. Thank it. you, I and it. we will see Jay and myself back in 20 for the last session. See you then. He's going to raise Matt Davenport. Is he going to find the raise here? What a raise it would be as well, because Tom could still just have some He's one pair holdings. Matt Davenport, where's he found this shove? Oh, my word. And Tom's got two pair here. This could be the end of Matt. I'm guessing Matt's trying to target all the one pair holdings here of Tom. Like, Tom can check back some ASEX on the turn and go for value on the river, and Matt's trying to target this, but Tom's even higher up here with two pair. And he's going to be in the tank here, because what will go through Tom's head tower is, we do we beat value? I don't think we do. Maybe 9-7 might be in there for Matt, but is he going to check rip that? Obviously, Matt can still have some ace three, ace nine, ace seven, defending out the big blind. He might even float a 10-8 as well, wrap around this nine with back doors, so 10-8 of hearts, diamonds, and spades probably going to be in there. But the question we got to ask ourselves, is Matt Davenport ever going to do this as a bluff, and mm. what are the bluffs tower? Once Matt calls on an ace nine three, there's not many you can come up with. And because of that, I think Tom may let this one go. Simply because of the board texture on the flop. It's ace nine three rainbow. What on earth is Matt supposed to have here? He can have sets. He can have two pair. And what hand is he going to turn into a bluff? Is he going to rip some nine ten, some eight nine, blocking straights and two pairs? This is just a sick, sick jam from Matt Davenport early on on a big day three. And Tom Hall in the blender oh, here and is. lets it go. <laughs> Matt Davenport, you boss, and shows Tom as well. <laughs> Pocket eights. Yeah, yeah there is there now. a reason this guy is top of the National League. Matt Davenport putting on a show early on. Wow. He's not afraid, Tower. He's not afraid of busting. Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. Wowzers. It's 10 for Ian. Raises to 1.3. Under the gun, plus one. And Radu here with the ace jack and the hijack. Surprised if he went anywhere this deep with Ian. Probably more inclined to just flat this one versus the early position open. But obviously can mix in a free bet some of the time. And it looks like that's exactly what he's done. Three bets to 3.2. Uh, Julie, if you just give yourself a refresh, should be all right because uh, pitch is crystal clear here for us. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably just connection at home or wherever you may be. But if you give it a little refresh, hopefully it kicks back in. Yeah, give yourself a refresh. Jules, and let us know that it's all right. Because it's all right on both our laptops. Oh so my word. Oh, something here. Four bet to 7.7. .7. Wow, Ian. Oi, oi. Someone over the age of 50, four bet <laughs> bluffing tower. Whoa, well, I'm snap folding. I've, it's just you like, would be. Yeah, I would be. I'd be, be fold, I'd be folding ace queen here, suited as Radu. I'd it would already have hit the muck. But this is. I guess Ian just thinks Radu's at it too much, and to be honest with you, the ace 10 off tower, it's a really beautiful 4 bet bluff hand, and maybe Ian's been amongst the solvers uh, the last few months, you don't know, he might have been putting some work in off the tables, that could, be, <laughs> that could be the case, and he might have put in the low frequency 4 bet here with the ace 10 versus Radu, who's been fairly aggressive, and with the chips as well. Fair play to Ian, mixing it up, not just having the ace king plus in his four bet range, and uh, now action back on Radu here. And oh wow, oh wow, no is way he gonna five bet. bet? 
Has he picked up on That's something about here? K. Wow, Radu, Radu, Radu. What senses from him. He has to have picked up on something here, Tower. Read on the situation here from Radu is just so, so good. What a play. Five bet bluff tower. We just, no way. <laughs> Do you know what? If Ian six bets here with ace 10 tower, I'm, I'm, I'm done. For, I'm having an early finish. He's not doing it. He's, there's no way Ian <laughs> six bets here. How often do we even say the word six bet on stream? Oh, wow. But Radu five bet bluff in the ace jack. This is just... A level of the law between the, the two line. players. He's doing it no! again! <laughs> He's doing it again! That's amazing! Oh, oh my god! god. That's that's six foot Sold that for eight. me! Ten. <laughs> How'd you like them apples? Sold that! A <laughs> 10 six bet rips it in for 100 big blinds. Oh my word! Ian is my new hero tower. <laughs> I want this man to win the comp. Oh my word. Six bet rip with the ace 10, folding the ace jack out. Where has Ian found that move from? Oh my word. How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> I've waited all day for something and it's just happened. Oh my <laughs> word. Ian. Uh. Do you know what? Do you know what? I, I'd be sat at the table. I was sat at the table there. And Ian said to me I didn't have aces there. I, I would have had a lot of money with him that he had aces in that spot. A lot, a lot of money. But wow, <laughs> wow, wow. Fair play to the man. A six bet rip. Well. Wow. <laughs>
yes, could feasibly come in with the old Jack 8, yes she does, which will bring in the small big blind. Yeah, Simon not folding this one, Super King getting this price, closing the action in, it goes four way to the flop. Yep. Ryan with the betting lead. Oh, we flop a set. Yeah, and Ryan's flopped the straight flush draw tower, so this is action Ooh. time. Ryan with the 8-6 of diamonds on an ace high board. Great flop for us whilst once opening in the cutoff. Not only have we flopped the straight flush draw in terms of range, going to be better for us. Uh, and Harry here with his set of fives, like it. Just going to flatten position. Don't want to set off any alarm bells if Ryan's got a hand like ace-king, ace-queen. We've got that drawing dead to runners. Quadzillas, baby! Quadzilla, baby! Woo woo! Am I getting the chips off Ryan? Woo woo! Oh, just yeah. I'll look down again. Yep, they're definitely two fives here. Oh, there's two fives on the board. <laughs> it's a Ryan firing That's four again. fives. Maybe just trying to fold out some weak ace X, some suited ace X that Harry can have here. Uh, as well as that 9x is going to have a hard time calling a double barrel and obviously Harry flattening in position. Going to try and get the max on the river with so a shot. So there's one out. Seven of diamonds is straight flat. Oh, oh, he's oh, only oh, gone and done it. No, what's this dealer done? Where's the bad beat jackpot oh. in the tournament? No way. £245,000. That is incredible. I've never seen this tower on stream. Quads over straight flush. This is a setup. Of all set up. Oh! <laughs> no oh, way. Oh, wait. Harry can't oh, wait to course. turn him over. No way. Quads oh, my straight God. Flush. Oh, Look oh. at the table. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, we'll never see that again. Lodor says, I never take pizzas at poker, Tim. I'm we, taking a picture. We will never <laughs> see that again on stream to get that hand here on stream. Look at the cameras. They're all out. Oh my, oh my god. god. Quads over straight flush on stream. Somebody go and get Jim. Ask him if they have a bad beat jackpot for the yeah, for imagine the, for that the on the Imagine that on the cash table. Oh, that is going to be... <laughs> wow. Wow. Right, that's the end of the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. We'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my days. Wow, wow, wow. Just speechless. How wow. does that even happen? <laughs> All the kid says, get me a pint. <laughs> <coughs> oh my days. Wow. <laughs> I just oh. can't believe it. Wowzers, wowzers. Oh, stuff we live for on stream, it's something we'll probably never ever see again over the years. The chances of that happen are astronomical and to actually get it on our featured table. How'd you, how'd you go out? Oh yeah, add quads. <laughs> no, no good. And if there's a story to tell, that is a story for the ages. I don't even mind listening to that one. We've got day one G tomorrow, which is now an ordinary flight, and then the turbo kicks off at 6 p.m. And then Saturday for day two, get down to about <laughs> 60 players, and then the you're, final on the Sunday. You're spot on, Donna. You are spot on too many. That's how many days. <laughs> make you right. <laughs> Here's five for Danny in the big. After an initial raise from yeah. Keith in C number one. A yeah, nice free bet spot, I think, Tower here. We've got Keith covered, Keith's third in chips. He's not really going to want to get involved too much. Um, definitely one we could be mixing in a free bet here as Dan Gormley. And on FTs, um, we don't have to go as big as usual with a normal 4X size because of ICM. We can choose like 3X, 3.5X here as Dan to so make it somewhere around 7, 800K. That's what I'd like to see, and he is going to take the spot tower. Very nice from Dan. Just recognising the situation and recognising where Keith is in chips and how he has to play tighter here because we have him covered. So this should do the trick a lot of the time. Uh, back over to Keith here, and personally, could go either way. Um, I think Keith 
is probably more tight to let this one go. Oh, he's just going to quickly call tower here. So Keith, happy to go float post flop here with the king jack. Off to the flop, another pot brewing. Queen two three. Yeah, so this is a big pot tower already. 1.6 milli in the middle here. And uh, Danny does flop a wheel draw here with the ace five. So probably one we're probably going to continue small. Uh, 400k, 500k, something like that. Somewhere between the quarter pot and third remit is the size I'd like to see here from Dan. As always in these free bet situations, can go a lot smaller. So it does choose the 350 sizing. Goes even smaller than the 400. So south of quarter, between fifth and quarter pot from Dan Gormley and uh, Keith here with the King Jacks. Jack of Diamonds working, getting this price. Is he thinking about pulling out the float with this candidate? It's probably, uh, if we are going to float the King Jack, it's probably one of the better combinations we can have. King of Spades, Jack of Diamonds. Uh, let's see what Keith does. Like folding would be fine here as well. Um, just because tangling with Danny, who's got us covered, could put us in a world of hurt. It would be a disaster for us to come eight from this FT when we go in with the chip lead. But big pot brewing here on the FT, guys. Oh, oh and there's the call from Keith. He does pull out the float. And pot has got 2.3 a million here, working with 1.25 SPR behind. Effective stack. Of Kidding. Back. We are back for the final session. Two hours of poker to go. Look at this tower. There is over half the stacks with less than 20 big blinds. Okay. So uh, I think this is going to be the session. It usually after the bubble goes bop, 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 bop. Yeah. And then it slows down, but it's pretty slow. Yeah. Um, Phil Yule still chip in at 880,000. Jim McLean. Did he sing bye bye Miss American Pie? That, that was Don. Oh, that's yeah. his brother Don. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So that song was about uh, drinking, Buddy Holly. Yeah, you. Yeah, that's, that's who that song was about. Yeah, you. Uh, we've got a giveaway as How well. How did you know that? Uh, it's just one of them stupid. One of your favourite songs that your mum was singing. Is that what it is? I just, I just know. Someone said it once, and it's one of them things. You know, someone says like a little fact that always sticks with you. Oh. You have them little ones in there. I can tell you another Don McLean song, and I can tell you any of them are about other than that one. 
Uh, but good feature table we've got for the session, guys. We'll run you through the players. Jeff Kearney in one, Stevie K in two, Michael Kane in three, Jamie Ward in four, Michael Brown in six, Ludo in eight, and John Lemon is in the nine seat. I was just speaking... Uh, Ludo straight in. Here's King. We'll cover this first. Ludo shoving 4-14. Yeah, any action whatsoever. I was uh, speaking to Matt Erdley and Johnny Kelly while I was on my little extended break. Yep. Uh, they're telling me about the man in seat five, Michael. Uh, made a pretty boss hero call. Uh, blind on blind versus Chris Williams. King, uh, he, he limps Queen Jack off with the Queen of Clubs. I've just heard this hand, I may not get a spot on. Uh, Chris Williams makes it three and a half X. Michael calls, it comes King, seven, deuce, all clubs. Uh, check, bet 33% call. Uh, turn, come an ace, offsuit ace. Mm -hmm. Check, bet, call, can't remember the size on the turn. I think river paired, deuce. And Chris Williams shoved all in for a 150% pot. And Michael hero with Queen High and was right for a 170 big blind pot. Wow. So he called down the free barrel with Queen High versus Chris Williams correctly and won a monster. So I just found out about that hand from one of the outer tables. That is some cool. Michael opens under the gun with a 10-9 suit and then it's Michael Kane's so turn to wake up with Ace King. Which is going to be happy to free bet get this in. So this is Michael stack size, 64k, nice and big, what we like to see, 4x from the blinds. Let's get it through. Better get some paper ready, Tower. We got some paper. Mm. This? What did you have on the game? Queens. If you had 9-10, you're in a bad spot. 10s? That's pretty grim with 10s, to be fair. Yeah. 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 Mind doing the IFC. Should we do it at quarter two? Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Go on, one time to come back in. Yeah. Twenty minutes will be the giveaway. We've got a stack table here, so we're yeah. going to enjoy this. Uh, I have had a message from the online team saying they are ninety-nine percent going to be up and running tomorrow. It can't be down on a Sunday. No, not not a poker site. Down on a Sunday. No. Yeah, even got some jacks. Jamie here, just the Kings. The expectation is we'll be back online tomorrow. In the current downtime is to prevent any customers having negative experiences due to issues on the platform. And hopefully the stability gets better and better and the guys will be back. So Jamie just goes for the race here with the Kings. Six players left. Maybe I should have had a good answer more. It's not how it works, though. It's not how it works, unfortunately. Bob. It is? Bob. It is. You don't need to just play Suited for Michael here, off a 20. I'm gonna complete hit, and Ludo with the pocket fours, gonna be 
the shove here, I think, for Ludo Tower. Yeah. I think there's no questions asked about this one. He's going to be getting called. Michael Queen Jack suited. Too good to be folding. There's the snap. And Rob is it. Ludo's at risk. <laughs> Still good. We're now feeling tense. And now nines and sixes. How many outs would you like? Oh, oh too oh. many. That's how many. The brick of the two. Ludo is going to double. That's going to leave Michael really short. So he doubles. Just going to get a full stack and a full chip count from Ludo. It looks like 142. Yep, 142, and straight away, we're going to head to the outer table, because Robbie Bull has got all his chips in the middle. We've not seen the action, but the, the board is 9-5, King-4-2, and he tables the boots, and it's against top pair on the board, King-Jack. So there's been a call. That's a huge shot on the river as well. And that's off Phil as well, in C2. We're going to have a new chip leader tower. Robbie Bull. Two hundred and seventy thousand extra. So that's half a mil plus the pot. And that could be a new chip leader. It is a new chip leader. Robbie Bull. Massive pot. Massive, massive pot. So still on twenty six. Is in the big blind, Jamie with the freeze and Michael Kane with the best pair pocket eights. It looks like a three on the flop. This lighting can be deceiving sometimes from this angle, but there yeah, is a three on the flop. We're going to struggle to get any action as Jamie should get one streak from the twos of Johnny actually when Michael's still going to see that here on the ace high board it's going to be good for range and should only be playing flat here as Jamie like if Michael has like a king queen king jack all this type of stuff drawing nigh on dead even the ace king ace queen ace jack drawing nigh on dead so want to keep bluffs in want to keep hands like the ace king ace queen in not setting off alarm bells and they're drawing so slim in terms of equity Four and a half turn. Deuces would have got there. And the deuces would have had a really nice turn. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't overcall there, Tower. He was getting 7 to 1 on a call with a gut shot and a pair. So, surprised that we didn't see the overcall from Johnny for only 12k, one and a half big blinds, but I just let it go. And now Jamie firing on this four turn. Over set. Yeah, me too, Ben. Me too. Okay, now it gets out of the way. Realises it's so hard to ever be in front. So the last session is upon us, 26 left. Yep. 
any eliminations. I'll give you the names, we'll try and capture the footage. Obviously PK doing one more, more than one job. Any treble today? Ask Colin Porter. I don't call him. Uh, it was the. It was. I, I. I just went with it. I trusted Tower. I went with it, and I put the treble on. I went Scottish. And then after I put the treble on, I done a little bit of research about one of the teams that he put in the treble. Dundee were playing Ross County. They played Ross County two weeks ago and lost four nil. And for some reason, Tower had Dundee in the treble. Yeah. 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 Ross County's away form is terrible. The reverse, oh, did the reverse treble come in today, didn't it? We got none up. Uh, no, because Aberdeen drew. Ah. So that would have let us down anyway. It went nil-nil. See, it's what you get for only having like eight matches to choose from and two of them being Scottish. I'm not very good with Scottish football, as you can tell. They go on the button, opens the 7-5 off, and Jeff, 9-6 suited in the big. Should be defended. Yes, Queen seven two diamonds. Okay, just going to be Ludo's pot here. Just expect check that fold. Probably somewhere around fifteen k ish, fourteen fifteen k for thereabouts. Going to go quarter. Either way, regardless of size, I'm just going to see a fold from the 9 6. Yep, Sabri Bus, <laughs> you're spot on. Towers treble officially added to reasons for cost of living crisis. Anyway, I quit till yeah. next season. And what do you mean you had no chance today? It's just only Scottish football. Lee puts, and you're good at English football? <laughs> you usually get them up when there's no, no Scottish games? Thanks, Lee. Thanks for the support. We need to have a protest, guys, all of us. That's it. I'll, I'll tell you what, I won't do one next month. <laughs> all right? <laughs> okay? Oh, what, I, won't not, do, uh, I won't do one in Luton. All right. All right. All right. The, the, there will not be one in Luton. Yeah, because the season's over. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. Yeah, yeah. Funny that. I didn't know that. <laughs> Knowing you, we'll probably be betting on the Brazilian third division <laughs> in June. Well, Simon does. We might as well join in. Ace four of hearts and Michael Kane raises to 16k, and uh, Stevie K here with the ace jack suited off of 15. Even versus gun, I think this is too strong to not move in, but he is going to defend. Obviously, it is a gun open, but Michael Kane, chip leader at the table, going to be opening a wider range than most from under the gun. I might have just taken this ace jack as Stevie and set it into the middle, but flatting is going to work out better on this occasion. Yeah, top bear, top kick in for Stevie Key. I expect Michael Kane to be C bet in this one with one heart on board here. Backdoor Broadway overcard. Seems like a nice candidate here versus Big Blind. And goes for quarter. an interesting one for Stevie whether to potentially check raise or just play flat and he has gone for the check raise here with the ace jack blocking aces only really worried about kings and queens still potential to get value from some worse jack x or some potential suited 10x that are non-believers like Michael Kane with just ace high no draw has to let his hand go mm -hmm. Stevie K gets a little additional 11k than I would have got there 
with the Ace Jack of Diamonds playing the flat free. Aussie football will be on. There you are, Peter King. Mm. Okay. We can have a golf treble. Ow. Just do like three holes or something. You can back that, you know. Like, like you can back a player yeah. to get a birdie on X hole. No a, a par on this hole and an X hole and like a bogey on that hole. You should do a treble. That's what you should do. You can't do that. Yes, you can. Yeah. You can. You wow. Definitely. Well, you can on uh, another. I don't know if you can on Grosvenor Sport, but I know on some other providers you can. Wow. Bet on what the player will score that hole. Like birdie, par. Wow. Did not know that. I'm just showing the degenerate sea here, Tower. <laughs> Mikey B's all in. Finish 24. 9 6 of diamonds for Michael Kent. Does he survive? Face King. <laughs> you just don't win these, Tower. You just don't win. You've actually got a legitimate hand off yeah. this such a tiny stack and you get caught by any two, and they're two live guards. Yeah. Does get a good flop. There are some really nice backdoors for the 9 6 of diamonds, but it's a good start for Mike. And it's a good turn. So, fading 9 6s and 5s. And it's a 6, a river again. It's been a brutal one today. Another one bites the dust as Bouncy comes to the table. There's Michael Howard. Wow, lost Michael. Is, is that Michael Howard? Michael Brown. Michael that Brown. is why. Michael Brown is gone. Michael Brown. It says there's 26 left, so that'll be 25th. I thought Bouncy had heaps then, but he's only got about 100k. All right. Michael Brown, but just before then, literally at the same time, one on each table by the looks of that. Alan Jacobson finished in 26th. In 25th was King Shook Gosh. King Shook Twos versus Colin Gillen's Ace King. Flopped obviously an ace for Colin. That's how he's been running. And then we just lost Michael Brown in 24th for 2,480. Which means there's 23 left. That will update in the top right very shortly. Because Michael Brown just eliminated in 24th, leaving 23 left, just like that. Queen I flop, Queen five Jack. Top pair for Ludo. Probably happy to continue. The Queen ten may have a small frequency check with top pair, but just going to be firing. Goes eighteen, eighteen into forty-four, so just south of forty percent from Ludo. Good job he didn't bet on how many birdies and pars tower out at Glen Eagles. He either lost a fortune. I lose a fortune every way, every Saturday I'm live streaming Tim. <laughs> and you know what, if you manage to be off one day, which you never will be, and you were watching the live stream on a Saturday, you'd still wait for two o'clock to listen to it and then put I, it on. I probably would, you're right. <laughs> Because it's one of them things, it's like, I don't do the lottery, but I know a lot of people that do do the lottery, and they're like, you can't stop doing the lottery, because the week you stop, your numbers will come in. Only so, if you have the same numbers, yeah. So, I'm the same with Towers Treble now, and now I've started it, I can't stop it. Because I know the week I have off, suddenly, Dundee United are thumping Ross County 6-1. <laughs> I went out in 43 at Glen Eagles, 
And I came back in 42. And I had an eight on my card. Yeah, an eight on my card. I, which I don't do. I always have eights on my card. I don't do eights. I'm chuffed if I get an eight for one or a par eight, five. I had an eight on my card. On a par five. I'm usually giving it the. <laughs> got a point on a par five. Yeah. Eight for one. Yeah, I was three off the tee. The Michael Kane suited Jack on the button opens to 16k and Jamie Flatt in the suited ace eight here in the small blind. Balsy here. John? Who's John? 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 G uh, John? John Bowsfield. Oh, wait, I've, I've never caught, I've, I don't think I've ever said, you're right, John. I always go, you're right, Bowsy. I don't oh, think yeah. I've ever caught, it's like you. I never, I've never called you Phil. I always call you Tower. John. I need to change that to Bowsy. <laughs> uh, my handicap, I play off nine. 9.0. Is my official. I think you're in the wrong chat, Leo. Hello, Mr. Simon. Hello. Hello, you man. How's that? How's it going in there? All nice and nice. Good nice and fresh. You fancy opening doors? Five minutes. Yeah. Please. No, I've got, I've got the perfect thing for you. The door's yeah. opening. No, that's the perfect. No, that's the perfect thing. No fresh air. Leo says he must be in the wrong stream. He goes, KC didn't punch his face. Fournier was knocked out himself. That's some stupid fake boxing I've seen so far in my life. He's watching the wrong stream, surely. Is there a boxing match going on, Tower? Between KC and uh, Fournier? That's all right. That's quite nice. It's a nice fan. Lovely. Cheers, Simon. Oh, Jay's got a fan, you see. There we go. The mod's obviously not watching the live stream outside. Not allowed to smoke in the house. <laughs> This is an interesting one, Tower. We've got both players with flush draws here. Mm -hmm. Michael Kane, no other draw with his. Jamie up and down to go with his ace eight suited. Love the double barrel here. Oh no, he hasn't double barreled. Michael's open, Jamie's flatted small, and now Jamie's led on this six of hearts turn. With the ace eight suited. Picking up heaps of equity and We'll have like the 8-9 suited from the small blind here. But this is actually quite a funny one, Tower, because like, yes, Michael Kane's the opener, but he's actually going to have all 16 of 9-8, whereas Jamie's actually going to have only four combos of 9-8 here in terms of nut advantage, uh, which is quite an interesting one. So I actually think this is actually probably a slightly better board for Michael Kane's button opening range rather than... Jamie's flat range in the small, but with just Jack Height and the flush draw, chooses to let it go. Faced with a large sizing on the turn, nice lead there from Jamie. KSI is boxing. Oh, great. Uh, says we're down to 22 because Andy Hawkins is out. Andy Hawkins, £2,480. Yeah, yeah, 
Jeff with the ladies. Mm. What am I going to say, Tower? Find the flat. Oh. Jeff's open shoved all in for 140k with the Queens. Hundred and forty thousand. Well, the graphics have just changed. Oh wow, it's even more. Oh my word. Twenty-one bigs. Too many. Way too many. To too many. Like we can open queens off of like thirteen here yeah. from this position. Whoa! And like, like, I thought that was an olive. And, and and the thing is now, like Jamie with the ace jack here. Jeff's not doing this with ace ten. He's not doing this with any ace x that we have dominated here as Jamie. So the best case scenario for us is that we get in a flip situation. However, if Jeff opened here, like Jamie might have gone for the free bet call with the ace jack of hearts, but now he actually has a chance to let his hand go because of such a hefty shove from Jeff. Just open the queens, get value from worse. Only a small variety of hands are gonna be able to call our 21 big blind shove, open shove from plus one. Like I'm probably not even gonna be calling eights here. Nines yep. probably on the line, but just want to be opening 21 big blinds. Queens is a monster. Get value from the big blind, get value from other players. Very good fall from Jamie. Still, ace jack suited, letting it go, but could have won a much bigger pot there. But then you don't know the situations, Tower. You don't know whether people are in for cheap with a satellite you don't know whether they're taking a shot and they want to just try and take the blinds and ante these are the things we don't know in the booth like you can talk about what you're supposed to do but when people are sat there things do change sometimes emotions you can see what you're playing for 80k you know you're only three tables out it can cause you to make decisions that you wouldn't usually make earlier on in the tournament Michael with the ace eight raises in the hijack. You would make a good detective tower. Uh, so guys, we are gonna do the giveaway after this hand. Are we? It's just gone quarter two. I was waiting for Mick the Mock to get back from his smoke. We need a mod for the comp. Oh, we do. He just said he's popping out for five minutes. We do. King I flop, King seven four. So you're gonna do a giveaway off this hand guys. We will give you till eleven PM to get your answers in. We will obviously cover the action this deep. If there is something going on, we will cover it. So him. He's, he's got his specs on. He's on Google. Googling what's the most difficult question to ask someone. Uh, but How here we many go, Google guys. searches has Tower done <laughs> since darting J and Tower thinks? <laughs> A lot. Uh, so, guys, if you are new to the stream, I know it gets boring for most of you, but we do need to run everyone down the rules. Yeah. I'm going to ask Tower a question. He's actually, he's going to ask me a question. I'm going to write it on this piece of paper in front of me. I need that pen. Thank you. you. pen. Uh, closest to my answer is going to win themselves a Goliath seat for the main event in August. So this one's for a Goliath seat, so worth £150 this one. No double guesses. If I see anyone guesses more than once, you will be disqualified and we can check. And don't so guess don't, so until don't we tell you to <laughs> while he's thinking. And that is it. So and if so anybody gets it spot on, you're guaranteed to win Goliath when you win the ticket. Oh, is that how it works? That's how it works. Okay, there we go. That's exactly how it works. So... Winning Scotland. Yep. Oh, I know this one. 2,532 animals in Edinburgh Zoo. Hey, well done. I know this one. 
can't ask that again. Unbelievable. <laughs> How many species? Is it? 177. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> My favourite Scottish band. Proclaimers. Yes! How do you remember that? It's the only one I know. <laughs> it's the only Scottish band I know. Well, I wake up. Not a bit Scottish oh. national anthem. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Don't worry, boy. I'm, I'm, you don't even need to ask me the question. I've already got it. It ought to be. It ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> is it that? Is How it? many males? Did, oh no, no, I can't <laughs> ask that. I can't ask that. I need a new bit of paper. I've my, got a new bit. Of my favourite band. I can't believe you got that. <laughs> Five hundred. In all the years they've been together, proclaimers, which yes. is since 1985. Yep. How many weeks in the top 40 have they spent? The amount of questions you charts. ask on the bloody top 40 is incredible. How many weeks have they this spent? It's the first one this year. No, no it's not. You it, have. No, 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 no. It's, it's not relevant the first one to. This year. They're, they're both from Edinburgh because they both were born in Leith, which okay. is around the corner. Oh, I don't know. So, how, how many weeks in the charts all over their career, yeah? In, in the singles charts. In yeah. the singles charts. Yes. And I'll give you. I'll give you the top 40 and not the top 75 okay which is all right and don't forget queen had 1800 I'm just saying uh that was the that's that that's the best obviously so how many how many weeks in the charts in the single charts within the top 40 has the proclaimers spent in all their years i'm in are you in i'm in right ladies and gentlemen you have got five minutes for the answer and then we're going to reveal the right answer and then We'll reveal Jay's answer a couple of minutes after that. Off you go, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck, everyone. How many weeks does Jay think the Proclaimers have spent in the top 40 singles charts? When I wake up, when I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who wakes up next to you. We will still cover the action, guys, because I know indeed. we are deep in We're a GUK PC. 22 PT. players. This is for a Goliath seat live. Boom. Straight into playing Goliath. Straight in. The question is, how many weeks does Jay thinks the Proclaimers have spent in the top 40 singles charts in their entire career? When I wake up, ch -ch -ch, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's raising it to you. Here you go, 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 here Interesting one. You know, Steve's got the straight. Nearly. Nearly, yeah, I was about to say, what straight? Well, well, Four, well, five, I, seven, eight, nine. No, I thought it was six. I thought it was six. <laughs> Got this, is, this is an interesting one, so I'm just looking at the hand here. Oh, he's going to fold, but obviously once we lead there as Jeff, repping probably two pair plus. Check calling flop. I guess we can have some 10-9, 10-8, 7-10, this type of thing, but you never know. Stevie just lets the pair go. Keep them coming, guys. You've got six minutes. Keep them coming. One guess per person. No more guesses other than one. Make it a good one. You can Google it if you want to. Because I'll give you the right answer in two minutes' time. How many weeks? Did the Proclaimers spend in the singles charts in total, the top 40? How many does Jay think? Uh, Ronald Paxton, you put exclamation mark, is that meant to be a one? 
You put exclamation mark 97. Is that meant to be a one, I'm guessing? <laughs> Where's the exclamation mark on the ma on the uh, keyboard? So is it 97 you're guessing or is it 197? You can type in again. I won't disqualify you because obviously... Oh, would you like... Wait, wait, who is it? Ronald Paxton. He's put exclamation mark 97. Oh, he has put 197. Thank you. Nice one. Exclamation mark is not a number. Is that why you said it? Yeah, that's why I said it. I thought it was meant to be 197. I just thought I'd clarify just in case like it was it. meant to be 97. Like it. Yes, I did London call in. Uh, I'll come back to that because we got an all in and a call. PK's out there with the camera and oh, it's Wee Mark. Wee, ooh, wee Mark the Weed. Is he going to be do good? He needs a three. Or is he going to do bad? A five or a club. This has just become a coin flip. Wow. Three, five, club. Rick on the turn. So Mark needing to hit and doesn't. Doesn't. Oh, what a good effort, though. What a great effort. Cashers Energy UKPT does our mark. Our wee mark. £2,790. What a good effort. We'll get back to the table and see Ludo opening the Ace Freer Clubs. Well done. And we'll give the correct answer away after this hand and we'll do my answer. Probably just past 11. The Bronx Bombers in town. How are we doing, Scott? How are we doing, Scott? Ludo, Michael Kane on the feature, along with Colin in the mix as well. Brilliant. Uh, London calling, going back to that. Yes, I watched the stream and I fell asleep probably about half five in the morning whilst the stream was on. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I saw the King Ten of Diamonds hand live. I didn't see, I saw it this morning, I didn't see the Aces versus 6-5 suited live, but I watched that this morning, but I saw the King 10 of Diamonds hand live, I saw the 5-4 versus 9-10 live as well, when mm -hmm. it got an 8 on the turn, but yeah, it was a great stream, really enjoyed it. Next to you, when I rock in here, where I know I'm gonna be. Well done, Marty Weed. What a great effort that is. Yeah, what is going on here? Jamie just free betting the Jack 4 suited to such a tiny sizing as well 43k. This is a real strange one, Tower, but gets Ludo off of the Ace 3 of Clubs. Jack 4 of Diamonds gets the job done, and off we go to an outer table again because this go. time. It's Michael Howard who is at risk with the pocket nines, pocket nines. versus the ace queen. Pocket nines for Mike. Queen on the flop for the nines. He needs one of the two nines that's in the deck. He needs a nine. The tide banks are in the middle, and he is out the door. Two thousand seven hundred and ninety pounds. Well played, Mr. Michael Howard. Well played indeed. So, Tower. Yes. Would you like to give us the correct answer? Well. Well. The Proclaimers. The unofficial Scottish national anthem. When I wake up. Well, I know I'm going to be... Have spent a total of 38 weeks in the top 40 singles charts. All their career. 38. I was amazed. Amazed. But that's not what I want to know. It's what's on this piece of paper. you got two minutes maximum. 
38 weeks in the top 40 charts, that was it. It's not many, is it? No. To still be on tour and still playing and still singing and still going on. 38 weeks is the correct answer. But that's not what we need. Absolutely unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. And uh, no graphics this hand. Aces. There we go. We have the boots for Michael. Yeah, and this is just so unfortunate for Stevie. Yeah. It, it, perfect shot for us. We're fist pumping, Tal. We're loving life yeah. with Ace Jack here. And uh, Michael Kane is sitting here with the boots. And we'll be going on the, in on the flop no matter what. King, Queen, Six, or Diamond Board. Neither player with a diamond. Uh, there's a call from Michael Kane. And Stevie going to need to find a 10, but he'll be happy. Well, up against the Aces. we now got direct outs to get there. Also got running diamonds for a chop. And seems like there's some action on the outer as well, Tao. So we will go there after this all-in and call. Yep. Seven of hearts on the turn. No good for Stevie. Going to need a 10. A 10 only. And it's not. It's a case ace. And straight over to the outer table. As we lose Stevie there. This is what was happening on the outer. Oh, we got here. Seven. It's against Blythe <coughs> Peterson's King Queen. King Queen for Blythe. And no help with the King Queen. on the run out for Blythe, so everyone flying out the field. Blythe Peterson out in 20th, Stevie K actually busting a couple of seconds after him. There was literally a few seconds in that, so Blythe Peterson goes down as 20th and Stevie K down as 19th. So we are down to 18 players just like that tower. Wowzers, and uh, wowzers, wowzers. we will have one more hand and then we will reveal the winner of the giveaway. So, fast and furious. Fast and furious. We are on. 18, as it says in the top right hand corner. 18. There's a redraw at 16. We're going to do the answer straight after this. Uh, there, yep. there were nobody left soon. <laughs> we'll do the answer after this hand, guys. Yes. Sorry, there was just all ins coming from every angle. So You've uh, got 30 seconds to get your guests in and then make the mods. going to close it. 30 seconds. Uh, the question was, how many weeks were the proclaimers in the single charts for the UK top 40? How correct. many weeks were they in the singles charts the for? The correct answer was 38. And Jay's guess is the one you need to get the closest to for a Goliath seat. Twenty seconds. Here we go. The final twenty seconds is on the march. Should we count twenty seconds? No. When I wake up, <laughs> where well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a man of ways to make to you ten nine eight. When I go in. Hey, no one's gonna be in the way of doing it to you. Five, four, three, two, and a rain. Hey, no one's gonna be in the way of doing it to you. And make the mark. Close the comp, please. Liam S., the last guest, Paul Fletch, Arjun the Great, Leo, I mean, guesses as well. Mick Retty, Mike, there we go. Close the comp. There we go. You've closed the comp. Thank you very much. Anybody underneath what says the numbers have to make the modest close the comp. That is it. Done. So, the correct answer, unbelievably, was 38. I was amazed it was only 38. But, that's not what I wanted to know. So, Jay, you were thinking... Uh, I knew it was a big song, 500 miles. I thought I thought that would be in the charts for probably at least a year in the top 40. Like probably pro in in the top 40, like it could be 32nd, 34th, 35th, 36th. So I I, I put I put 52 down for that. And then over there, long career. I thought there might be them odd songs. I don't know any of them that flew in and out. I'm on my way. That for one. Shrek. That one. 
when, when the donkey at the end singing I'm on my way. Uh, so over over 20 years, it's uh, it's uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of weeks, isn't it? So I just went for this. I'm not I'm not even going to say. Guys, there weren't really too much logic in it. There I didn't really go. know much. But. 194 he went for. And, and, unbelievably, the winner, the winner, exclamation mark. Uh, so, we, we did actually have a winner. Ronald Paxton was the winner. But because he guessed twice, he guessed exclamation mark 97. And I'm only joking, Ronald. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only Ooh, joking. Oh, you tease. <laughs> you tease. <laughs> Ronald Paxton, you are the winner of a Goliath seat. Uh, we will see you in August for the Goliath million pound prize pool. We'll probably get for that one. Uh, I need two things for you. I need your full name and I need your date of birth. Uh, because it is for a live tournament put those in the chat box and uh, we will get that ticket to your account and then yep. you will turn up and you will be playing the Goliath this year congratulations I thought people might figure it out because usually if people do typos and stuff to our, yep. if it's well off yeah. I just ignore it. I don't say a thing. Yeah. But then to Ronald, because I saw that, I thought, oh no, if he's meant to put 197, yeah. he's he's in. And I thought people in the chat might might catch on and start guessing 196, 195, 198, but no one did. Exactly. No one did. Well done for a £150 Goliath token. Fantastic. Well done. Don't take a seat, mate. Draw a beer or anything, mate. I'm good, thank you. Yeah. How is it? Tell it, check it in, mate, then. If it's dead. <laughs> How do you give me somebody else a fan? It's so hot in this room and it's dead. I'm not having that. Ladies and gentlemen, you can come in. Here he is, Mr. Daniel Aidlaw. Yep. Uh, brutal hand earlier on the stream. Happens. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Would have been a nice one. You, but ju you jumped in the 500? Jumped in the 500. Bags, 240, so. Yep, I mean, it's, pretty, it's a pretty low morale tournament, honestly, because everyone that's in that is just busted the main, they're feeling sorry for themselves, it's, I think it, everyone's just annoyed that they're not still in the main, really, yeah. at that point. Yeah, is that why it's called the Star of Brahman Cup? Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody just drinks it. <laughs> uh, the, uh, British citizen, the correct answer was 38, yes, but that was not the answer we wanted, we wanted Jay's answer, which is why you can't Google it. Uh, it's what Jay's answer was and not the correct answer. The correct answer was 38. It was what Jay wrote down and he thought there was 194. And that's the guess we need to be closest to. So, well done. Th thanks, Ron. We've got your date of birth, we've got your name, and we'll write it down on his spreadsheet and we'll get it done. Well done, sir. And congratulations. This for a Goliath. Uh, that, was Goliath for, that was for the Goliath seat. How, oh. many, how many weeks on the charts has the Proclaimers been on in the top 40 singles chart? No Do you know who the Proclaimers are? Um, You'll know five, one song. Yeah, five, five, miles, 500 yeah, five miles. miles that's yeah. it. <coughs> yes, I know that one, but that's yeah. about it. Well, they're still going 40 years on. Wow. And they've spent 38 weeks on the charts. <laughs> <laughs> so. Has Ludo won a GUKPT before? Uh, second two years ago here. Yeah. To Madge. Mm -hmm. uh, that's as close as he's got. But he's been hanging on all day. All day. He had a big yeah. one. He had a big one against Colin Gillen as well. <clears throat> Robbie's still in, so rooting for him. Um. Hinge, Jamie Walden, Ludo. Good names on this feature. Here. Yeah, we're down to the final 18. There's going to be some good names in this event. Mm. There really are. Michael's thinking about the peel here, my guess is. Um, probably just want to, if we're three betting, we probably just want to use things with blockers generally. Um, hands with an ace king, and yeah. I'm fine with the fold this stage of the tournament. <coughs> I can't 
We can't really defend as wide as we usually would uh, when we get to this stage. <laughs> Carl Daniels has just had a guess in the comp that shot 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, because he's done a Diane and he's watching 15 minutes on <laughs> He paused it, going to get himself a drink of coffee, started watching it again, and has realised that the quiz was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> it happens, Carl. It happens. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Yeah, cool. fair few big names still at Bowsy still in, uh, Tim Chung still in, Colin Gillen, Robbie, yep. Lin Chen, like lots of names still in it. Yep, Could there be will, a big day three. There will be a redraw <laughs> at 16. Yep. It's, uh, 17 left now. So as we go straight over, as it says 17, we've literally just caught it. Phil Hughes has bet 27,000. Alan shoved 130k. Phil called with King Queen and no draw. But there's a draw now. Please don't come an ace. Or a nine. Or oh, nine! <laughs> or a no, my day. They call with King I! And it's gone perfect, perfect. Oh my word. That's brutal for Alan. Wow, at this stage of the tournament, it's called with King Queen. The perfect. Oh, Couldn't imagine man. a better spot. Wow, that is ill. All in with about 90%, probably even more. No, probably about 90%. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's horrible that for Alan. Brutal. With King Queen, no draw, no pair, no flush draw. Yeah. King high. <laughs> and wins with perfect, perfect turn and river. Oh my. So now down to 17. So we're on 17. Yeah, there's a lot of people I want to win. I, I'm good friends with Tim, but um, I have a bet with him that we made it at the Irish Open. Um, you were there, obviously, but yeah. that Tim asked me to give him odds on whether he'd win a tournament by the end of the year, and it had to be a mass field tournament, so not okay. a small one. Yeah. And I, I was too, I set my line a bit too high, but I gave him 15 to one because he wasn't planning on playing much by the end of the year. And now he's turned up at everyone since. Yep. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had like a kipper. So, <laughs> Tim, um, yeah, I think Tim's put 100 on that at 15 to one, so. As much as I, I'm good friends with him, <laughs> I'm kind of anti railing him a bit. I hope he gets second. Um, and Robbie wins, that'd be perfect. Ludo here, blind be blind. 40 bigs. I think we can limp or raise here. I'd be happy with either. Did you ask the consensus of what the odds should have been if you offered him 15s? So I got the. Ve it varied answers. Um, it, it depends a lot on how much Tim was planning on playing, and from what he said he was planning on playing, yeah. the general consensus was it should have been about eight or nine to one. Um, some people went as low as two or three to one. Oh other, my others word. agreed with me at fifteen, but I think yeah. the general consensus about eight or nine was good. So it's a pretty poor line for me. Okay, which is why he took it. <laughs> yep. Which is why the bet came in, and then he thought, oh, maybe that was a bit too high. <laughs> Yeah, I asked J David and Jack, and they said, can they get in on the action of Batman as well? And that's when I knew <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. Um, check, check here. Luna now top pair on a flush draw. Expecting to start a bit in turn. Good amount of time. Um, Johnny's still going to have to call with hands like ace high, even king high. Blind be blind here. Yeah, like this one. <laughs> One big blind, Johnny shouldn't be going anywhere with ace high. Still great hand, got the ace of diamonds as well to block some stuff on river. <laughs> now the diamond river could be interesting. And 
should be hard to if Ludo bets big here, it should be pretty hard for Johnny to get away from seven here. But this line, Ludo's gonna have a lot of gloves. Looks like he's gone Yeah, sixteen K. Yeah, just has to call. Yeah, has to call. Ludo shows him two pet. And yeah. Johnny rivered two. Unfortunate for Johnny. It's on winning the Goliath. Wow. Uh, what do you think the odds are for a random player to win the Goliath? I think if you had a proper bookies book, I think they would. I think they'd, the favourites would be around about 150 to 1. Wow, oh, that's, that's low. It's in, insanely low, but that's, that's what low. they put all the yeah. top pros at. They stick all the top pros at 150s, I reckon. They go through all the players that have... Yeah. That you, because everybody plays it. Yeah, it's £150 pound in and you think, well, why do you bother? But it's going to be 100 k up top, and if, it's, if not yeah, a bit more. If the players that are going to play for maximum bullets as well, then... Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, they would put they would put the season pros on there. They'd, they'd obviously look down and see who's doing well on the EPTs and the and the WSOP and stuff like that. <laughs> I think 150 to one would be the, you, you would be the line for a lot of players. Yeah, you and wants 150 to one for the Goliath. You in the chat? Now we're doing you in. Are you on the next episode of Poker Out Loud? Somebody asked the other day, actually. Yeah. I think it was Paul Fletcher. And where can you watch it? YouTube, I think. Is it on YouTube? I think I think it will be. Jeff here with Ace King. Shows 20 bigs. I just can't call. There he is. He's on the next episode of Poker Out Loud. Looking forward to that. Excellent. Yeah. So you and Fang on playing the Goliath this year? I didn't know that. There we go. There we go, Finland, my tip is fifth at the minute. Is this for Eurovision? It must be. Who's winning? Yeah. That's what I want to know. Are the UK I don't really want to know. Yeah. The, you, you, the UK <laughs> were 10 to 1 to get in the top 10. That's how bad it is. Not are. looking good then. They were they were something like four hundred to one to win it. <laughs> um, my biggest score online, I'm not certain. I think it'd be like twenty k. Um, and live is twenty five k. Um, You've had some close calls. Some close you've gone lucky at the wrong time in quite a few events. Yeah, I had a close one this week actually uh, in the high roller, but. Um, yeah, I'll see here all in. Yeah. It's Jack. Uh, his wee mark still in says football number one. I've not seen him. He's out in 22nd for 2,790. Ace three clubs on a two club flop uh, and missed. It's unfortunate. He missed. I call for me is five. Very sad at this point, but just got to remember how valuable holding on to chips are. Yeah, there's that could be a really good day three mm. set up here. Yes. Um, yeah. When we get a sixteen, I'm guessing there's a two table redraw and two tables maximum four tomorrow. We yeah. won't we won't get to the FT tonight, that is for sure. But two tables is good. Makes for some good watching. Yeah, a lot of good players going to be in. Should be a really good day three to watch for sure. Bouncy with the Kings now. Nice. Another D run for Bouncy. Yeah. He's been knocking on the door. I think I was speaking to Jack mm. but at the bar before. It'd be nice to see him win one. Because um, he's had plenty of deep runs now. I think we're going to see him min raise here. Yeah, make it 19. Yeah. 15 big blinds. A bit too much. Could be, could be good time back left. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gone all in. 
Yeah, I think I think we want to. Is it the lot, or has he has he left a chip behind? He, he might have left a chip behind. Yeah, I think he has. I think what we want to do with these ones is we want to induce people to jam worse hands that maybe they can't call when mm -hmm. we just jam. Um, some suited aces maybe. Um, just when we've got such a strong hand like this, obviously with some weaker pairs, we don't need to. Yeah, this is just going to get through now. <coughs> Jimmy is out of the way. Jimmy Walden is out of the way. Yeah, how, how many of the players still in have won a GKFT? You know, I think Lynn's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Lynn Chen. Lynn. Um, uh, that could be about it. It might be. Michael Kane got one more? No. No, he's won a lot of stuff. Didn't know. Yes. Uh, Tim Chung hasn't won one, has he? Totally, he has, no. He's come close. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Polly White's FT'd a couple as well. Yeah. He's still in. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think I made the joke with Tim that I think he had like 50% of the chips six handed and came sick. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the one. With Tom Hall, no, I think. in London, wasn't it? Was yeah. that in London? Might have been. Might have been Luton. Was it Luton? Five million. Yeah. The chip, there was three people in the last five players mm. had five million chips at one part and didn't win it. <laughs> and they all, yeah. they, all, they all hit the Eddie Heights of five million chips and none of them won it. Pay out scrolling across the bottom. 79,000 and change, first prize, 366 runners in total. Jamie Walden looks down and looks at the boots. We got the aces. Jamie gave me the three bet. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, compared to the numbers it got last year, like, really good. Um, Side events have been superb, haven't they? Yeah, they have. The mini main. The, cash, ga numbers. the cash games are never overly massive here, but uh, yeah. the, rest of the rest of the festival numbers turn out. Yeah, Ludo in a tough spot here just because getting close to final two tables, it's we don't want to be playing massive pots with hands like this. Where we're not necessarily gonna realise our equity all the time. Um yeah, I don't I don't mind this from Ludo at all. Although it's like a pretty hand to have Queen Ten suited. Jamie's should be very, very polar at this point. <laughs> Yeah, the mini main got huge numbers. Yeah, five hundred and thirty something. Yeah, massive. Like that. Yeah. It was enormous. Even the high roller got like mm. hundred and nine. Um, although I know Jack was responsible for a fair few of them. With ace five here, we consider an open. Having a blocker is just much nicer at this point than having a hand, say like even seven eight suited. Um, although it's gonna, yeah, just being able to block hands that can jam on us is really nice. It's a ten k big line now though. Looks like the players are looking around to see if they can. Yep. Seen it. Tanking to try and get into. So we'll see what they're looking at. Oh, yeah. Bobby Bolt has got a lot of chips in. And Ace King Yazoo King Yin. Ten. King 10 of spades is from Ooh. Yazoo and he's got the nut flush draw against Ace King of Robbie Bolt. And it's the 10. <laughs> he's hit the 10. And another. Well, well he, need, he, need, he needed both. There was the ace on the flop. The ace on the flop. He needed running tens on a spade. Wow, that's that's it. Wow. That's like a 400k pot. Yeah, 200 and 210k. Usual yen. 
Running tens, couldn't he? One ten, need a spade or a ten on the river. Yin's also a friend Boom. of mine, so uh, happy for him, but also very sad for Robbie. Um, how long have I played poker? I've, well, um, live poker obviously since I was 18. Um, online maybe a little bit before that. Ludo, ace three off here, probably not going to be able to do much at all. Yeah. Johnny with queen six suited, probably going to expect him to defend here. Although we want to defend tight, so this is still going to stay in. <coughs> See that here, very high frequency. Yeah. Goes for quarter. Can't do anything here, is Johnny? Are you looking forward to Luton Tower? Yes. It's always busy. It's yeah. always good. Same open again. Yeah, this short-handed format, um, final two and final three tables. It's really brutal for the short stacks. Having to pay the big blind ante, 2.5 big blinds per orbit. Hits you very hard. Obviously great for the big stacks, being able to apply pressure, take down the blinds very often. Here. I'd love to see a jam here, please, Jeff. Suited wheel ace, great combo to jam. Call, it's fine. Got a suit ace, being a flop. <coughs> oh, this is interesting. Monotone flop, but Michael without a club. Jeff with bottom pair, but no redraw at all. Michael going for the C bet as well. I think we expect Jeff to see a turn at least. <laughs> the best big value tournament coming up in the UK. Um, I'd suggest the mini mains. They're great structure for a 250 buy in. It's better than any 250 you'll. Um, that you'll see anywhere else really um, for what you get. Structure's brilliant, the same as the mains here, which is some of the best structures you'll find. Done. It's busy in the bar. Is it? Very busy. Saturday night though, that's why. Yes. Saturday night at the movies. <laughs> it is busy. Yeah, Luton next up. When is that? What? When does it start? I'll tell you in 30 seconds. <laughs> Bouncer with a 10-7. Button. 
shouldn't be able to do anything with this really. No. Side when we're short, just we want to be able to jam the button a lot. Yeah, just can't do anything with these. Jam or fold. Working the clock. That's what you do. Just in case there's a bust out. Jeff with the deuce three is going to give Michael Kane a walk. There you yeah. go. Talking to Luton, there it is. There it is. Starting on the 24th of May with the double satellite. Always very popular, those double satellites. Yeah, yeah 25.50, not a mystery bounty now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they could have thought about doing the mystery bounty the same price here. You know, like yeah, the 150, 150. Yeah. I think that would have been good. What, what numbers did it get here this time? Three, yeah, 300 and something. Yeah, see, sure. great numbers. Though. Good numbers, but I don't think the numbers in the looting were too good. I think that's why right. they decided to change yeah. it. But they stuck 50k guarantee on. Can't complain. So you can't complain. Uh, the minis on, the high roller, the turbo, 200 pound turbo is a side event on the Wednesday. We'll be doing cash live stream on the Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, roller yep, Thursday high roller day two. And if you want to screenshot it, yeah. screenshot it. Now. <laughs> there you go. Take a picture of it, keep it in safe, but it is all on the app. Yes. It is. Everything is on the app. And if you've got credit on your card, that's on the app as well. You want to know how much credit you've got in tournament <coughs> credits. We've also got the promotion of if you bag chip lead in any of the main flights, you now get an acquired ticket, which is brilliant. Yeah, or a seat into the next big one. I mean, that, like my one for I, they did it even. My one was just a random draw from London. Yeah. Um, for a fifteen hundred ticket for the UK Open, and then I came twelfth there. So, and that was for about twelve k. So the val added value is massive. Um, with these extra tickets, being yeah. able to play more tournaments. Absolutely. <clears throat> Do I play cash? No, I used to when I was first getting into poker, um, but not played cash properly for a good couple, mm. well, a couple of years now. Can we give a shout out to Gemma Palmer? Hi, Gem. <laughs> Hello, Gem. Are you enjoying the live stream? We're in Edinburgh. I'm a big fan of this from Jamie, uh, the ice of blind vest blind. Use it, yeah. being nice and polar, using a blocker with the jack to any good hands and then a uh, low card um, to be, to balance out all the strong hands that we can have blind vest blind here. Forcing Michael to fall is really nice, take down the card. It's near enough impossible to have jack four because he checked raise and there was no back door flush draw with your hand. So you must have Jack Knight, Jack Queen or Jack Knight. Yeah, I expect we'll see a lot of this That's today and options. definitely tomorrow yeah. battling. Because you had no bag to have lost so good hands for sure. Because it missed right the castle's hand twice. So I think it's the way you're putting the cards in the box. Do you know this yet? I had the machine. On the device? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but seriously? No, I had the, I had the machine. He doesn't think so. He doesn't think so? Um, Andrew said that he thinks it's missing. It's, well, he knows it's missing out his hands twice. Yeah, yeah. When he was on the feature table. Yeah. Because he knew he didn't have King 7 or King 4. He had King, Queen, and Ace King or something. Possibly the graphic. Johnny here with the Ace 5 and the hijack. 12 and a half bigs. With the big line anti ground for not. So to take this. If you do it, it's to think about it. Maybe see if he can get a ladder to the final two tables for him to bust out on the outer table. There's five for Johnny and nine. It's a tough one at this depth, 12 and a half bigs. Did you have Jack four? You want to be all in a full with most hands and maybe in raise with the really strong and really weak ones. Mm. Yep, Johnny all in here. Jeff can't do anything. Michael's going to be out. 
Jamie. Yeah, it's gonna be out as well. Gonna be on Balsy in the big blind. <coughs> Oh, I'm actually not going to be able to do anything with this either. So Johnny going to take it down. <clears throat> that was what's doing it tonight. Nothing's going to happen with that. All the players just waiting for this final two tables now. Yep. Brutal for the short stack. It certainly is. But brilliant for the guys like Michael Kane here, being able to just apply the pressure. No. Ludo <laughs> Ludo's trying to find out why one of the boxers has misread a hand and come up with a di two different cards. One and one different right. card. If the dealer pitches a card over seat nine yeah. into eight and it yeah, catches it. nine, it reads the card, and that's yes. what it does. It goes directly to so can't catch all If it's on these two of them, can't catch all the Yeah, that's of the evening. Johnny with King 10 off there. Maybe tempted to use this as a min raise. Um, this is a good one to use as a raise fold. Yeah, I, I like this. Having blockers, um, obviously not one that's strong enough to jam or strong enough to call an all-in. But we're blocking the hands that can jam on us. Because um, we need to have raise folds for when we have our really strong hands like Ace King, Ace Kings, obviously. So a hand that blocks that is great. Michael in the tank here. So we have a raise from Johnny. Three bet from Michael with nines. Yeah, and Johnny's just gonna be forced to fold this again. I, li I still like it's Johnny's just open. It's stack size, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like this open. Use it to balance out our aces, our kings, our ace king. Is there any, any of these are jamming hands instead of raising hands like he's done last twice? Uh, this one, this one's a good one to balance out. But we're gonna have some hands that do want to jack, like maybe an ace jack or like a pocket eight. Yeah. Ones that want to stop people from seeing, realizing equity, and still being a good hand. But yeah, I like this from Michael. Yeah. Well, in coming Jay for half an hour with Dan, and then we're going to close off the end of the evening together. A bit like Anton Deck, you know, <laughs> Anton Deck. a bit like Anton or Laurel and Hardy, or uh, whoever it might be. Go and watch your Eurovision, Tower. I know you're dying. Go and watch the Eurovision. <laughs> oh, I'm off! Can't wait! <laughs> you, you never guess who's winning, I just saw the screen. Uh, uh, Israel. Italy. Oh, wow. Who did I say earlier? Did you put you know, money on it? <laughs> they were 190 to 1. <laughs> yeah, I only saw them at the top of the, they were at the top of a leaderboard. I don't know. No, it's that's only... alphabetical order, mate. No, it's not. So it starts with A and then right all the way down. Yeah, and but then they were at the top. It's well, Italy won't be top if it's yeah, alphabetical. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> alphabetical order. I was out there. I just saw Italy at the top of a leaderboard. Michael with A6 here, expecting to raise. Way. Bowsy not able to do anything here. It was painful for the stacks like Bowsy, but just forced pressure on us. Don't blame him for taking time with these decisions. We want to play as little hands as possible with this short handed dynamic when we're a short stack. Having to play the big blind ante uh, is kind of brutal. Johnny. Johnny going to be out here with his hand deuce. See, this is why it's so great for a stack like Michael. Just being able to constantly open any hand with a relevant blocker. We just take down these blinds so often. You see, like, even past Orbit, he's chipped up, like, 200k pretty comfortably.
How's your week been done? I know obviously the, the main event you had a decent run in the high roller, didn't you? Yeah, main event was kind of grim, but happens. Um, high roller was good, yeah. I mean, it went a lot better than it looked like it was going to go. Because um, as a group, me, David, Robbie and Jack, going into day two, none of us had bagged and we were in for... I think it was 18 bullets, sorry, no, 13. We were in for 13 on day one between us, no bag. It ended up that we were all in for uh, 22 bullets between the four of us. Um, me and Robbie both cashed um, when I came forth, but so I was the only one that ended in profit out of the four of us. Robbie's got a chip lead as well, hasn't he? I've yeah, heard. Robbie doing well here. Um, hopefully he can do well. Hannah, want to ask you about against this man in seat seven earlier on earlier oh, in the right. day. You just call, just want to call. Is that is that that's what I was saying on I, stream? I went to Jack after. I was like, I think I might have just played one of the worst hands I've ever played, and he was like, Oh God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one, the turn lead. I think you, I watched it back, and you could kind of see on my face when I realised when I lead. I led, led turn, so I was like, Oh well, Bass is not going to have really any six X. I'm going to have six X. He isn't. Um, I can make some better ace high fold. But I realised once I lead, I've now priced myself in versus if Bowsy jams, I can't fold. Yeah. And then once he raises, I was like, oh, well, now I'm just all in. But I can just call, and yeah. leave, even though I leave myself 13k behind, um, which isn't great because the turbo would then be closing, and I'd probably just bag like a bowl stack. I still have a tournament life, which is just yeah. very, like, anyone tell you is more important than almost anything. Um, so I can just call and I can lead jam on a heart river because I also can't really call yeah. if he gets the price. Um, I don't think Robbie has chip lead anymore. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. After the ace kings, king tens. Who was that against? Uh, oh, against Yin. Uh, oh, Yuzo. Lin. Lin. Yeah. Lin no, no, Yuzo. Oh, oh Yuzo. Um, uh, Yuzo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he. Yeah, ace king in versus king ten suited. Ace high flop and running tens. <laughs> He did, have a, he did have a flush draw, to be oh, fair. Okay. He, he did have a flush draw, in fairness to him. But um, got that the sick way. But yeah, that hand was... Possibly the worst hand I've ever played. Uh, Mark, question Jay, don't don't answer if you don't wish. As a pro, isn't it? Minus EV commentating on here, prox 50 to 40 days a year, thanks. Uh, the thing is, I, 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 I've never done this for the money. I literally do this for other reasons. I enjoy it, it's something different. It also gives me something else to break up the daily grind as well. Like mm -hmm. I look forward to it. I do, I do actually look forward to the tours because most days I'm waking up, I'm going to a game, I'm grinding for a long time. I go and sleep. I do the same again the next day and just repeat. Yeah. So this is this is actually a really nice break up where I can just chill, play some small comps, have a little laugh with some friends, and uh, I, I really enjoy it. And and to be honest with you, I always say this on stream: Hold'em and MTTs are probably my worst my worst game, mm. like one of my worst variants of poker. So, I mean, I think that says a lot about how good your PLO because you're definitely like beating all these fields of like holding time you're playing in comfortably so your PLO game must be very good I don't know anything about PLO so yeah but uh, that's that's basically it Mark uh, I'd love to jump in the old 1k from a time to time in the main event and have a run at it but there's other tournaments around in the UK that you can go and play that aren't sponsored by Grosvenor yeah that um, I may dabble in. Like I, I'll play like a few one Ks in the UK throughout the year. Uh, Did Irish Open? Didn't you? Yeah, Irish Open. Yeah. I'll go and play every year. Vegas, obviously, as well. Mm. So have a few shots at MTTs, but I, I just rarely play tournaments. The only time I will play a tournament is literally a GUKPT side event, and that is literally it. And then when there's a, an event on like the Irish Open or maybe a WSOP event in Nottingham, I'll go down and play that EPT London last year. That was one as well. Yeah. It's uh, just just little thing, little things like that. Uh, but predominantly, I'm a cash game grinder. I play Omaha. I play mixed. Rarely play Holden these days, but thoroughly enjoy commentating on it with Tower. Who's the best player left in? Um, there's a few. I, my biased answer would be Robbie Ball, um, but Tim Chung. Oh, I yeah, Tim's him. Tim, I. He's a brilliant player and like 
will do very well, like does very well in these fields. Um, you've got Ludo, been around for years, still crushing. Michael Caine. Um, my answer would probably be Robbie or Tim, but there's still so many great players behind them. It's a pretty stacked field still. Yeah, it's, like I said, I think it's going to be a pretty good day three. Um, final two tables, you've got Jamie Walden, so, like good solid reg. Michael Caine been around, Ludo. Balsy obviously been around, but played plenty. Yeah. Um, Balsy's so improved as well. I, I, yes. I, I remember... When I used to play the tours, going back to 2017, a long time last GUKPT like season that I played, mm. and uh, I remember like thinking Balsy was a bit. He, he was a regular on the tour, but I just thought he was like a bad reg, and like yeah. he has improved so much over the last few years. I'm, For sure. I'm, I'm going to say it. It's, I didn't used to think much of him when I was playing at the tables, but mm. watching him on the stream over the last He's six years, moves, yeah. he has really improved, and uh, I think Balsy won it one of probably in like the top 10 most improved players over the last five years on the, sure. on the circuit yeah uh, yeah i 100 percent agree are you playing wpt uh, uh, i might do i might do the thing is lee with me i'm i'm one of them i'll, I'll go and play it but if there's a game on that I'm, that's worth going to play like a cash game that i'd usually play i'd go and play that instead if that makes sense but if there's like not a good game I'll go and play the tournament, but if there's a good game that I choose to grind, I'll go and play that. So I might be there, I might not, you may see me. Uh, no, not on iPokemon. Mainly all live, a lot private. Ooh, here we go. Oh! This must mean that there has been a bust out. And we're going to go to the table because there is the bust out and it's Phil Hughes who had 800k an hour and a half ago has gone and it's gone to the ball and he's taking the chips <laughs> so thank you very much look so, at him stone faced so uh, haven't got much information about the hand as PK caught it late but I can ask Robbie uh, it, he said to me Phil Hughes shoved the river with ace high and Robbie called with a flush and uh, that's basically it that's the only info I've got PK caught it late but went for the bluff on the river as Phil and Robbie snapped him off. So we've got the two table You'd redraw. you to see it. Robbie Ball with the chips going to the final two tables. Yeah, he, like Robbie's had, I think every, a lot of people say it, um, like, oh, they run really badly. But I mean, you'll see, you see it on stream, he bubbled like high rollers, like he bubbled yeah. back to back high rollers, gets 12th, 11th consistently, had it in UK Open, had like one mil near the end of the day. Which, lost some unavoidable spots he, um, he was on my table all of day two until yeah, the last session of the Irish Open and like played very well like mm. I think Robbie like he, he to be honest with you before John Adelaide got moved to our table he was, yeah. he was the only one that I was really like yeah. a bit wary of at the table that I was on in the Irish Open he's a very good player very solid picks his spots very well and uh as Dan said, I think he is definitely up there with one of the best left in the field. I think Robbie, like a lot of people, won't have known him until this year because he didn't really start. He didn't really start coming back into playing poker. He had took a uh, big break. Um, he came back sort of towards the end of last year. Um, but now this year he's been putting it like keeps it in the chat. He's been so consistent. He turns up to every stop, plays the schedule, um, plays really well. Um, Really, really good player. Um, Very modest as well. Which yes, I like. that's what I mean. He won't say it, but like I'll say it for him. He's one of the best players on the tour, for sure. Um, up there with the very best. Um, you see him in all these high rollers, uh, all these mains. Definitely due a big score. He uh, won the high roller in Blackpool. Blackpool yeah, Blackpool. Um, but yeah, he's been knocking on the door for a main event. Um, had one, he got Malouz in London yeah. uh, for a big one. Um, but yeah, he's had a lot of these final two table spots, so hopefully he can take control there. Uh, but Tim Chung to his left, probably not ideal, but let's hope he can get some of them. I think his name's so we're going to run you through the table after yep. the draw is done. Colin Gillen in one, Abdul McKit in two. Wow, Abdul McKit, he had 25k on the bubble. Wow, he must some have spin. Had, he must have had a spin up. He was the short stack coming back after the break on the bubble. He was the one player below, uh, he, he was on 25k on the bubble. 
And wow. uh, he's the one player below the bubble boy. And he's still in. Abdul McKit must have had some spin. Robbie Ball in three. Tim Chung in four. Jamie Walden in five. Ollie White in six. Craig Smith seven. And Balsy is in the eight seat yeah. two tables. Like this is such a stack. Like I, I'm, I don't, I'm not familiar with Abdul. I've not really seen him at stops, but um, I think six of these eight players you see it. Colin's very like, good. Yeah, Colin Gillen been around for a while. Great player. I, I really great Ollie as well. Yes. Ollie has a lot of like stream time over the years. He hasn't had many deep runs, mm. but whenever I see him on stream down, I don't really see him put a foot out of line. And... I think it's what a lot of. Like a lot of when people ask me if like who are the best players, the best players generally are ones who are boring. And it sounds weird to say, but a lot of the time you may see people want to make like audacious hero calls and bluffs, or whatever. But the guys that are really turning up and just comfortably beating these fields, the guys that are doing the ABC, the fundamental stuff, like perfectly, like just boring stuff. Um, bluffing with the right blockers, not getting super out of line necessarily. Um, and Ollie White for sure is one of those guys. Turn up, won't punt it off, won't give it away, and that, yeah. that in itself is a huge edge yeah, in these I fields. Agree. Exactly what you just said about Ollie. Yeah, I play with Craig in the mystery. He seemed to play well as well. I need some yeah. sample, but uh, that's what you expect to take me out. Really, thought he's going to get tougher. Cammy Williamson, how are we doing? Good evening. Craig Smith, one to watch. Solid Reg, been around for a while. Deep run last year. Pretty tough field left. Uh, I'm joined by Dan Laidlaw. Uh, Billy, regular on the tour. Only 19 years of age and already had some decent results in the last 18 months. I still remember the first time I saw you, I actually. Remember, it, was, uh, yeah. it, was the, it was the grand final and uh, Jack yeah. brought you along. Yeah, I remember along, yeah. The, the first season after it took lockdown. Me out, it took me out of sick form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw you into a 2K. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, mate. Yep. <laughs> yeah, um, it was pretty surreal, honestly. Yeah, Bowsy's so solid. Like, like I say, the guys who are comfortably beating these fields, they're not necessarily doing the flashy stuff, whatever. Bowsy never gonna give it away you know what i mean he's never gonna give people stacks he's never gonna when he gets his when he builds stacks whatever he's never gonna dust yeah. it off and that and it's being able to retain your stack in a structure that's so good where you're not forced to put in loads of chips all the time um just being able to hold on to your stack is brilliant and uh, no, i'm still 19 until november uh, abdul with the pocket eights raises to 20k yep like this from abdul Game on the button, probably maybe think about using this A7 as a blocker, as a 3 bet. And I wouldn't hate it at all. I, I, I like this from Jamie. Being nice and polar, using an offsuit ace. I wouldn't say we do it all the time, but mixing this in is definitely going to be great. Because we can now still fold Tabdol's jam, and he's just just unfortunate all he's woken up with this hand here. Um, because we put even Abdul's eights in a horrible spot yeah, to play out position. Because to peel and play out of position, well then Jamie just gets to see about these high card boards and take it down. Um, Jack has 100% of me um, in tournaments, uh, yeah. I think Ollie thinks about the non all in size or possibly all in, deciding yeah. what he wants to do here. Um, 42 effective, I think all in can't be bad. Can exactly, yeah, I was going to say, I think we, we can maybe do some stuff where, like, with aces and, like, some pos but we don't need to get involved with that with Ace King. It's going to be one that just wants to jam. Yeah. Um, Yep, no one from Ollie. And now Abdul in just a horrible... The cold 4-bet jam 8s is just in the fold, bin here, yeah, yeah. It's just a fold, ain't it? Um, even though you see he's got 47% equity, he just can't realise that thing now, obviously, Jamie. It's not fold. Yeah. Cammy says, met down in Barcelona last year. Couldn't believe he was 18. Knowledge yeah. of the game for his age. Big future, for sure. Thank you, thank you, Cammy. Yeah, met him in Barcelona. Um, not seen him for a while, actually, but I'm um, sure I'll see him at the stop soon. Cammy finished second in this last year. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was it. Yeah, you see now Robbie, 99 big blinds, hopefully bag chunks today. Yeah, 40, 42 effective. 
I, I, I'm definitely jamming off suit, but I, I think we can use suited as um, non all in and all in. But I, I don't personally. I don't hate either. I don't think either side what you do is going to lose much money or make too much money difference. So I don't think it's um, terrible. I think the thing with the four bet not all in as well. It just looks so nice, doesn't it? It's like an alarm bell raise. It's yeah. Yeah. But at least with the foot, like we can still have jack, we can still have tens, we can have wise yep. mates, we can suit it perhaps as Ollie. UK second right now, Eurovision. Wow. No, second last, UK oh, second, second last. last. Oh shit. <laughs> this isn't an ideal table draw for Robbie, just having like Tim to his left, who in my opinion probably best player, second best player, up there with Robbie in my opinion is the best in the field on his left and Jamie, great player, Ollie White like we've said. Jamie was actually on mine and Robbie's uh, table Irish Open I, yeah. I just realised he was on the table as well. Yeah he did really well, he won the mystery bounty. Yeah, yeah Irish. I was I was deep with him in that, um, played really well in my opinion and speaking to him about hands clearly a great understanding of what's going yeah. on. Big, um, watch, big watcher of the stream as well, always watches the stream. Oh, that's great. It's called Chevalin Poker on yeah, Twitch. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Like you say, so the team will be opening with yep. all the chips. Jamie now, next to Axe. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a flat here. Um, can also three bet. I think we're definitely going to want to be entering the pot with this hand though. Tim's going to have loads of hands in this range um, that we're doing well against. Plus, in position, get to realise that could be far better. Uh, yep, fine with this. I'll see in the small. It's going to be out. Don't think we'll see Colin over the call there. It's just hard to realise the equity multi way. Maybe just flips in the extra one big blind. Six nine for one, four yeah, five off. Exactly. I much prefer in this. Prefer defending this and like king four off, king five off. Agreed, hundred percent. Yeah. It does, let it go. It's just hard to realise that to be honest, because even when we flop say a middle pair, we it's hard to really see turns profitably. Like even here we're forced to put so many chips in yeah. and just like this is a perfect example. Um multi way. Yeah, on these king high boards, just generally better for the flatter. Um, who plays flat with all these king jack suited, king queen suited, even king queen off. And now the action turn. Yeah. The off suit ace. Yeah, I still like the check from Tim. I, I'm, I'm a fan of this. Don't need to play anything. Playing check call is great. We allow Jamie to just now bluff all of his queen jack, jack 10 suited hands. Check check is interesting. And now river. I'm guessing we're going to see a big bet from Tim, and then a snap call from Jamie. Yeah, they'll beat him into the pot for sure, once they both elect to check turn. Be interesting to see what size Tim chooses to go here. Looks small, yeah, 20k. Just wanted to get paid by maybe some underpairs to the king or whatever. Um, yeah. Look, get, let's off, gets off light there really, Tim, to only lose... A few big blinds yeah, in that hand. Literally two big blind open and then uh, four bigs on the yeah. other six big blinds. Could have been a lot worse. Yeah, this is the tough, tough table for sure. Um, obviously some great players on the out table, but this is this would be a great one to watch on day three. Do they keep return to the same table? On yes, day three? Yeah. yes, they will. Two table three draw, so we will come back with this table tomorrow. Who would be your favourite um, if you were to set the book right now? Uh, right now, and I'm not being biased because he's a good power of mine, uh, I'd probably say Tim. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to see Tim win it. I'd really like to see Tim win it. Uh, obviously, you're a lot closer with Robbie, so you're probably Robbie, and he's got yeah. chips as well. But, but they're both very no, good yeah. players, and they've both got chips. So I did say to Tower, I've got a... I took a bet with Tim at the Irish Open that he wouldn't win a tournament by the end of the year. He asked what odds I'd give him. And this was on the basis that he was saying, oh, I'm, be I'm barely going to play at the end of the year. I was like, How what do you mean? He was like, maybe three stops, two or three stops, GKPT. I was like, and he's doing Vegas. So, I mean, winning a tournament in Vegas is like... Difficult. Yeah, very, very <laughs> difficult. So he said anything with more than 200 runners counts. Um, so I gave him 15 to 1 by the end of the year, which 
still way too high. Um, and it snapped me off, obviously. Um, so, not anti sweating Tim. I'll still obviously be happy for him to win. But if he could get second to Robbie, that's probably the best outcome for me. He's actually ran pretty brutal this week as well, Tim. A few hands yes. on the feet today. We yeah. ran very bad in the high roll with a lot of the hands yeah. I saw. So, uh, not too sure about the main. But maybe do a bit of run good at the back end of the week. Ian yeah. Kiffin would like to see Colin Gillam win on home soil. Yeah. Um, who, who is your out of table dark horse? My dark horse would be uh, Yu Zhao Yin. Um, someone I've spoken to a lot recently. I've done like a little bit of coaching with as well. Um, he's fairly new to the tour, um, but he play, the stuff he's played recently, he played the WSOPC and can won a ring out there. Um, Getting some nice scores recently and getting deep runs as well. So I don't know much about Yeah, exactly. Actually, He's very yeah. new to the tour. Um, but Sometimes that's an advantage, though. Like if, yeah. you're, if you're like a, a, a good player and mm -hmm. then suddenly you appear on the tour, people are just gonna look at you like, who's this guy? And yeah, like, just turning up. Yeah, my dark horse that very few people will know um, will definitely be Yuzhou Yin. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for Michael Caine as my dark horse. That's not a dark horse, though. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> pull up his hand and mob. Pull up his hand and mob and call him a dark horse. Uh, is Norman still in? Norm yeah, Norman's there. Seat, seat nine. Storming Norman is still in the field. <laughs> I just realised. I just looked at the he was on a, table. He was on a rampage on day one oh, on my table. Uh, he was on a rampage on the feature. He was on the feature. Was he? Just, yeah, oh, yeah, I was on oh, the table. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course yeah. you were. Yeah, he was absolutely steamrolling. Literally, I think the worst hand he flopped was top pair <laughs> yeah. in about 80 flops. Yep. I'm not even joking, it was always top pair plus he'd flop. He flopped. I remember there was but, a hand where he got annoyed because he had sixes on the 7 eye board and he was annoyed that, that basically that's the worst hand he'd had in a while. <laughs> the, best, the, the thing about Norman though, he was v like 80-90% yeah. and every time he made a monster on the river and someone had like a really good hand, yeah. he just flat the river bed, he'd never the, raise. There was, um, Sorry, twice. There was Gregor who, uh, who was on the table who got very unlucky at the eight table. nine of spades? Yeah, eight nine of spades. <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah, happened a couple of times in the out table as well. Um, I would love to see Norman. Do you know what? I'd, Norm, I'd Norman love to, to win. see Norman. Yeah, win if Robbie if, if Robbie doesn't, Norman to win. There we go. <laughs> if Tim doesn't, Norm, Norman to win. There. Abdul, I think looking at possible ladders, it says we've got 15 left, so someone must have busted pretty quickly. Um, yeah, 15, who are we lost? Um, Abdul, yeah, I think he's gone for the leaving chips behind here so that he can wait on a decision. Robbie can't do anything with the threes. Um, Tim with the ace nine suited here. Yeah, puts, puts Abdul in. Calls, realises that there's no possible ladder to be had. Um, and just a flip now. Tim's not been doing great in these this week. Um, no, I'll be honest. He hasn't been doing good in the uh, 70 30s, let alone the 50 50. <laughs> so yeah. we'll see how he fares here. And, and that's not going to be great. <laughs> eight of spades. Uh, dead on the turn. Yeah, that is yeah. double up. Yeah, Abdul. unfortunate for Tim. Another good boat for Abdul. Twenty five K he had. Twenty five K on the ball. Twenty five K, now he's got what, thirty bigs? He was the short stack when we put the chip counts up coming back after the break on the ball. Wow, bottom. there's some spin. Thirty bigs now, fifteen left. This is a proper sweat now, this isn't like you're not just all in or fold, you yeah, can yeah. properly start playing hands now. Yeah, this is big for Abdul. Um, unfortunate for Tim. He got, he got a rub from uh, one of the dealers the other day, Abdul, as well, in the mini main. Uh, we're sat there on the table. Mm. Cal, DD, Arian, yep. a few others. Uh, and Abdul's there, and Martin, the dealer, sits down and goes, Oh my god, what a table, look at all these crushers. crushers. And he goes, he looks at Abdul and he goes, Oh, and Abdul's here as well. <laughs> <laughs> and Martin, the dealer. <laughs> they obviously know each other. They obviously uh, know each other. He went, look at all these crushers. And he looked at Abdul and went, oh, and Abdul's here. <laughs> so uh, I'm guessing uh, Martin's from Scotland, so I'm guessing yeah. uh, Abdul's also from 
these parts. Colin, opening the A set. Now, see, a lot of people may think this is like a bit loose to open the A's too soft in the hijack, and maybe it, it might be. But this is going to be far better than it is to open like 8 9 suited or 7 8 suited. Having the relevant blocker to possible re jams and being able to flop top pairs is just so important. Yeah. Because when we've got 20 bigs, we're not going to realize our equity enough. We're not going to get to rivers all the time. Um, so we need to be able to flop well, turn well. And now Tim definitely going to be punishing this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so in 16th place was John Lemon, we got the iPad back, John Lemon out in 16th and someone's actually just busted on the outer table. Lin Chen not being mentioned, I'm not, I can't see him actually on the outer table. Yeah, he's, he's, is he's, he's still in. Is he still in? Still in. I, I didn't see him on the outer table. Yeah, Lin's still in. Yeah. So there's the free back from Tim and this one will be getting through. And yep. Lee Richards just spot on, Norman has busted, we lose Norman Wilkie, storming Norman out in oh, 15th wow. place, so we are down to 14 players, and we've got about 20 minutes left of the day, so uh, I think we're going to yep. bring the tower in just tower to close up. I'll put the comms cam on. Big thank you to Dan, the kid thank knows you. a lot, thank you. and uh, he's going to go on to big things, I can assure you of that, thank you. and uh, hopefully we run a bit better in Luton, if you're going to be there. I'll be there, Okay. see you all there, all right. um, hopefully hopefully do well, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, big thank you to Dan. Cheers. Cheers, Dan! Good luck. See you tomorrow. Good luck Good in the luck. cup. Thank Here you. he comes. Oh. oh, man, I tell you what. I tell you what. Ooh. Oh, here we are. Last 20 minutes or so. Amazing. Thanks, Dan. He's a top lad. He's a top, top lad. We're on 14, as the guys have said. Storming Norman. Damn. Storming Norman. Lin Chen's still in, he's got chunks. He has loads. We'll be doing another W. But we're back now until the end. Round about 20 minutes max. And then back tomorrow for the final day of the stream. 14 players at the moment making it through. Tim Chung has chips. We're an all in and a call with the nine on the flop. Oh, delicious. Yeah. Just fighting we're jacks. We're gonna survive. Unless a jack hits, it looks like survival. Boom! It is. It is survival. For Bousy. Behind to Robbie Bull. And doubles up to 165. He gets him in with an ace. Robbie calls us chief leader. And he hits the nine on the flop. Classic Bowsy. Classic Bowsy. 165k has to be his peak chips of the year of the tournament. Not saying that, he had about 100k at level 4, didn't he, yesterday? <laughs> Lined it away into the money and then just doubled up twice. I used to have a theory about Bowsy table. He'd, he'd, he'd never. Uh, he'd never appear until on the bubble with about a 40k stack. I never used to see him all nope. tournament and nope. then suddenly it would be bubble, I'd be looking around the room, I'd be like, oh Bowsy's here. Yep. And he'd always have a little stack in front of him. I always used to say that to him. Always there. Yeah. Always gets on the right side of the money, one way or another, John Bowsfield. How was the cathedral gig, brothers? How was it? You're going to make chunks in that one. You were enough to play the 10k main event at World Series after today, you. Look well good. Yeah, so we'll be opening hijack here and Craig may be thinking about continuing with this King Jack. Let's it go. And Bouncy fresh off his double with the King 5. Out 
the way. Rose and take for Robbie. The clock's going to be paused in about five minutes, guys, and then we'll know how many hands we have left for the day. Six. <laughs> We're on 40. <laughs> That's quite funny, Brian. Lovely thing. You've got the contract there now, so even busy. Even Chef Jason Shellam being with me. Busy, busy. <laughs> Excellent. Good old Jess, helping you out. We're going to do a competition at the Goliath, Brad. Jason Shellam's going to make a cake, you're going to make a cake, and me and Tara are going to be the judges. I'd like somebody to make a proper pie. I'm not, I'm not the biggest oh, fan. Oh, well, I know, I know I you may not believe me, but I'm not the biggest fan you know, of pies, no. You know why? I don't know, I'm just... I'm you're, just not a, you're not a pastry kind of guy. I like, you, I like a croissant. Oh, I don't mind a croissant. Okay. You just got to get through. We ought to have a cook-off live at Goliath. I can't. I take can't. over, take over, take over the kitchen. If there's chef, a, chef, chef, Shellum. If there's a microwave there, chef, <laughs> chef Brad. Oh, they can send two. Yeah. <laughs> Not you. You know how to ping your microwave for ninety seconds. So now, speaking of that, we went to last week. Yeah. Me and the other half. We yeah. went to. Uh, all in here from Craig, he's going to go through, Ollie's going to let this go. We went uh, just for a little wander around Digbeth, see what was happening. Oh, and they, Digbeth is a, part in, it's a part of Birmingham. Okay. And uh, we found a place where we went for some food, mm -hmm. but they were having Birmingham's bacon.